The KYT first alert weather. Here we are now into the overnight tornado warning just issued for part of Franklin County and part of Scott County that will go until 3 a.m. So it is now 2:30. We got a half hour lead time in this tornado warning that is out for the northern half of Scott County and a part of Franklin County. Additional tornado likely tornadoes going through Bowling Green right now. So as these storms are now into central Kentucky, we're going to keep the coverage going. Here we go up close and personal on this tornado warning that is out now. This includes Frankfurt, does not include downtown Georgetown, but unfortunately stamping ground. We are in this. We just had a tornado roll across these same areas areas Sunday night into Monday morning. Radar is picking up on this and what we talked about a little bit ago is that this storm kind of pulses up a little bit. It cycles through it weakens, then it finds the rotation again. So that rotation is right on top of the capital city of Frankfurt, and that is a likely tornado that is making its way into Franklin County. And you can see what we're dealing with here uh, with the tornado signature that is showing up just to the southwest of Franklin County on the radar. What we can do, we can pause this and we can put that storm marker on there to show that the rotation is to the southwest of Frankfurt and the radar has been tracking this as a tornado. So radar sees this possible tornado that is heading toward downtown Frankfurt. So the capital city right now we need to be getting in our safe shelters immediately and that would include a basement. You want to the uh, the objective is to put as many walls between you and the possible tornado as you can. Now this is part of a storm that has had a history of producing a tornado back from Arkansas through Western Kentucky, now getting into Central Kentucky. This is the circulation that we're seeing here. So the spin would be literally coming through downtown Frankfort as we are speaking. So folks into Franklin County and into Scott County over towards Stamping Ground, Midway, get in those storm shelters. Midway, you're south of that. The news uh, sweep just goes through into between Peaks Mill and downtown Frankfurt for that strong rotation that is working its way through. Hey, Stamping Ground, we just went through a tornado a couple of nights ago. This is a stronger signature than the one we were looking at around 4 o'clock in the morning on Monday. This is going to roll its way to the northeast across the northern half of Scott County. So downtown Georgetown, that tornado warning is just to the north. This is right on top essentially of the Toyota plant north to Sadieville and over towards Stamping Ground and then into downtown Frankfurt, the Peaks Mill area for this tornado. And again, the signature on this is very strong. So if you're watching us right now into Franklin County and into Scott County, do us a solid and get in that storm shelter, get in that basement if possible. And if you're in a mobile home and you have the opportunity to get out of there, get out of there ASAP. And especially if you're watching us in Scott County, because this storm isn't in Scott County just yet. Yeah, you're getting some rain, some thunder and lightning, but the possible tornado is right on top of the city of Frankfurt. Now this thing is moving along very, very quickly. So this is going to be in a matter of minutes on top of stamping ground and all the way uh, through the Sadieville area of Scott County. This isn't going to waste any time. These storms are moving to the northeast between 50 and 60 miles per hour. That means this storm within the next 15 minutes or so is going to be already in Scott County and moving very quickly across the stamping ground area, folks around Long Lick and eventually into Sadieville. So you can see that southwest to northeast movement of this likely tornado. We started to see the storm weaken. Then it pulsed back up and then the radar all of a sudden said, yeah, we see a tornado with this and the circulation is very stout. So folks in Lexington, Versailles, this is likely to pass just to our north, but we will see if additional storms start to fire up behind this. So again, downtown Frankfurt, you can see how the concentrated warning is in a smaller area here into Franklin County because, well, that's the certainty much more certain here. Then it kind of fans out a little more as you go into Scott County because that gives you a little more wiggle room for that to deviate just a little bit north and or south, but it is trucking its way from southwest to northeast. So again, Peaks Mill in the basement. New tornado watch, by the way, is out for central Kentucky. That goes until 9 a.m. That includes parts of eastern Kentucky as well. May get a few more counties that are thrown in there before the overnight is through. Additional tornado warnings are now coming out around Bowling Green and northeast. Folks in Campbellsville, that is off to the southwest of us. That may be showing up here shortly as that is trucking its way to the northeast at 60 miles an hour. This is likely producing a tornado or did produce a tornado in Bowling Green. We're getting reports of damage down here. Even our sister station uh, in Bowling Green 
um, has been knocked offline. So we're trying to reach those folks to make sure everything's OK with them. But that is continuing to make its way to the northeast. So into Franklin County, Scott County right now, you need to be in a safe shelter. Safest place is in a basement. And I know a lot of us, we don't have basements. So we're going to get down low. We're going to get to the lowest floor that we can. And the objective, as I mentioned earlier, is to put as many walls between where you are and the tornado. All right, we want that maximum protection. So the more walls we can get between ourselves and the outside, the better our chances that we're going to get through this. So the objective is to get to the center part of that low floor basement. Yes, be there if you got it. If not, get to the lowest floor and put as many walls between where you are and the outside. Above all else, we're going to protect our head. And if you're in a mobile home, you want to get out of there. And a lot of ways to protect your mobile or your head that we kind of talk about here is you've, if you've watched me through the years, I've been a big proponent on putting something on your head. So if you got a bicycle helmet, you got this is just an old WKYT hard hat here. If you got an old hard hat, put it on. If you got a football helmet, a batting helmet, bicycle helmet, anything, put it on, protect your head. This is how we're going to survive any tornado because most injuries and fatalities occur by some flying debris hitting us in the head. So again, we're going to put on some kind of helmet. So where are we going to go for right now watching us into Scott County and into Franklin County? We are going to get into the interior rooms that we're talking about. So the rooms that are shaded in the red, those are the no-nos. All right, we don't want to be on the outer edges. We want to be in a hallway. We want to be toward the center or even in a bathroom because a bathroom has so many fixtures and pipes that go down through the floor that it kind of keeps a little better continuity with it and can keep it intact more. So again, get to the center point of our home ASAP. Franklin County storm is on top of you. Clark or I should say Scott County. It is about to get there very, very shortly and that storm is ramping it up. Boy, the lightning on that and Jim Jim Caldwell with me now. Jim, we were just looking at this storm and I said, boy, the lightning is just jumping up on this. And it did. And then wasn't long after that, the warning was issued for this particular storm. And that's what we have now. And it's going to outrun the back end of, of the warning, as you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's going to already be in, in Scott County by the time the expiration for Franklin County starts coming up. But because it's moving right now at 60 miles per hour off toward the northeast. So that's pushing it to, into uh, Scott County here shortly. Already the leading edge of it there, but where it was spinning is still kind of lagging behind. I'm going to stop this again and I'm going to look on the inside of it. With this, we can see the winds and how they're twisting and how they're spinning. And there's still an indication there uh, that there is some circulation with that as it uh, continues to travel through Franklin County and cross the border over into Scott County. So we watch it spin and likely produce, uh, at least on radar, there's the indication that there is a, a tornado there. And this has had a history, that same cell, of producing tornadic activity for a while now. It's just uh, decided to blow back up here in the past. Yeah, few and minutes. you know, you look at that, Jim, and you can almost see how um, you could get a couple of little spins in there. Yes. One to the east of yep. Peaks Mill, one to now the east of downtown Frankfurt. And uh, so this is going to be heading towards Stamping Ground. Boy, can you imagine the poor folks in Stamping Ground right now that had to live through a tornado just a few days ago on uh, Monday morning, and now we have another tornado warning that is heading right, a possible tornado heading right towards Stamping Ground. And by the way, you see the white on our radar? That is a new signature uh, that shows where the storm is likely producing hail. So that is uh, where we're likely seeing some hail. And the, the more we start to see that hail signature, Jim, is usually a good indication that you got a thunderstorm that can also produce a tornado with it. It's all about those uh, key signatures, just like that, what he was talking about. And you're seeing a good, an abundant amount of that right now producing some uh, perhaps large hail there from Peaks Mill over to Minersville. Mm -hmm. And then you can see st stamping ground, as we mentioned. Yeah. Uh, now, earlier in the week, no tornado warning for uh, the storms that came through. But uh, this go around, we've got one. And it is certainly racing across our map at this moment, north of Lexington now, going through uh, Scott County and Franklin County with the potential of a tornado embedded within that. So 
we'll monitor that and keep watching it very closely as the overnight hours kind of play out here. And we're not the only ones in the, in the thick of this. I mean, now you've got a tornado watch that covers all of central Kentucky, and then it starts getting deeper into eastern Kentucky. Chris yeah. mentioned this a few minutes ago, but uh, you can see that's going to run out for us for several more hours. We, we take this uh, watch up until 9 o'clock for parts of eastern Kentucky. Yeah, that's, well, a, that's, a, that's a lengthy tornado watch, and that may get expanded to include the rest of right. eastern and southeastern Kentucky before all is said and done. That may go until noon or so in, in the mountains. Active warnings that we have on our map. I'll, I'll pop those up for you, too, just so you can just to see. you got one out toward Bowling Green, and then you've got the other that's here uh, right around the uh, Franklin and Scott counties this morning, so uh, it's it's action packed, and I, I would say all of a sudden it's all of a sudden for yeah, our area, right. but it's been like this for a while out west. And you know the signature for this event has been there for several days. That's why on Tuesday we put out a first alert weather day for to Friday and Saturday, just to give you guys as much heads up to what we were seeing for the potential for severe weather. And now, unfortunately, it's coming to fruition. And Jim, I was just looking. This tornado warning uh, that extends now well northeast of Bowling Green, getting reports out of Bowling Green of people trapped in homes in Warren County from that tornado, uh, a likely tornado. And this was observed. We were seeing some, we were looking at some sky cams down there. You could see some power flashes that were showing up. So that is the Bowling Green tornado, and this line is starting to come together. Let's get back up into Scott County and Franklin County because this storm is it's moving so quickly that we're likely to get this out of Franklin County coming up here shortly, and that is rolling its way to the northeast. So on top of the city of Frankfort, Peaks Mill, Stamping Ground, Sadieville, downtown Georgetown. This is bypassing us just to the north as of right now. But the sirens on my Twitter feed, the folks in Franklin County, folks in Scott County saying, yeah, storm sirens, the tornado sirens are blaring. And I know for folks who are being jarred awake right now by those storm sirens, I know this is, it's scary. It's the middle of the night, it's scary in the middle of the day, let alone having this wake you up at night. And for the kids who are watching us right now, listen, here's what I want you guys to do. Just be calm. We're going to get through this. We're going to be in A-OK -okay shape. All we need to do is just follow those safety rules that we learned in school. All right. And maybe we practice those at home. Remember all the safety rules we went through. That's what I want you guys to do for me right now. We want to get into that safe place, that storm shelter, the basement. If you don't have a basement, let's get into the interior room, a bathroom, a closet, and remember what we do when those tornado drills are at school. We cover our heads, right? So that's what I want you guys to do for me right now. And we will get through this A-OK. -okay. We're just going to let this play out and see what happens with this. No reports of a tornado right now. So that is, is at least good news. The tornado warning is based on a radar signature. And what we can do, we can stop this and we can look inside this storm again to see exactly how the uh, velocities that we call them or the winds are looking. So we can give this storm essentially an MRI. And I'm looking at this, Jim, and if there's, if there's a little good news with this, it's not a full-blown tornadic signature that you're seeing in this like what we were looking at with the strong tornadoes in western Kentucky. That said... You could see how this line could produce a has a couple of kinks in it. See this little band of some red that is associated with this. So that tells me we got a couple of opportunities here to have a quick spin up of a tornado along this. It's not the strong tornado signature that we had with this across western Kentucky, but it is still we're looking at this and I could see okay. Yeah, this could still spin up a weak tornado or two, and it's right on top of Stamping Ground, heading towards Sadieville. The worst appears to be now northeast of Frankfort. So Capital City, the worst of this storm is probably through there. It's on top of Peaks Mill, it's on top of Stamping Ground, and heading into Sadieville. Georgetown, yeah, you're waking up to those tornado sirens that are going off, but this is just to our north by a couple miles. Folks in Stamping Ground uh, and again toward 922, literally I think this warning gets to right on top of the Toyota plant. So third shift Toyota plant right now. Uh, sirens are going off and likely folks are, are taking cover here at the Toyota plant. And yep, you can see it is just to the north of the Toyota plant for that official warning that is uh, toward the Delaplane uh, area. There's the Toyota plant 
Goodness, it doesn't get much closer, does it? But the core of this storm is just north of Toyota. It is right on top of Stamping Ground, uh, Great Crossing High School, just to the north of that, and then toward Long Lick, Peaks Mill, heading towards Sadieville. These are the areas where we need to be in that basement now. If we haven't made it to the basement, hustle. That's all we can say on that as it continues to move its way through. And Jim, when I look at this though, again, it's, it's a rather elongated storm, if you will. It's not a supercell thunderstorm signature that is showing up with this. It's more of an elongated system so that at least works in our favor maybe just a little bit to see that coming from southwest to northeast. So that tornado warning that is out for Scott County, it's got another, and Franklin County has another 15 minutes with it. Here's Scott County High School. Storm is just off to the north of us. That gets back into Frankfort, but Franklin County, downtown Frankfort, that storm, the worst of it is bypassing downtown Frankfort now. I don't know if we have any reports of anything, any kind of warnings or anything like that, but that is something we're going to, uh, we're efforting to get reports on a lot of times at night. If we do get severe weather reports, they're a little slower in coming in. So I see this tornado warning has uh, changed just a little bit. So uh, the southwestern edge of this has been cut off a little bit. So Franklin County, we are clear of the tornado warning. So the tornado warning now only includes northern parts of Scott County. And that is uh, going until three this morning. So you got 14 more minutes, right? So Sadieville, uh, Stamping Ground, we're no longer in that tornado warning, looks like, but the peepers aren't what they used to be. I'm looking to the north here. Yeah, the back edge of that tornado warning is here. But across Sadieville, northern Scott County, storm shelters. Now, if that holds together, that's going to cross over into Harrison County. So folks in Cynthiana, we got to give you the heads up that this storm is just a few minutes away from crossing into western parts of Harrison County. So if you live on 32 here, uh, west of Cynthiana, got to be on guard for this possible tornado. This is not a given. It has not been confirmed. It is a radar indicated tornado. So seek that safe shelter. Safest place is the basement. If you don't have the basement, first floor. You're going to see, and for some folks out there, they get aggravated that we say this over and over to people. Get aggravated. I'm going to keep saying it because this may save a life. Uh, safe shelter, basement, lowest floor if you don't have a basement, and we cover our heads. We protect our noggin. So put a pillow over it, do whatever you got to do, and it doesn't matter. We're, we're here to keep you guys safe tonight. So that little sliver of the tornado warning still into Scott County, and you can see how this line now snakes its way back toward the southwest into the Bowling Green area where we are getting damage reports out of Warren County. And that is if, right now into Casey County, into Taylor County. Watch that storm as it continues to work its way toward the northeast in your general direction. That is over toward the Hardyville area, Munfordville, Hart County is where this is. Glasgow, Barron County, that is just to the north of uh, the downtown Glasgow area. But this would get over toward, I believe, Greene County. This is LaRue County, uh, Taylor County, working its way to the east and northeast. So Campbellsville, maybe a half hour to an hour away from this storm. And if that holds together, that's going to impact not only uh, Campbellsville, but Columbia, Liberty, and maybe Russell Springs, that line heading toward your general direction. But the core of this storm, we could put a track on this that is moving to the northeast very, very quickly and uh, by 319. So you're not talking about a whole lot of time before that storm is on top of the Campbellsville area and uh, Hardyville as well. So this line has been well advertised by the forecast models. If you were with us earlier in the day when we had that future radar set up for you guys, you know what? That thing did a really, really good job with the storms that have been out there tonight. So sometimes I'll give it some grief because it <laughs> kind of misses the boat a little bit. Today's future radar on a day it needed to be in good shape. You know what? It was in good shape. And see that our tornado warning for Scott County is no longer in effect. So that storm was weakening. So that's what when we were looking at that, when we were giving it the latest MRI, we could see that storm was elongated. It wasn't concentrated with a tight circulation by any stretch of the imagination. And I bet, and I think Jim's going to go and look at this, but we've lost some of that spin into Scott County. But that has been 
kind of the overall uh, progress of this storm over the past hour. It spins, stops. It spins, it stops. But yeah, you can see what we're what we're dealing with here. This is not a concentrated circulation. So Scott County, Franklin County, you can come out of the basement. The tornado warning is no longer in effect. S told you kids, we're going to get through this. All right. So the tornado warning for Franklin County and Scott County is you're clear. The tornado warning is no longer in effect. It has been canceled. That circulation has weakened. So that is certainly some welcome news. But we're going to continue to track this line into Central Kentucky for the next several hours. And it is going to be a rough and tumble night ahead of us. Uh, Jim, any reports coming in that you are seeing from well, out here to well, into Scott County or Franklin County or even to the southwest of us? I, I literally just got off the phone with uh, Dave Baker, our Dave Baker, mm -hmm. who's in, in uh, Franklin County. And uh, on his side of town in particular, he said, no damage, but he's already out there trying to find out if anything's happened in the downtown area. But uh, as of this moment, no reports coming in from him, no reports coming in from the National Weather Service yeah. of any damage so far in that. Uh, but of course, it's quick and it's early, and sometimes it takes a little while for people to assess what exactly what's happening, especially this time of day. But uh, as of this moment, nothing coming in from Franklin or Scott counties. Of course, it all happened so quickly that those reports, uh, like I said, will lag behind just a little bit sometimes. Still a strong storm, though, as it uh, cruises through Scott County here and uh, out of Franklin County. It's still probably loud, plenty of lightning, and of course, plenty of thunder and wind being uh, driven through the area. So th that's what to prepare for. But uh, as Chris was talking about a minute ago, if you're out there toward Campbellsville, you're uh, into Danville, uh, you're into uh, Liberty, you're, you're in Stanford, in those areas, be prepared here over the next couple of hours because that thunderstorm that's uh, made its way through Bowling Green a little while ago and continues on track will be on top of you before you know it. And it matters on how much it veers to the southeast on uh, who else will be impacted by it. But uh, the general flow is uh, east-northeast with that <coughs> thunderstorm that's down there right now just north of Glasgow and they continue that warning outside again outside of our immediate area but uh, one we have to watch. Yeah and as I just uh, take a, a peek overall Jim at the line itself what it you know just a, a 20 minutes or so ago it was looking more impressive across the Lexington Metro and West now as I look at it from a hole it, it it's pulsed down just a little bit it's losing some of that lightning it looks like the core of the severe weather is with that is with the southern edge right now uh, coming out of Bowling Green, obviously. And then I notice uh, to the southwest of Bowling Green, you got flash flood warnings that are popping into uh, areas of southwestern Kentucky. So we're getting those storms that are training down there. And I'm wondering if those storms that are being a little stronger in Bowling Green and southwest from there, if they aren't robbing just a little bit of energy from those storms into central Kentucky. It's a perfect flow because you get to see, you know, you've got that southwest wind. That's right. So, it, so it, yeah. it's it's kind of like with those storms around Bowling Green. It's kind of like if you got a water hose and you throw a sponge up in front of it a little bit, it's going to disrupt the flow right. and soak up a lot of the moisture. And that appears to be what is happening and soaking up the energy. But uh, you know, I, I keep scanning my uh, my Twitter feed and I'm uh, seeing reports coming out of uh, Bowling Green of injuries and. Um, some houses that have been hit by what looks like a, a likely tornado. You know, that, that's something we do not want to see. And the dev I'm telling you folks, the devastation across western Kentucky that we have seen so far this evening is going to be on par once we get to daylight and we can see the dam. It's going to be on par with what we saw on March 2nd, 2012 into parts of um, northern and eastern Kentucky especially. And, you know, Jim, we 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 know what that was all about in, into the mountains of eastern Kentucky. Right. And now this is this is a similar setup for folks into western Kentucky this go around. And it's on December 11th, which is the craziest thing. Right. That's a, that's the most crazy part of it. It's just the fact that we are in December talking about this kind of uh, severe weather element. But yeah. When you get spring-like weather this time of year, you know that some of the spring-like dynamics are going to be there, too, to support uh, severe weather, and that's what we're running into yeah. out there right now. You, you had all the necessary ingredients to, to get through severe weather, and the, yeah. that's what we're experiencing. The, um, um, the tornado watch that is out for Lexington, you know, this has been the quietest severe weather year on record 
in Kentucky and especially in our part of Kentucky. This tornado watch for Lexington. This is our first tornado watch of the entire year. Normally we would have had several by now, right? And all of those would have been in the spring and summer. And our first tornado watch of 2021 comes on the 11th day of December in Lexington. That's and incredible. and trying to see what what our temperature is right now because we're also watching for the possibility of us setting a record high temperature in the middle of the night. A record high for today is 70, by the way. That was from 2007 on this date. We're at 66 right now, Jim, and climbing. And climbing, yeah. So we've got a shot uh, at getting to a record high today. 35 mile an hour wind gust so far has been the peak that I can find in Lexington out at Bluegrass Airport. So um, new tornado warning, Barron, Green, Hart, LaRue, Marion, Metcalf, and Taylor. So there you go. That is, uh, you know, we were kind of giving the heads up for folks there in Campbellsville. That is Campbellsville. And that storm is moving to the northeast, Jim, at 55 miles an hour. That is absolutely in, uh, incredible that the, at the forward speed of these storms. And they're coming in the middle of the night. You know, there, as we say, there is, there's never a good time for severe weather. Never a good time. No, it doesn't matter no. what time of day, but there is a worse time for severe weather. And it's right now. And it's now. right now. Yeah. And it is the middle of the night. And unfortunately, that's what we're seeing now. So, Jim, you see that storm uh, rolling to the northeast. That thing is trucking, isn't it? It is. That's the one he's talking about that's going 55 miles per hour. We're not talking about the winds inside it. We're talking about the actual flow itself uh, that's moving at 55 miles per hour. And that's why you've got uh, the areas highlighted there under the warning now. And uh, so many counties out because it's traveling so fast. You've got, look at how many there you are. Green, Hart, LaRue, Marion, Metcalf, Taylor County, all included in on that warning. That goes until 345 and it is right now closing in on three o'clock. It'll, it'll be out of some of the far western counties before you know it and then it will continue on its way toward the east here east northeast over uh, the next uh, well less than an hour next 45 minutes or so and uh, we likely see it will either see expansions on those warnings or we will see it weaken some but uh, right now it continues to barrel forward as a full-blown tornado warning and will tries to dig deeper and deeper into uh, our area around here and I want to I want to look inside this one. We haven't looked inside it in a long time. I want to look inside. Yeah, to it. see the uh, see what kind of rotation we're dealing with. Let's see. Yeah. And that is right on top of Interstate 65. Oh, yeah, nice nice little nice little spin still. And that boy, that crossed right over top of 65 too. It did. It did. That, yeah. It's Hart County and um, so that cross right on top of Interstate 65. That is heading toward the Hardyville area, Munfordville. For folks who've driven down 65, you know, you see the exit there um, to Munfordville, Hardyville, and I think uh, toward Glasgow. And that's essentially where this tornado or likely tornado crossed over. Right. There you know, and go. Jim, I'm seeing reports now um, on Twitter that the Toyota plant or the uh, Corvette plant, Corvette plant in Bowling Green may have taken a hit. Oh, no. Yeah. By this tornado in uh, in Warren County. So that's a report out of Bowling Green. That that's a report out of Bowling Green. That's not verified, but that's that's some some Twitter chatter where um, a lot of people are are coming and 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 now all of a sudden saying the same stuff on this unconfirmed report that that uh, damage to the well. I mean, it, it went right <coughs> to the heart of Bowling Green on radar. You yeah. Know? So it says units having trouble getting to the scene there. Major damage. Uh, active fire apparently. Oh wow. So. Mm. You know, this is this was a uh, this was a setup that I I just, I just didn't like to didn't like seeing on any of the computer models that that I was looking at all week long. And you know, as we got closer, we got closer. We we started to get sound the alarm just more and more about this event across Kentucky and um, and how it was likely to become a major event into especially the western half of the state. And now we'll see just how much of that energy makes its way through the rest of the state as we go through tonight and tomorrow morning. But that threat, listen, Eastern Kentucky, your threat may not be as great as what Western Kentucky just had, but guess what? It doesn't have to be in order for you to get severe weather or even a, a possible tornado on that. And, I, you know, you're talking about, uh, we're talking about the severe weather element right now, but 
And you mentioned a minute ago the, the flash flood warnings that were going out behind it, and you're probably going to see more of those because of the way this is training right in this area. Let me get my arrows highlighted so you all can uh, see. This has just gonna, this is just going to continue to kind yeah. of pound over the same spot again and again right in that zone. So we'll see more flash flood warnings and more issues on top of issues uh, of other sorts. Uh, here as we progress through time. We're you know, and Jim, there's a, uh, you know, site that very popular for weather, Kentucky Mesonet, and it's run from at Western Kentucky University, and their site is down now. The whole site is down? The whole site is down, okay. and that's, you know, out of Bowling Green. So that could be. So it could be from this tornado. Right, so now, damage. so that is a, uh, you know, that, that kind of puts weather folks in a little bit of a bind again, because that's, you know, we rely on those sites that they have 100 plus sites across Kentucky and we have give real time those, data. One of those sites earlier clocked yeah. 100 and, what, 100 and 107 mile per hour wind gusts was recorded in Graves County at an, an official wind gauge recorded 107 miles an hour earlier tonight in Graves County, Mayfield. Now that was with likely with that tornado passing very close by. But this is the concerning part here and a lot of damage being reported out of Bowling Green in Warren County. Lots of damage reports are continuing to come in. City of Bowling Green may have taken a direct hit from a tornado. How much of a hit? You know, these in the middle of the night like this, reports are slow to trickle in. And now all of a sudden on my um, at Kentucky Weather Twitter feed, boom, 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 boom. Lots of folk, different folks saying the same stuff. You know, listening to police scanners, listening to reports from those areas. And that is with the tornado warning that extends well in advance of this, that gets into Marion County, that gets into Taylor County, R racing to the northeast at 55 miles an hour and seeing a lot of heavy rain now congregating across parts of central Kentucky as well. And those flash flood warnings that are out here across uh, southwestern Kentucky. We may see some flash flood warnings into parts of the bluegrass region as well over the next several hours. But there's your storm. There's your storm, he says. Hardyville and working its way towards extreme southeastern parts of Hardin County, the Magnolia area. That'll get up into Campbellsville. And here's Lebanon into Marion County. So if you're watching us right now from Springfield, that would be Washington County. If you're watching us from uh, parts of Casey County, into Perryville, Boyle County. It's getting a little too close for comfort. And if this thing holds together, it's on a path that would lift it to the northeast and could impact parts of uh, northern Casey County, the rest of Marion County, Washington County, and maybe Boyle County. So mm, got to watch that Perryville and points uh, to the southwest from there. But again, this storm has this is the one that produced the likely tornado in Bowling Green. It's holding its own. It is lifting its way to the northeast. Jim, if we could pause that and just kind of look inside to see what the winds are doing. It's just out of curiosity now because it is, it, at least the radar presentation on this isn't quite as pronounced, but it's still got that right on top of the Hardyville area. Now, even if this isn't producing a true tornado, and it yeah, I think it is now that we're up close on this, you can see that uh, very well. well. We'll show you a little different perspective here around Hardyville. We can broaden that out, but uh, as Jim goes back on this with the velocities, there you go. Boy, that is right on top of Hardyville too. They're talking about a TDS. That too. is, that's it. That's on top of 31E into um, the Hardyville area. Here's Munfordville. That's the one that crossed over Interstate 65, coming across Hart County near Munfordville, and that is working its way quickly to the east. Boy, it's a bad look now that we're up close on this, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because you can see the, the, the contrasting colors winds going one direction winds going in opposite direction. The radar can look at the winds. They will color code those winds based on the direction they're going and where you see those bright reds up against the the bright uh, colors of green blue the opposite colors. Boy, that is that's a good that is a good tornado signature. Unfortunately, that is on top of Hardyville and that's going to work its way to the east. And you know, you look at this, think of a tornado. It's going counterclockwise, right? Boy, the, the inflow coming into that. Look at that. Those are some serious winds. It is pulling into this storm into Hart County and then rolling its way toward the east. So folks in Campbellsville, this is the storm that is heading in your direction as of right now. Now, technically, this is outside of the uh, WKYT coverage area. 
but we're streaming, we're on social media, and we're here to take care. We don't care if you're in our viewing area. If you're watching us, we want to take care of you. Uh, so that's what we're doing. We're watching this storm going to the northeast. So folks around Summersville, Campbellsville, and getting toward uh, western parts of Marion County. Doesn't include Lebanon as of right now, but uh, it's a pretty good signature, Jim, when you see that. A little disconcerting. I'm going to take this out from the, the Hardyville area and I'm going to take it out over the next half hour. Yeah. So you can see the, the timing on some of this for folks. There's Summersville that we just talked about. So this would be when this storm would, at least the center of this storm, where we're just looking at that center of cir or the circulation, not center of circulation, but the center of this storm where the circulation is and the possible tornado. That would be working its way quickly to the northeast, Summersville, the Salome area, and uh, that is your tornado warning that is out for Hardyville, lifting its way toward the eventually new market area. That would be into uh, southwestern parts of Marion County, I believe, for new market there, not too far away from Lebanon. So that is the only tornado warning still, I think, that we have out. We'll broaden this out just, just to see, make sure nothing else has spiked on us. Look at all the lightning up here. That storm trying to pulse up, at least with the lightning, Jim, into Harrison County. Let's take a look at that. Let's go in up close and personal out of the uh, Scott Harrison County line because that is the storm that earlier had some rotation with it. So this is Cynthiana. That is Barry. This storm is mer uh, making its way quickly to the north and northeast, I should say, northeast across Harrison County, Sadieville. So let's look inside this storm just to see if we can see any kind of spin. Hoping we don't, but it, it's had a history of cycling. Yeah, there you go. It's got a little broad rotation. Broad, yep. broad rotate. It's not as strong. But at the same time, this is pretty far away from the radar sites that, that the National Weather Service in Louisville uses for warnings. So you see that, that's a pretty good little, it's a pretty good little spin that is northwest of Cynthiana. So Harrison County, storm is right on, uh, along and just north of downtown Cynthiana, 27 here, Barry, and eventually this will work its way into Pendleton County and toward Robertson County as well, and then into uh, the Brooksville area and, and would eventually head toward Maysville into Mason County. No warning is out on that right now, but that is a storm that really bears watching because that has had a history of, of cycling, as we call it, where it puts down a possible tornado, weakens, strengthens, weakens, cycling. It just kind of goes back and forth a little bit. So Harrison County, got to watch that. No warning is out yet, but you know what? North of, north of Cynthiana, do me a solid. Just seek shelter, just, just to be on the safe side with this, even though we don't have a tornado warning. But again, this from a National Weather Service perspective is on the outer edges of where their radar gets to. So we can give you a better look at this, and that's what we're dealing with right now with that maybe just a little bit of a spin that is showing up north of Cynthiana. Uh, Georgetown, Lexington, back toward Versailles, not a whole lot right now. That storm around Shelbyville is trying to ramp it up a little bit, but that looks like more uh, heavy rains than anything else as of right now from Shelbyville back toward the Mount Washington area and point south from there toward the Bluegrass Parkway into Bardstown and then southwest toward E-Town where we've had numerous tornado warnings in effect for the Fort Knox area, parts of Hardin County. There's just general heavy rain now with that tornado warning that is to the south of it making its way to the northeast. So again, folks, we're we're just here with you guys to keep you safe all night long. This is what we're going to do, and we'll be here until the threat is no longer with us. Um, I know it's a lot of folks scared to death on a night like this. I, I don't blame you. I mean, we we see what severe weather can do. We've lived through it many times around here. We just saw what happened in western Kentucky. So it's a little scary, but just hang tight with us. If we see a threat where you live, we're going to let you know immediately and give you a heads up on seeking some safe shelter. And from there, we'll, we'll go from there and see how, how all these storms progress. But uh, again, Jim, this is the only game in town as of right now with this tornado warning that is out. The one warning, and it's set to go all the way through, I believe, if memory serves me correct, to about 345. And there you see it. Uh, Green, Hart, LaRue, Marion, Taylor County, all included in that tornado warning for what time is it right now it is 309 so i mean we've got plenty of time left on the warning but like i said we'll start watching some of the far western uh, edge of the warning 
get uh, peeled away as time passes because we'll clear it out and we end up on the, the calmer side of that. All right, well, I use the word calmer loosely here, but uh, you'll end up on the calmer side as we start seeing some of that pull away. And just going to revisit that one that Chris was talking about in uh, Harrison County right now. Still a pretty strong thunderstorm with uh, strong gusts, loads of lightning, heavy rain, and we were talking about that general broad rotation, which is also concerning uh, for folks there. Now we move back down toward uh, the folks there in Campbellsville where the rain is about to start picking up and the heavier stuff will soon follow. A, a lot more of that will start plowing through the area here soon with uh, that latest warning, that latest uh, thunderstorm. And these just continue to kind of barrel on through as we watch from our southwest going toward the northeast with that storm. I'm gonna animate these again so you can see the, the, the flow and how quickly it, that storm, this is a two hour animation, okay? And you can see how quickly it got from uh, Bowling Green to just outside yeah. of Campbellsville, you know? Yeah, and you know, and I look, and if we got some folks who may be watching us, Jim, on a live stream down around Nashville, it, it, that's catching my attention too all of a sudden those tornado warnings southwest in Nashville and then at the uh, second line in western Kentucky trying to flare up a little bit east of Paducah that would be right along our cold front folks we want to get that cold front through here ASAP unfortunately it's still just now getting into Paducah so mm -hmm. we got a long time to hang out with you guys up there but north too you can see from uh, Indianapolis yeah there. at one point we had uh, tornado warnings near Chicago and you know this is a potent storm, Jim, when you got a snowstorm on one side and a major severe weather outbreak, tornado yeah. outbreak on the other. Yeah. We can call this a tornado outbreak. Now, uh, Western Kentucky, you know, with the damage we've had, the tornado that was on the ground potentially from Arkansas all the way to just west and southwest of Elizabethtown. Now, listen, if they find that that thing literally stayed on the ground that entire time from Arkansas to deep into Kentucky, that would be one of the longest track tornadoes in history. That's incredible. There's just no other way to put it. That would be one of, if not the longest track tornado you will ever, ever hear of or see. If it was on the ground that entire time, and it, it had, Jim, a TDS signature, which is a radar signature of a tornado, for more than three consecutive hours nonstop. That's incredible and I have timing on that. Never, ever seen anything like that, you know, um, and especially in Kentucky. The closest thing would be the March 2nd tornadoes yep. uh, from 2012 when the West Liberty tornado went 84 miles, I believe, out of Kentucky into West Virginia. And then finally dissipated. Yeah, and yeah. the Salyersville yeah. tornado went roughly 60 miles. Yeah, they were awful. And you don't see those around here. Well, we haven't seen those until tonight in Western Kentucky. It may not have been in the Central or Eastern Kentucky this time, but Western Kentucky uh, so far has had the, the brunt of this storm. First time in a long time we've had to track anything close to this, really anywhere in the Commonwealth. Now, yeah. Naturally, Western Kentucky is a little more prone to tornadic development, but uh, when you're talking about that kind of track on one, for it going multiple counties over and over, uh, that, that says a whole lot about the, the, the setup and what we're dealing with too out there. and, and we're still watching this one as it's getting closer and closer to the folks there in Campbellsville. I'm mm -hmm. going to stop this again and I'm going to look inside it again to see so what see we, right now, sir, what we have right. here. Okay, there we go. And, and we're still getting that rotation, that general yeah. strong rotation uh, embedded within that thunderstorm. Red means it's going away from the radar, green means it's coming towards, so you've got wind and the back to back on. Uh, the radar showing that it's there, it's together, and it's staying that way. I want to drop that for a second and go in closer so we can see a little bit better on what's happening out there. There we go. Now let's try to look at it again. We'll peek inside it here. And there you see, again, what we were talking about. Maybe it's not quite as confined as it was a little bit earlier, but it's still certainly there. Still showing that it, it is a rotating storm mm -hmm. that uh, we should be concerned with uh, as it is now moving northeast will be maybe not the most severe part of it, will, but uh, some stronger parts of the storm itself will be right there on top of Campbellsville here. And you just got to give it uh, not long at all uh, because another 10, 15 minutes, I'd yeah. say, on that one because of how fast it's going just in general. And then we'll see what kind of 
warnings or what kind of classification it keeps after it uh, moves on toward the northeast here over the next, uh, like I said, 15, 20 minutes because you're going to have to start jumping out ahead of it to get the warnings out and get people uh, into safe areas. When, when you've got time to do it, warnings are good to, to get out counties ahead of time and that's what we hope happens here but that's why we're here to talk about it and uh, we've been talking about it and, uh, assessing it and dissecting it to see exactly what's happening uh, within it yeah and uh, you know I was just looking on uh, Twitter I just retweeted something Jim from some folks who are uh, showing video of our uh, sister station BKO there in Bowling Green when they were on there their sky cam was picking up on what looked like that tornado moving through Bowling Green really and then all of a sudden everything cuts off because they oh, lose wow. power. Yeah. So that was from down in the Bowling Green area. So what Jim is doing on our radar here, uh, we can kind of give things a little bit of a slice or an MRI, if you will, and we can look inside these storms and we got all kinds of tools. And sometimes you're, we're so busy in, in, in keeping you guys informed and just moving from one place to another that we kind of lose sight of some of the tools that we have or we just don't have the opportunity to show them because you know what? Our job is, is to keep you guys safe. It's not to show you fancy tools just because we have them. Um, but this is giving you a good indication here on how tall this severe thunderstorm that may be producing a tornado is. And this is spiking up at least on this at 40,000 feet. Look at this. So we're, we're essentially giving this storm an MRI and you can see it spiking up to almost 50,000 feet. That in is, December. That is incredible. I mean, if that is, that is even close to being the accurate look at that, and we have no reason to doubt it, obviously, but it is showing where we've got that storm that is really ramped up, pulsed up in the atmosphere. So look at that. Spiking up to 40,000 feet, if not 50,000 feet. And you're thinking, okay, what does that mean for me? Well, the taller those thunderstorms get, chances are the stronger and more severe they're going to be. And to get a storm in Kentucky that is 30 or 40,000 feet, pretty good in the springtime. To get one in the springtime that's 40,000 feet or better, you're thinking, that's impressive. It's December 11th, and we're tracking storms that are up there at 40,000 feet in the atmosphere. It's a long way up there. And those storms are tapping a lot of wind energy and transporting those winds down to the ground. So you probably just hear winds that are going crazy out there without a thunderstorm. Tornado watch continues in effect for central Kentucky into eastern Kentucky. Uh, that includes Moorhead, gets as far east as Sandy Hook, West Liberty, Campton, into Beattyville, Boonville. I see McKee, London, Corbin, Somerset, and north and west from there. Now, kind of a funky configuration. New tornado warning coming in. Robertson County and uh, looks like Bracken County and Mason County. That is with that same storm that is coming out in northern parts of Harrison County that we were just looking at that likely had some rotation. So now you're thinking, okay, why did we just get a tornado warning for that? Well, this tornado warning, this from Robertson County in toward Mason County and south of the Brooksville area, uh, Bracken County, this is where you get a new National Weather Service to take over those counties. This would be from the National Weather Service in Wilmington, Ohio. National Weather Service in Louisville is responsible for Harrison County and West. So that has a different one. Jim, I see a severe thunderstorm mm -hmm. watch one, or warning, I should say. There, severe yeah. thunderstorm warning that is for Scott County. That looks like is coming in from uh, parts of Got a few Harrison County tied to it. I'll pull it back and here back you. to the south. Oh, so that's they've just blanketed this whole area. Yeah. Kind of strange to have this area with the severe thunderstorm warning, but not the one into into Harrison County that has now prompted that tornado warning. So you see that line of strong and severe thunderstorms that is now working its way through, and this is probably one of those things, Jim. They're blanketing this area for damaging winds because that is right along that squall line. Even if it, it, the storms themselves are able to tap a lot of that wind energy that is just above the surface and bring them down to the ground. It, even showers could do that right now. You could get a severe shower of 60 mile an hour winds without a clap of thunder. So this is a severe thunderstorm warning until 345 Anderson, Franklin, Henry, Scott, Shelby, and Woodford counties. Does not get into Lexington, that will likely change. I think we just took a little power hit. 
I think we did too. That's uh, second second time so far tonight. We got a generator, folks. So we're going to be here for you guys. No matter if we take a power hit, we lose power, or what have you. So here's the possible tornado that is coming out of Harrison County, where you do not have a tornado warning, crossing into Robertson County, where you do have a tornado warning. So this is why I ask the folks into northern Harrison County to do me a favor and get to your safe shelter because you could see the rotation on this storm. It's not it's not major rotation, but what gives me the pause about this is that I know this area is in between National Weather Service radars. So it's literally at the farthest reach from the National Weather Service in Jackson, the National Weather Service in Wilmington, Ohio, and the National Weather Service in Louisville. So this is literally, Jim, as far away as you're going to get from all three of those National Weather Service radars. And so it, it, it kind of skews the data to where it makes exactly. you something else. Exactly, because yeah. what happens, those radar beams, in order to see rotation, which is low level for a tornado, you get that at the bottom of the cloud, because obviously the, you're going to get the base of the cloud to essentially extend down to the ground, right? So those radar beams, because the, earth, the curve of the Earth, those radar beams over time, they start doing this. As the Earth curves, the radar beam, it doesn't curve, it just keeps going out in space. So it's overshooting the low level uh, winds in some of these thunderstorms. So if we have viewers in Robertson County, they get our signal in Robertson County, they get our signal in Maysville, into Mason County. You may be watching us right now on uh, Facebook, on our WKYT.com, app, whatever we are broadcasting on. And, and in today's world, it could be a host of things. So you need to be in those safe shelters here north of Mount Olivet and heading into uh, parts of Bracken County and getting into Mason County. Now, this is a tornado warning that is for radar indicated tornado that is heading toward the Bridgeville area. This is right on top of 169, 165. And that is, again, working its way out of Harrison County and now through the northern part of Robertson County, the smallest county in the state. And it's teeny tiny, but this is taking aim right at it. Brooksville, it, this is just to the south of us, and this is over toward the Germantown area. And eventually that would head toward Maysville and the Ohio River. If that holds together in 20 minutes, that's how fast this is moving. In 20 minutes, Jim, that thing would be up and just about out of Kentucky and in toward uh, Adams and Brown County in Southern Ohio, right. I believe, are the, are the border areas here from Mason County. Uh, Manchester, Ohio, West Union, just to name a few just across the border there. Uh, but again, Cynthiana, that was the storm that made its way across northern parts of Harrison County. So that's your tornado warning for Robertson County and into especially Mason County toward Maysville. This is not going to impact Fleming County, not going to impact Ewing or Flemingsburg or the Mays Lick area. We're likely a little too far south. That's going to head to the northeast. Going to be warning. New tornado warning is out. All right, Boyle County, Stanford, Lincoln County, northern parts of Casey County, Harrodsburg, Mercer County. Tornado warning is now in effect for these areas. So we are going to be seeking shelter immediately. This goes until 4 a.m. I say we're going to seek shelter immediately, but look how far away the storm is. It's still in Mary, crossing into Marion County. So guess what? If you're watching me right now in Stanford, if you're watching me into Perryville, Danville, into Harrodsburg, and northern parts of Casey County, into any of these areas, Springfield into Washington County, you've got just a little bit of time to play with before this storm gets in. So kudos to the National Weather Service in Louisville because they are getting well out ahead of this storm with this tornado warning. You are getting maximum advance notice of a possible tornado that is gonna make its way through this particular area. And notice, Jim, that's a really broad mm -hmm. tornado warning. Mm -hmm. It's not concentrated. So it, they're giving themselves just a little bit of wiggle room for the track of that to make its way out of Campbellsville to the northeast. But again, this is a brand new tornado warning that is out for a number of counties here. That includes uh, Boyle County, that includes Casey County, uh, Lincoln County, Mercer County, into Washington and Marion, and uh, again, uh, toward Harrodsburg. So you can see the radar tracking where the heart of this storm is, where that possible tornado is to the northeast. That would eventually 
head toward Danville by around 356. Before that, it would impact Perryville, the gravel switch area, which is just to the west of the Boyle and uh, Marion County line, rolling its way to the northeast. So again, Jim, that is quite an expansive tornado warning, and you, you typically don't see that much, but boy, you know what? Pull up, pull up the radar, or the, let's go in right here. I wanna look at the winds on this, because I was just looking at a, at a computer off uh, air, because this has some really good circulation on it again. So chances are very strong. This is producing a tornado. In the, oh, there, yeah. there you go. Mm, my goodness. Okay. Oh yeah. Listen, let's take this up a notch now. This is likely producing a damaging tornado in Taylor County. And this is rolling its way to the northeast. So now that we're seeing this signature that is showing up, you guys in the path of this tornado need to be seeking shelter immediately. If you are in a mobile home in any of the counties that we just mentioned, you got some time to find sturdy shelter or to find a safer shelter. But listen, this spin that is showing up here, this very well could be a strong tornado that is right on top of uh, the Taylor County area working into southern parts of Marion County. So New Market, Lebanon, uh, toward the Bradfordsville area, if we are not in our safe shelters yet, I want you to get there. And I want you to, to oh, double time it. Oh, even worse, Chris. This is, this is likely a large destructive tornado with this signature that we're seeing. And that new scan came in. And you can see what we're talking about right here, folks. This is likely producing a damaging tornado north of Campbellsville on the Taylor and Marion County line. This is going to roll to the northeast and it is moving at 55 to 60 miles an hour. So yeah, downstream, we got a, we got a long lead tornado warning, but this thing is moving so darn fast that it will make its way into Finley, into New Market, and that's southern parts of Marion County right there. That's Lebanon, which is the county seat. That's the city of, uh, the, the city of note into Marion County. Whew, boy. That'll give you some pause looking at that one. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, listen, folks. This is a tornado. This is likely a large tornado. And I'm going to step off here in just a second to see if I'm getting any kind of social media reports out of this. But if you're in the path of this, you need to get to a safe shelter now. This isn't, this isn't messing around. This means business. This means business. Yeah. This, is, this is a tornado that is likely on the ground. Um, I don't know if we've had a confirmed report out of this yet. If we haven't, that's probably going to come shortly. You look at that, and this is crossing over 289. And again, for what we're looking at here, it's not your typical radar. This is us looking inside the storm, and you can still see it wrapping up right here. That was an update, too. That was an update, that yeah. That's updating quickly, and that is working toward the northeast. So, uh, Jim, let's back this out a little bit to give uh, folks a little more of an establishing look. So right in here near Finley is where our tornado is. So this is on the uh, Taylor and Marion County line, and that is working its way to the northeast. So you got all this real estate out ahead of it that is in the path of this tornado. Now, obviously the tornado isn't gonna hit everybody in that tornado warning. Just not, it, it's not working that way. Torn but within that tornado warning, we're gonna see a likely tornado that tracks through that. And it may be right on in the middle of this, but we were looking at this earlier, Jim, and you could see the inflow that was coming into this storm was just tremendous at one point. And inflows, they're sucking in so much, so much wind, they do damage on their own. So if we put a track on this, as it goes to the northeast, you can see it's gonna to be toward Perryville into uh, Boyle County coming up at 352. Right now it's 329. So it isn't wasting any time. So Boyle County into Marion County, far northern parts of Casey County, southern sections of Mercer County especially, and northern Lincoln. Find your basement if you got it. If you're in a mobile home in these areas, you need to get out of there 
now and you've got just enough time to try to find a safe shelter. I would rather for you guys, if you're in a mobile home in this area, I would rather have you find a, stru a sturdy structure and seek shelter there. If you're caught outside, the uh, objective is to get as low as you can, all right? We're gonna get as low as we can. We're gonna get in a ditch, a ravine, a creek as long as the waters aren't coming up. And then we're gonna get low and we're gonna cover our head. The lower you get, the better the chance the winds are gonna shoot right over you, or the stronger winds. So let us find that safe shelter immediately with this likely tornado that is coming out of uh, the Marion and Taylor County area. Harrodsburg, tornado sirens are likely going off. Danville, tornado sirens are likely going off. Stanford, tornado sirens likely going off. Same in Lebanon, they have been for a while. Springfield into Marion County, maybe northern parts of Casey County if that is covered by uh, the uh, any sirens in that part of the area, not exactly into Liberty, into uh, Casey County, but that is work it, working its way quickly to the northeast. So we've got this loop that is showing up here. This is a likely tornado that is coming out of Lebanon or coming toward Lebanon, coming into Southern Marion County and Jim. It will not take long for this to get to Harrodsburg, Danville and Perryville. We can see how far it's traveled here. That's a, again, what we talk about a two hour animation. Well, you can see two hours ago, that storm was just outside of Bowling Green. Now, as I play it out here for you, you can see all the way up until right now, it has made its way north of Campbellsville and continues on track. I mean, two hours, it raced several counties and caused, I bet you caused plenty of damage in between. So that's one we're watching for possible tornadic development. It likely produced one in Bowling Green, it sounds like from uh, yeah. what we're hearing with all of the damage and could very well continue on track with that as it makes its way toward the uh, east northeast here. So again, what Chris said, if you're in Danville, you're in Harrodsburg, you're in, in Stanford, you wanna go ahead and get in that safe location because it is on the move. I'm gonna pop up the, the velocities again and you, that way I can try, I, I can track the, the, the center of it a little bit better where the tornado is. Yeah, it looks like is. it is just to the southwest of the Bradfordsville area and heading toward Bradfordsville, which is in um, southeastern, uh, eastern parts of Marion County. And at that pace, Jim, it would maybe clip the northwestern part of Casey County as it heads toward Barely, yep. western Boyle County. Barely roll across that, which I will take the track off again and so you can see it a little bit better and I will add it again because that's what we can do with it. So here's what Chris was talking about, barely clipping parts of uh, Casey County there as it moves east northeast. So there again some of the communities that it likely travels toward here between right now and 4.01 a.m. as far out as it goes and that takes it into Danville right around 4 o'clock this morning. So that's the, where the center of circulation appears to be, where the, the tornado mm -hmm. itself appears to be as it's uh, spinning along. So that is the cell that we're watching that is already what we believe has had a history of producing significant weather uh, out in the western portions of Kentucky so far, likely producing tornado. Uh, you know, I haven't heard anything about our sister station in uh, WBKO. I know that I asked one of our producers to see if she could at least get in touch with yeah. them out there but uh, I haven't heard anything from her. She tried to call a minute ago, but we were doing 15 things at once. But yeah, yeah. Uh, back and around our area real quick, I'll just highlight this too, because this is an ongoing situation. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning, Anderson, Franklin, Henry, Scott, Shelby, and Woodford. Now that's gonna continue until 345. So you've got uh, roughly 12 minutes uh, left on that or so, roughly somewhere mm -hmm. right around that. And that one's for strong winds, probably in excess of about 60 miles per hour. So a true severe thunderstorm warning. So that uh, rolls right along here for us over the next few hours as uh, the morning kind of plays out. And uh, the one morning we tracked earlier there with the, the tornado warning around uh, folks in Robertson County, it has been allowed to expire, but now this uh, tornado warning continues. As you can see, it's flashing, meaning there's been an update to it. It continues for folks uh, out around uh, Maysville. Not in Maysville, yeah. but it's close. And, and uh, Weather Service confirming a, uh, a tornado near Campbellsville moving northeast at 55 miles an hour. That was 
um, just a few minutes ago, about five, 10 minutes or so ago. So that is a, uh, a confirmed tornado that is moving to the northeast very, very quickly, passing just to the south of Lebanon, Marion County. Folks in Gravel Switch, northwestern parts of Casey County, uh, western Boyle County, especially around the Perryville area and south, that, that is where we likely have a tornado. And you can still see that that signature is showing up fairly, uh, fairly well right now into um, areas south of Lebanon. And so again, what we're looking for, the green and the red back to back guys, and, we're, and, we, and we, we don't mean to inundate you with some of this, uh, all these other things that you're not used to seeing, but yeah. it, it just helps us tell the story a little bit better and, and keep you uh, safe and updated. Yeah, and we, you know, we'll, we'll, we try to just break it down to where it's easy for everybody to understand right. instead of, you know, talking over people. Let's, let's, let's make them understand, you know, what, what we're looking at in, in, in layman's terms, so to speak, and that's, that's what we're here for. Where it's flashing again, so a little bit of an update probably to it, maybe on timing. So I'll just plot the new information out there for you. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you're there yeah. and uh, within the path, I Let me mean, see what the, uh, you're going to yeah. get it. And, and again, here's the latest uh, tornado, uh, tornado warning at 334. Confirmed tornado was near Lebanon moving northeast now at 60 miles an hour. Near Lebanon. Yep. So that, and it's likely just south of Lebanon in all likelihood, uh, with that uh, confirmed tornado, and that is moving to the northeast now, very, very quickly, 60 miles an hour. That uh, that that thing is is moving at breakneck speed, and the trajectory on that could bring it toward uh, the Lexington Metro coming up here within an hour. And I see, oh, we'll I see, by, by the way, Bowling Green under a, a new uh, severe thunderstorm warning. So. Um, mm. There's your, there's your, there's your storm right on top of the Lebanon area, Marion County, and points south and southeast from there. Yeah, you can see that spin is literally just a little south. It looks like there may actually be, there could have been a little spin over top of Lebanon as well up there on the northern side of that. Just a hint of one, but the stronger one is heading toward Bradfordsville, down south. Yeah, right. near yeah. the uh, the what Peck Ford area. So I see 208 Highway 49 that comes out of Lebanon toward Bradfordsville, going to be impacted by this very, very quickly. 1157, another road there within the, the, the range of where the rotation appears to be right now. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're out and you're east of this, just go ahead, as Chris said a few minutes ago, get to that safe spot. If you can get to the basement right now, now's the time to do it. First floor of your home, I'll go over those safety tips for you. I, I know we, we go over them a lot, but let me tell you, they're important. Yeah, they are. And especially in a situation like this. Seek a safe shelter, safest place, as we all know, is a basement. If you don't have one, I don't have one. Mm -hmm. uh, where do I go? I go to the first floor of my home, get into an interior room. It puts more walls in between me and the outside world, and that's what you want, because in the outside world, that's where that tornado resides. Yeah, and you know, Jim, we often tell people, we have for years, when you are seeking shelter um, from a tornado or just damaging winds, I know we all don't have a hard hat readily available. I right. get that. But if we got a bicycle helmet, if we got a, a football helmet, a batting helmet, a baseball helmet, anything, put it on. This could save your life. Something this simple because most injuries, most fatalities from tornadoes occur from flying debris. So if you can protect your head, that, that's what we're asking you guys to do. Protect your head. And just something as simple as, as a, a, just a, a hard hat like this. This is just a, more of a decorative one that we have here at WKYT. And I thought we'd bring it out tonight just as an illustration. So you protect your head. And if not, put a pillow over your head. Put a blanket. Whatever you got to do, just cover the noggin. And again, I know right now, it's the, Jim, it's the middle of the night. We've got uh, kids who are waking up. Parents who are waking up, adults who are waking up, scared to death because there's a possible tornado coming at us. Here the, the weather guys are on TV talking about this, 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 this. Let's take a deep breath. We're going to get through this. For the kids who are watching right now, or the moms and dads, you got the kids, you're, you're, you're putting them in the closet right now, you're putting them in the bathroom, you've got them in the basement. So if they can hear me right now, just know all we got to do is follow the safety rules that we've practiced at school. All right. 
It's all we got to do. We, we protect our head. Remember all those safety drills we went through at school. And maybe we went through them at home too. And, and severe weather preparing this week. Maybe we did that. So I want you guys to just remember all those safety trainings that we did at school. Remember the tornado drills? We'd go out in the hall or a safe shelter. We'd cover our heads. That's what I want you guys to do right now. So we do that. It may get loud. It may get noisy. You're hearing those tornado sirens, but just hang with me, okay? We're going to get you through this. So just take a deep breath. We're going to be okay. We're going to get through this. We're watching this for you guys, and we're honing in on exactly where this storm is heading. And this is the tornado warning that is out for a number of counties across central Kentucky right now, Jim. Several of them, and it's digging deeper now. See, we, we, it didn't take long for it to clear a lot of land, did it? No, it did not. It, that thing is, is trucking. It is moving toward gravel switch, and uh, next stop would be Boyle County for the, for the spin on that. You know, and I'm, and I'm looking at it. Jim, if we go back in on that, <clears throat> right on top of um, Bradfordsville and just north of Bradfordsville. Goodness gracious, I'm looking at a, at a computer we have off, um, off camera here just to the north of that and you will be able to see this where the likely tornado is it should be showing up right in here yeah, there you go there you go and so that's that's what we're dealing with so if we are getting a tornado from this it is right here folks this is north of Bradsfordsville it was a confirmed tornado uh, from the National Weather Service into southern parts of Marion County so this is it and that's a that's a strong tornado signature that we are looking at there is a real chance this is producing a destructive tornado north of the Bradfordsville area and this is pr this next sweep that goes through you're going to see that moving off to the northeast uh, a little quicker now moving to the northeast at 60 miles per hour so this thing isn't going to waste any time in getting uh, across the far northern tip of Casey County getting into western parts of Boyle County. From there, we will see what it, if it can impact Lincoln County, which is possible, northern Lincoln County, and up into maybe Harrodsburg. Harrodsburg, Mercer County, the sirens are going off right now, guarantee you. Perryville, sirens are going off. Danville, all across Boyle County, tornado sirens are going off. And it's, the, it's scary, I get it. It's the middle of the night, and here you got us talking about a likely tornado coming your way. So if we go through, just listen to what we're, we're walking you through with those tornado safety tips. Get to the center of the lowest floor <clears throat> possible. And that's what we're doing here. I see that uh, new sweep went by, Jim, and it looks like it updated. Mm -hmm. If we could take the track off, we'll be able to see. And it's got a couple of kinks that are showing up um, south of that as well. Hopefully, hoping this thing cycles down just a little bit, but it's still there, right there. It may not be quite as stout, but you know what? That's just maybe just a minor deviation in it uh, based on this, just the latest sweep. Taking but it out over the next half hour. Yeah, so it is, it's about to get out of Marion County coming up shortly. It'll be on top of gravel switch in just a matter of minutes. Perryville, 351, that's uh, what, nine minutes from now. Danville before four, Bergen, Bryantsville. So that's taking it over into northern parts of Gary County when you're talking that. So w Harrodsburg, Danville, where will the core of this settle in between is it between both cities is it right is it on top of one of those cities we'll see we don't want it to be anywhere we're not saying hey avoid this area and hit this area no 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 we're not saying that at all what we are doing though is watching this storm racing to the northeast very very quickly so that is your tornado warning so again lowest floor if you got a basement let's get to it if you don't have a basement, it's the lowest level. Put as many walls between you and the outside as you can. You want to get away uh, from the outer walls. You want to get away from windows. Windows just break. They can get a, a tree limb. Can take a window down in a heartbeat, right? So here's the core of the storm where the possible tornado would be. Uh, maybe shifting a little more toward the gravel switch area and along 68 here, coming out of Boyle County and into Marion County. So this is going to continue to work its way to the northeast into Perryville. Perryville, Junction City, Danville. If we're not in our basements or our storm shelters, let's get to it. All right, just get to it. We'll, we'll let you know when it's 
time to come out. We're streaming right now. You can watch us on your phone from the storm shelter. If, if you can't for some reason, you know what? Crank the TV up. We'll talk to you. You can hear us. You can just get to where you need to get to. Crank the TV up. We'll talk to you, let you know when it is, uh, when the all clear is sounding. We're not all clear. We're a long way from, from sounding that all clear as of now. So here's your storm gravel switch. This is 68 out of Perryville coming out of Mercer County as well. And then, um, of course, here on uh, 34 and a lot of folks are scared. Jim, I, I can't imagine right now being in one of these areas at going on four o'clock in the morning. You're sleeping soundly, and all of a sudden you hear the tornado sirens that are right. going off. Scary. Like a thief in the night. It, you is, know, it, is, it, is. it is scary, scary stuff. But that's why we're here. We're, gonna, we're remaining calm for you all, but we're going we're gonna to tell you exactly what we want you to do to get through this. Now my, my question is, when are they going to try to put something out for this area? Yeah, right, no, right. Because they, they, were they really gave a long lead. Yeah, yeah, we will see how far northeast that gets extended coming up here shortly. Is that severe thunderstorm warning still up there or? I believe it's disappeared. Has it disappeared? Yeah, that, that. Yeah, it's gone. Oh, wow, that's stronger storms here. Northern Scott County up into Harrison County. And that tornado warning, by the way, that was out for Robertson County and Mason County, no longer the case. That's been replaced by a severe thunderstorm warning. That so that is at least Ohio. some yeah. good news. And then, uh, then you've got this storm. That's the only warning, Jim, technically in our TV coverage area. But again, we're here for everybody. And, and, and in today's world, listen, they're watching, uh, you know, it just People who are into severe weather are watching from different places in the country. Everywhere, you're right. Absolutely. So, though. Yeah, and if you're here in Kentucky, you're watching us. We're gonna we're gonna take care of you. So we've got it locked in. And again, waiting on some kind of uh, lead on a warning, whether it be severe or whether it be another tornado <coughs> warning, uh, into uh, parts of. Um, so this is now official from Bowling Green, Jim, with um, uh, multiple reports of collapsed structures. Due to the tornado, people are trapped, damaged to the Corvette, plier, uh, Corvette plant with a fire, fire. Yeah. on its roof. The roof is on fire in the Corvette plant after a tornado hit it. There you go. I mean, that, this is that cell, guys. This is this what we're same, talking right it's here. The same, yeah, it's the same cell. That's it's right. It's the same one that's out there right now. Uh, closing on you folks there in Danville. Uh, it's that same cell that produced all that damage out there. It's on its way and it's going to keep digging deeper and deeper in Du Bois County here as we move through the next uh, couple of hours, I say couple of hours, I really mean the next uh, couple of quarters of an hour uh, because that's how quickly this is moving, still right at 60 miles per hour <coughs> off toward the east-northeast. Yeah. Still waiting to see if there's going to be an expansion on the um, warning. Out of uh, Taylor County, uh, report of a tornado emergency manager saying a structure has collapsed there with people trapped. Uh, just to the north of uh, Campbellsville in northern Taylor County. So that, that was actually a little away from. It was. From the, well, no, the, the tornado was actually north of Campbellsville, northern Taylor County heading. So that, that would be with that likely tornado there in, uh, in northern Taylor County that, that is now moving toward Gravel Switch and eventually into western Boyle County right now. Same one, guys. It's the same one that has already had a history of producing damage and possibly tornadic activity so far. That's what it has done uh, here this morning with uh, folks uh, out to our west and now trying to dig deeper into central portions of Kentucky here before you know it. Um, let's see, got a new report coming in here. Just try checking everything. Chris is doing something right now, so I have to, I have to be both me and him for a second. Uh, but. That's the cell right there, and it is a doozy of a, a thunderstorm that's uh, possibly producing a tornado there. And I'm going to look at, they're going to continue the warning, but they haven't extended it to, to anything. You see it flashing there on your screen. They're continuing it along. So once again, I'm going to do one of these things, guys, where we, we look inside it to see the wind because th that's what helps me kind of figure out where everything uh, is happening. Okay, circulation not quite as dominant as it was a little while ago. Uh, earlier, I mean, there was just a clear signature on there. Now it's becoming more of a, a muffled view uh, and giving us uh, that kind of view, uh, maybe indicating that uh, the, the circulation is just a lot broader right now, but still certainly there with small areas of it. That's what you can run into is a little multiple areas of circulation that could still cause some concern in that area. Now, 
we look around a little bit more. I'm waiting to see what happens out and away from it because you have to keep something going, I, I would imagine, at this point because of the long history uh, that this cell has had producing severe weather. I mean, it's been around for a long time, long-tracked uh, severe thunderstorms, and this has been the tornado warning for a while. And that's what continues to spin out there. And uh, just reading the continuation of that warning. But uh, again, we could still see some uh, spin-ups with this as it all comes together here. And we could see some of these uh, severe elements stay alive and well into the early morning hours here as we're right now approaching four o'clock in the morning on this uh, Saturday. Not exactly the way we wanted to start the weekend, but uh, this is something we've been watching for the past few days and knew the potential was there, but here we are. I mean, we're right in the heart of it right now. There's uh, the storm itself, the one that's had this long history of producing damaging winds and um, even a tornado on the ground. Um, it's here, it's in our area right now. No changes from warning status just yet, but if you're there and if you're there anywhere, if you're in Mercer County, if you're in Boyle County, if you're in Lincoln County, uh, this thing is barreling through that area right now and could be producing a tornado. Uh, it certainly has the, the indication there and there are multiple areas of spin that we're concerned about too that could spin up not only one but m maybe uh, another area or two. See, that's, that's another concern because the spin looks that way on the uh, interior of the cell as we keep on tracking it and keep on moving along with our severe weather threat this morning, Chris Bailey. Did you, did you hear anything from our, our st sister station out west? Yeah, uh, nothing as of yet. Um, out in Bowling Green, we're hoping that, um, you know, they're okay. New update on the, uh, I don't know if you were just giving that or not. I was talking to uh, our assistant news director, but um, on this tornado warning, uh, capable of producing the tornado still near yeah. Lebanon, and uh, they do say the environment out ahead of that is still conducive for, for more, spin ups. Yeah, so uh, we, that's you, a big concern. So you may just get that extended into Jessamine County, into Garrett County, Madison County, just to be on the safe side because it does have a history of pulsing up and pulsing down just a little bit so it's it kind of cycles its way through and again we want to point out this is the same cell that was in bowling green that's caused all that yeah, damage. Bowl, and bowling green is, is has been devastated folks um you know what we are seeing right now coming out of bowling green has just been heartbreaking um you know it's um it, it, it's sad to see and I, I can only imagine as soon as daylight as we get daylight yep you know, the, the video we're going to get out of Bowling Green, out of Western Kentucky, is going to be horrific. And let's hope we don't get that anywhere else into Central and Eastern Kentucky. But, you know, it's obviously something we can't, we can't say won't happen. Especially with a cell like this is still out there at this time of night. Mm -hmm. I just, it is so, it has been so impressive. Let's dig in again. Okay, still. Still seeing some of the broad circulation there, uh, the broad rotation, I should say, and that would indicate that we could still keep something spinning out there. And, and that's what uh, one of the taglines on the last morning said was uh, the, the atmosphere is ready for it. And it is primed and ready to keep anything alive like this, alive and well, to keep traveling through this uh, air mass. Everything has to be just right and things are just right tonight, unfortunately as we make our way through the uh, very early morning hours here on this Saturday, friends. There you see the, the strong thunderstorm likely producing a tornado a little while ago. Maybe just true severe at this moment, but mm -hmm. we're, we're sticking with that warning right now and uh, waiting to see what comes next. Because yeah. still plenty, of, again, we had great lead time on this warning the last time. We, we, I'd like to see a good lead time on it again here, whether it's another warning, severe thunderstorm warning, or whether it's another tornado warning, whatever the expansion is, I would like to see what it is, see something come out here shortly. Yes, uh, Storm Prediction Center, by the way, just putting out a, uh, a, a statement on how the strong tornado potential should begin to lessen in the next one to two hours, but across it's still there across the bluegrass region of central Kentucky. So they're essentially tracking this supercell thunderstorm that we have the tornado warning for right now coming into Boyle County to the northeast between Lexington and Richmond, essentially on the Kentucky River and then northeast toward Moorhead. And as it gets northeast of 
uh, let's say Winchester, it begins to weaken a little bit. Well, let's hope so. Yeah, because it is, it's had the history of, of producing um, wind damage and everything else. So let's give kind of an overall view again of what we're talking about as we kind of just reset everything. You've got strong thunderstorms across northern Kentucky. No warnings out outside of Mason County where it's a severe thunderstorm warning. Lexington Metro, no warnings as of yet, but you get farther to the southwest and there's your tornado warning that continues in effect and that is now especially uh, for northern sections of Casey County, northern parts of Lincoln County, all of Boyle County and southern parts of Mercer County and that includes the cities of Harrodsburg and Danville as well. And again, let's go and, and look inside this storm because it has weakened. It does not have the strong tornado signature that we had a little bit ago. But what we're looking at on this, if you if you will notice here, and we saw this a few times earlier, Jim, where it almost looks a little more linear, but then you you start to see just a few little kinks in there. Yep. So you got a little little kink here, a little one here that is just to the southwest of Danville's uh, west of Junction City, and then it's maybe a smaller extent to the southwest of Harrodsburg. So you, you have a couple of circulations in there that are kind of fighting with one another, what it looks like. Instead of how this earlier was just one complete circulation. So now you got a few in there that are battling it out to see if one can, can take over. I say fight it out because that, that lessens the overall tornado risk with this. But until we see a few more sweeps and see if, one, if those come back together, or they stay fighting with that, um, you know, that storm could weaken if they stay fighting. But as of now, I, I wouldn't, I, I would not put this warning out just yet. I, I wouldn't put it to bed because we've seen this cycle too many times over the past, what, two hours now? Yes, yes. I mean, since it hit Bowling Green with a devastating tornado and now it, it cycled down a little bit where it lost the rotation, everybody went, ah, it's weakening. 10 minutes later, strengthening tornado had a had produced likely tornado again in Taylor County and Marion County. So it may have cycled down just a little bit here lately, but don't let that fool you. That thing could 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 spin back up in a hurry here. So we will see exactly how that plays out into Boyle County, into Mercer County, northern Lincoln County, far northern parts of Casey County. Then again, downstream. Do we get that uh, warning extended into Jessamine County, southern Woodford County, northern parts of Garrett County, maybe Madison or southern Fayette? I can't say that that uh, doesn't happen. And, and given what I've seen with this storm so far, Jim, over the past couple of hours, I, I would hedge on putting out a new warning right. just to be on the safe side. And I had to go back. I'm, I'm checking the time. I wanted to see what the expiration time on that was. And it is 4 o'clock for that one. So we are just... Well, roughly three minutes away from the expiration of that warning uh, for for the one that we have out there at the moment. So, you know, now or five minutes yeah, ago would have been a better time to, yeah. to have the next and one to come out. Haven't given, an, uh, given us an indication of whether or not this is going to be extended or allowed to expire. So, you know, the good, the good thing is we're in direct communications with the National Weather Service, all of the offices uh, around us. Uh, via a chat so that is that's what we do and um, and and we'll see exactly what they do uh, getting some major tornado damage reports around Campbellsville and Taylor County so it doesn't surprise me with the signature no, had at that time and, you know you know when, and when we pull that up you know I stepped off off cam and I, I saw one of our off-camera computers and I'm like oh that's not good and I mean, that thing went from zero to 60 again, very, very quickly. And right now, I'm just waiting on uh, to, to see if there's an extension of the warning. We know that's a strong storm, there, um, first of all. Getting, apparently at five o'clock this morning, coming up here in just over an hour, Governor Bashir is gonna be having a, a press conference, a news conference. At five? At five this morning to address the devastation. I'm seeing reports uh, from from some stations in Louisville, Jim, of at least 50 people dead in Mayfield. 50 people? 50. Yeah. Well, I'm seeing the damage now as I turn yeah. around there. 50 yeah. people. So, um, 
Yeah. So that's 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 what we're dealing with tonight, folks. Fifty, at least fifty people. This, according to a report from uh, our CBS affiliate in Louisville. That's unbelievable. That uh, at Heartbreaking. least at least fifty people have died in Mayfield alone. New tornado warning now includes Richmond, now includes Lancaster, now includes Nicholasville. That is to the northeast, so we did get that tornado warning extended. There you go for Boyle, Garrett, Jessamine, Lincoln, Madison, and Mercer, and it goes until 445. So this does not include Fayette County, but it is just to the south of Lexington, Jim. And that, again, goes until 445. That is essentially a, um, an extension of our storm as it makes its way into central Kentucky as of now. Still got those competing, uh, what looks like com competing circulations into Boyle County. And again, this is pulsed up and down for two hours now. So, right. so kudos to the National Weather Service in Louisville for sticking with this warning out ahead of it. Because that's good, you know, that's entering, about to enter a very heavily populated area. Yes, it is. Uh, Lexington Metro and South. And so we are, we are talking about a lot of folks in line of that uh, severe thunderstorm possibly producing a tornado that's uh, now southwest of Lexington. Uh, rolling through Boyle County right now the, with if there's a true center of it, it'd be somewhere in Boyle County right now passing through there and then headed off toward the east northeast. And I, I say east northeast because it has a bit of an easterly jog, but still veering toward the north as well. So that's where your veer comes from. But right now just rolling through those counties and those communities as uh, we head through time. So again, the, the warning has been extended out to the east of that right now passing through Boyle County and uh, some of the stronger points and some of that on the southern side of it as well. And I will venture down here to see for you. And there you see it uh, just to the uh, west of Stanford too. So we get down into Lincoln County and you're also That thing Jim it. is moving at 55 miles an hour. Yes. Still that forward speed on that has just been absolutely uh, off the charts. And it is just crazy to, to see these storms moving at 50, you know, 5, 60 miles an hour. And then uh, to add insult to injury, you, you throw in all this high water on the backside with numerous flash flood warnings on top of damaged areas that have already like Bowling Green now under flash flood warning, some high water, a good possibility in that area. So we're adding up several different things, several different layers of severe weather elements coming together cause problems for uh, several folks across the Commonwealth here this morning early as uh, we are now just past four o'clock in the morning. It's 4.02 in the morning, my friends, and we are watching these uh, strong to severe thunderstorms moving through the area. We mentioned that Richmond was now in the path of the next tornado warning. You are. It goes right through the heart of Madison County. You can see it highlighted right there, and it's uh, just west you folks there in Lancaster, Chris. Yeah. And, you know, Jim, we, we look at the northern edge of this, it's losing a little bit of the lightning with it. But the tornado warning, it, this does include Nicholasville. This includes Lancaster, Harrodsburg. This is kind of splitting us, but most of this is to the south of us. It is on top of Lancaster, Danville, uh, Berea. We're not included in this, but uh, into Richmond, the Whitehall area. Yeah, we're under the gun with this. Bryantsville, Lancaster, and uh, northern parts of of Lincoln County as well. Jim, if we pause this, I, I'm just, I want to see inside this to see if we are losing a little bit of the circulation. And I'm wondering if the southern extent of this isn't going to try to take over now. Because that's the, the southern edge of this is becoming what looks like more linear toward the southwest into Bowling Green. So you've got a little spin here. Yeah, boy, it's still got those competing um, signatures that are showing up here. So a little spin is right on top of Danville. There is another little spin, looks like uh, on top of the Boyle and Lincoln County line, and maybe a little one here to the east of Harrodsburg. So within this, Jim, you, you, you may have a, one or two little brief tornado touchdowns right. that can show up. Not too dissimilar to what happened in Stamping Ground in Franklin County on Sunday night into Monday morning, because those were, those were relatively weak tornadoes by tornado standards. They weren't on the ground, in some cases, more than 30 seconds or a minute. They just happened to hit on top of homes. 
so you look at that and you wonder if, if, if that's what we're dealing with because you're losing the lightning on the northern edge of this, but you've got little competing signatures that are showing up, little, little spins. And as long as they're fighting in there, it keeps that one major spin from potentially taking control. I'm not trying to minimize them, just giving you a, an observation of what we're looking at here. So if you are in Jessamine County, if you're in Madison County, downtown Richmond, into Lancaster, over into Boyle County, Lincoln County, Mercer County, let us find the safe shelters immediately. So Stanford, Danville, Lancaster, Bryantsville, uh, Nicholasville, Wilmore, over toward Harrodsburg and into downtown Richmond. Safest place is a basement, interior room on the first floor. The lowest floor is where you want to be. And the objective is to put as many walls between where you are and the outside as you can. And listen, I preach this every time we have tornadoes or the threat of tornadoes. Now granted, we haven't had any this year. We haven't had any in a few years, to be honest with you. It's been a quiet past couple of years. We're not going to complain about that. Protect your head. I don't care what you got to do. Protect your head because flying debris is the number one problem. The number one problem we're facing in a tornado flying. I mean, you see the video of tornadoes. You see everything that is just flying around, right? So if we protect our head, if it's with an old helmet, baseball helmet, batting helmet, football helmet, hard hat. Not that we all have helmets laying around. I get that. What's probably more likely to be laying around somewhere is a bicycle helmet. Put that on too. It's all about covering your head. Protect your head above all else and then your, your chances of getting through this are much, much, much higher. So with so many areas now under tornado warnings in central Kentucky, as we've said through the past few hours, kids, I want you guys to just take a deep breath right now because it's the middle of the night. I get it. We're scared, right? So just take a deep breath. Remember all those tornado safety drills we went through in school. All I mean, you know, at the time it was kind of cool, right? I mean, you, you got out of class, you were doing a little tornado drill and you got to you, you got to go through the motion. OK, well, guess what? What we learned then we're going to put to good use right now. So we're going to remain calm and we're going to get to our safe shelters and we're going to cover our head just like we did during those tornado drills, whether or not we did those tornado drills at school or whether we did them at home. I mean, maybe your family practiced those. Maybe your family has that designated shelter. All right, we're, we're going to get through this. OK, just just do what we're what we're asking of you and take a deep breath. Listen to what uh, what everybody around you is telling you to do. Just take a deep breath. Promise you we're going to we're going to get through this. OK, and then we're going to be here for you. And if you guys, anybody right now, it, you know what, Jim, this probably goes for some adults, too, because some adults are probably going to freak out uh, on an event like this. Um, but just take a deep breath. Let's go through our, our storm shelters, our, our motions, what we're telling you to do. And we're going to give you, yeah, there we go. And then we're going to give you the information that can give you the best chance of getting through this unscathed. Property, we can, we can replace that, all right? Lives, something we can't. So here's your tornado warning until 445, Boyle, Garrett, Jessamine, Lincoln, Madison, Mercer. It's a lot of real estate, but not everybody within this area is going to see a tornado. It's going to be a limited area that actually gets hit by a potential tornado. But covering our head is going to be step one, Jim, in getting through this and seeking that safe shelter, the lowest floor that you can get to. And uh, again, kids, deep breath. Listen, if you listen to us and hear us out, promise you we're going to get through this a okay. And for the moms and dads who are out there and you're getting, you're running to your safe shelter right now, you can pull us up on our app. You can pull us up. I think we're, we're in Facebook live. At least I hope so. And, uh, so we're on Facebook live. You can watch us on your phone that way. Or Jim, let's say you don't have the, you don't have good cell service work in your basement or your storm shelter, turn the TV up crank it up. Right. We're allowed to begin with and you can hear us. We'll walk you through this. And what we're seeing right now on this particular radar view, Jim, is the northern edge of this weakening just a little bit based on just the lightning. Lightning is re a really good indicator sometimes on the on the uh, storm strengthening or weakening. 
and that's we're seeing the lightning now more into Lincoln County than on the northern side of that. And that spot in uh, Lincoln County, regardless of if it is producing a, a tornado or not, it, it is a very intense part of a thunderstorm right now that's moving through that area. Might be picking up on some large hail, so you get all the other characteristics to go along with it, even if it isn't uh, tornadic at this particular moment in time. But uh, that is what we are watching, the tornadic threat very close here, and we will continue to monitor it. And I'm going to try to look again, as Chris has been pointing out, multiple little areas <coughs> where there could be some spin trying to go up, trying to develop into uh, individual little cells or individual little spots of uh, circulation. So right now it's a, a constant battle with that. This warning was set to go to 445 for all the areas we have highlighted in the new section of the warning. We had an old warning out. Now we're in the new warning zone and uh, several areas included in on that, Jasmine County, uh, right through the, the, the middle of Madison County. I mean, you go all the way into downtown Richmond with this. I mean, that's quite a bit of real estate when you consider it and Nicholasville. The only thing is, Chris, I guess, you know, this time of year, a lot of the, the kids are off campus because yeah. we're at winter right. break, you yeah. know. Yeah, finals are over. Right. Kids are away from campus, but, um, you know, folks who live out near Lake Reba, um, you know, you're on the far eastern edge of that particular warning. But I'm telling you, Jim, the northern part of that is kind of falling apart right it now. Is, yeah. This is becoming much more linear across the, the southern extent of this, and that extends back in toward Lincoln County. So I'm looking inside this particular storm, and it's losing a lot of rotation, isn't it? It is, it, it, a, a whole lot. And that is, that, that's a beautiful sight. Uh, and the northern side of that is losing that rotation. So what we may need to watch for now is to see exactly how this plays out on the southern end of this. And I'm also, hey, my goodness, look at uh, poor Bowling Green. We know we just got devastated by a tornado. Injuries, we've got people that are trapped here, and now we've got flash flooding to deal with. And what I'm seeing on the southern edge of this as of now, Jim, yeah, we may get uh, some kinks to form along that line. But when I see this kind of lining up like that, it, it's transitioning at least on the back edge of this into more of a flash flood signature than a true tornado signature as of now. But again, this is our potential tornado that is heading toward uh, Garrett County into Madison County. I say potential because I'm not seeing as much rotation within this as what we were seeing a little bit ago. But this storm has had a history of cycling just a little bit. What do I mean by cycling? Listen, it's a fancy term for saying it gets stronger, it gets weaker. All right, that's that's it. We'll put it where you can understand. It gets stronger, it gets weaker. Right now it's a little weaker on the northern side of that. Now it can't go back and forth forever. So is it running out of steam once and for all? Fingers crossed. But the southern edge of this is the stronger part of this. And then there's one little part of it to the northwest of the Bryansville area. By the way, where you're seeing this little bit of white and gray here, that is where the, the radar says, hey, I see some hell here. So that that's, could be a hell signature southwest of Lancaster and then uh, into northern, a couple of spots here into northern parts of Stanford, uh, Lincoln County, Stanford, Houstonville, and then uh, northwest of Bryansville uh, near Junction City. Over toward Paint Lick, that tornado warning is in effect. So I guarantee you, Jim, we got so many folks that are down here right now. This is a popula highly populated area, and a lot of folks getting those tornado sirens that are going off and hitting those storm shelters if you got them, basements if you got them, ground floor, interior room, closet, covering our head. That's where we need to be as of right now. But again, we've had no reports with this one of a tornado. This same storm has produced a tornado. This same storm produced the tornado down in Bowling Green. But it is, again, now farther to the northeast and a little disjointed. I'm looking at this, though, curious as to see if we find anything in this particular part of our storm. If we take a little look in, it, it's kind of splitting just a little bit, but we'll see if it can get out on its own and, and do anything. But as of now, no, not so much. Not a whole lot of spin showing up with this. Maybe just a little there north of uh, 27 near the Mercer and Garrett County line. Far cry, though, from how we started this coverage. What, going on two hours ago, I guess, with the continuing coverage? Yeah, I guess. Give yeah, or take a little bit. There, yeah. When we had that tornado that was uh, making its way across Taylor County. Same storm, 
by the way, but it's kind of doing a little split now. Southern edge of this is stronger than the northern edge. That southern edge is aimed more toward Lancaster and Stanford and maybe between Berea and Richmond. So a lot of folks are listening to us right now, hanging on, waiting for that all clear. Can't give it to you just yet. This tornado warning still has 30 minutes left in it. Hmm. I don't know if we're going to see the 30 minute. No, uh, I don't think I don't know that this is going to make it to three or 445 for an expiration time. They this, just peeled the back of it off right there. Yeah, the back just got chopped away. So there you, yeah, there you go. And so the back edge Danville Harrodsburg were no longer in a tornado warning. So give it a few minutes. The sirens will go off. So Harrodsburg, Danville, Mercer County, Boyle County. We can breathe right now. The sirens will go off. Nicholasville, Lancaster, Stanford, Richmond. Can't breathe just yet because that storm is, we still have that tornado warning for another half hour, but I do not think it will go all the way until 445 at this point because the southern edge of this is trying to get out of the warning and the northern edge is kind of drifting apart just a little bit. And some of that, uh, some of that heavy rain getting on the south side of Lexington. But uh, let's broaden this out a little bit, Jim, just see what else we got. We got people who are watching all over. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning, Mason County see a host of severe thunderstorm warnings again near Bowling Green with flash flood warnings. And then you've got your front. We cannot get out of this tonight or tomorrow morning until we get the front. Well, actually, the front's back here looks like. Wow. <laughs> That's, so one line two lines and there's a the little third line which may be right with our boundary <sighs> three lines the third line is the weakest that's the good news tornado warning looks like in nashville tennessee as well so if you got some loved ones down there tornado warning looks like it is around the nashville area and again i i cannot give enough props to our future radar that we have here at, at wkyt jim this thing absolutely nailed the severe aspect of this line of storms, nailed the timing, and nailed the multiple lines coming through. When other computer models said, nah, it's just one line. Our in-house model that we run for a future radar said, no, I see two or three different lines. And that's indeed what we're dealing with right now. Three, those multiple three, lines. Yeah, three different ones setting up there across uh, parts of uh, the Ohio Valley and getting out into the Midwest even. I mean, so we are dealing with quite a bit of uh, activity. And, and he mentioned this earlier on the backside of that. Look at that snow that's flying. So, I mean, this is a very wild setup, a big system. But this time of year, if you can get a strong one like this, that's what they usually look like. They usually have some of those true wintry elements on the backside, and that's what we have right now, tracking it uh, on the northwestern section of the overall system behind that front. That's what we're looking at. Tornado warning still active out there, as uh, we just mentioned a second ago. I'll plot the time out for you because he was talking about how it wouldn't make it. It, it probably doesn't make it to, to 445. But uh, there you have it for Boyle, Garrett, and, Yeah, Jasmine, and the Lincoln, part of it they're concentrating on now, Jim, is that is the storm around Lancaster. That southern part, yeah. The southern part of it, which is what we just talked about. The northern edge of that is kind of splitting off a little bit. It, it, I mean, it still may have a little spin with it there, uh, getting into the southern parts of Jessamine County. But the worst of the, uh, the strongest part of that storm, without question, is down into northern Lincoln County and uh, parts of uh, the Lancaster area of Garrett County. If that holds together, that's going to head toward Richmond, but n no report of a tornado with this. That is, that's good news. Right. This is one of the few tornado warnings that we've had that we have not had an actual tornado reported. What I've done here is I've laid out the storm track from what looks to be the most intense part of the storm down there around Lancaster and you can see it reaches Richmond by 431 right now it is 418 so yeah, not very long at all before it comes knocking on your door that strongest part of that if it stays within that scope again it may just pass just to the south mm -hmm. if it stays on the, the east northeast track like it uh, currently is but uh, Silver Creek right in the line so again you know Jim and to recap for folks who are just joining us um, our CBS affiliate in Louisville reporting that in Mayfield, Western Kentucky, um, at least 50 fatalities from tonight's tornado. That's incredibly sad. At, at least it, just in the city of Mayfield.
which is in Graves County, Western Kentucky. And that, you know, I was tweeting out about that storm because that's well out of our TV coverage area, but, you know, obviously. But when I saw that rotation heading right toward Mayfield, my heart just literally sank because it was it was a feeling I haven't had since March 2nd of 2012. Yeah. You know, you were looking at a radar like I was that day, and, you know, you could see those spins, and you knew what was going to happen. And I, you just knew what was going to happen there, too. And, and this was probably a very large tornado that, that rolled through May, Mayfield. And if that, looking at the circulation on that earlier, that, I would not be surprised if we don't, and looking at the damage, if that is not an EF4 or 5. You think it's going to be that? Yeah. yeah. Because was, the it, damage out there is just catastrophic. Things are leveled out there from some of the pictures that, that we've seen. Um, literally leveled mm -hmm. to rubble. And uh, it, it takes a, a good strong one to do something like that, what, what's happened out there. And we, uh, we are awaiting Governor Bashir um, to speak, I believe, around 5 this morning. And you know, uh, you know it's, a, it's a very bad situation if a, if, if a governor is going to is going to make an a, an address at 5 a.m. You're right. Um, so just got a severe a severe out for Fayette, Bourbon, Clark, Scott, Harrison, and uh, into Nicholas County here. That's a severe thunderstorm warning, mm -hmm. and it happens right as the rain picks up here at the station. Too. Yeah, you can hear it but, coming uh, through. That goes until 4:45 we as well. We pull up and see what the winds are gusting to right now at uh, Bluegrass Airport in Lexington. Yeah, folks, the uh, you know if you're listening to us during a newscast here, you know that a good indicator on how hard it is raining in Lexington is just by listening to our mics, and because you can hear the rain on the roof. Those were the current uh, current winds as of four o'clock this morning. The peak gusts at that moment: 39 Richmond, 41 Frankfort. That's up there. Louisville at 40. Let me see what. What's the new? What's the see, current day? Bluegrass data? Airport is around 25 right now. They looks like they peaked at 38 miles an hour. I see. In the last 15, 20 minutes or so. But uh, again, that you know, that's that's that storm in Jessamine County is trying to pulse back up, isn't it? In Coming a big into way, southern, yeah. Into southern parts of uh, Fayette County. So let's let's take a little look at that. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Because again, these have had that history of pulsing up, pulsing down just a little bit. So last thing we want to do is let one of those sneak up on us just a little bit and kind of pulse up. I mean, there may be just a little, eh, maybe a little bit of spin in that. Maybe Nothing that not is not major. Right. It's fairly broad. And Jim's got it pulled up here. So right here into Jessamine County, we'll see. We'll, we'll give it another uh, radar cycle or two as it moves across out of Jessamine County into southern parts of Fayette County to see if there is a little more spin with that. But as of right now, it's not the greatest um, and it's fairly broad, but this is going to produce some the potential for damaging winds nonetheless across Lexington with that severe thunderstorm warning. So what will happen now Lexington? OK, so they sound the chimes and for a severe thunderstorm warning in Fayette County. So you, you will hear here very shortly in the distance, all of a sudden you're going to hear the chimes with the with his sirens. OK, that's not for a tornado. That is for a severe thunderstorm warning. So for the chimes, you're getting in on a severe thunderstorm warning for a tornado warning. You would hear I be, it's been so long. Uh, I believe you'd hear the true tornado sirens that are that would be going off. So Lexington is under a severe thunderstorm warning. Farther to the south, we still have that tornado warning that is out into parts of uh, Madison County and back to the west and that that has even been you know the back edge as you mentioned Jim was cut off of that a little bit ago yeah and this continues to look just on true radar data not looking on the inside of it to, with the velocities this looks like it's weakening some on the southern it side has the, as well, the southern know? end of that has weakened yeah absolutely but it, you know we'll I still want to watch that that little bit of an uptick in in near Nicholasville just to just to see what it does as it crosses over into southern parts of Fayette County. And there we go with a tornado warning now uh, it updated Jim. They covered they cut off the back edge of it a little more. I just see it updated on the uh, edge a more. So Lancaster were out of that. Richmond were still in it. Nicholasville were still in it as well. So 
what is what is strange they initially had said the storm around Lancaster was the one to watch yet it's more to the north of, that uh, of right where now. that is yeah, right where that is right. so hmm. it's a little interesting and we'll we'll see again I, I want to see a, another scan or two about that storm coming into southern parts of Fayette County just to see what we're dealing with but with that severe thunderstorm warning that is out now for Lexington uh, that includes let's go down the list here I'm looking Woodford County I see Scott County I see Fayette I see Clark Bourbon Nicholas Harrison into uh, Nicholas County as well under that severe thunderstorm warning big chunk of real estate big there. big chunk of real estate that goes all the way up now into southern parts of Ohio so that connects up with as uh, the warnings that are up there into sections of Mason County. Right now, two separate uh, areas of warning, uh, one being the tornado, the other being severe. Both can be very problematic on, on the same level, uh, especially now that this uh, tornadic cell has seemed to weaken from the from watching tornadic activity within it. Uh, the rotation is not quite as intense as it was a little bit earlier but could still cause some major problems out there as it uh, rolls through the counties that uh, currently are under the warning and j just the surrounding areas as well. So we move north of that and you get the severe part of it and not even seeing a lot of lightning. Right. Chris, but you don't need to have lightning yeah, when, to have the severe no, characteristics. Exactly right. When there's so much wind energy available just above the surface, uh, it, just a simple shower can pull down those stronger winds. Just down like to the ground, just like with our, our situation earlier this week with the confirmed tornadoes, mm -hmm. uh, there there was no lightning around. You know, th these right. were these were just wind producers, and there was just enough uh, to to develop a little bit of spin. Mm -hmm. it, it was uh, one of those odd situations. But. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's um, you know that's that's what we're looking at here, and into uh, the western part of Madison County. That is where we continue to kind of watch for any potential. Severe weather that you know is a possible tornado, but listen, this thing is a, is a shell of its former self. This is nowhere near what we were looking at just a little bit ago. It has weakened considerably as it's <clears throat> moving there into western portions of, as he mentioned, of uh, Madison County here. Uh, I'm going to dig in a little deeper just to see, and then I know what I'm going to see. I'm not going to see much of anything, but I'm going to do it anyway. Still little hints though, Chris, you, you see it there, just little teeny tiny hints of a very weak, broader rotation, but uh, nothing that I would consider off the charts by any means. Yeah, this uh, here's Richmond, Richmond Center, if you guys you know been there, uh, out to eat or what have you, and then southwest on 876, and here's the Silver Creek area. This is into western parts of Madison County. There's still just a little bit of a spin, but if you compare this to what we were looking at a while back, it's not even close to the same circulation that is making its way into Madison County. Madison County, we're still in our basements. We're still in our storm shelters. We're still hunkered down until we can sound the all clear on this tornado warning. So while it may not be the strongest signature in the world, keep in mind that the stamping ground tornado wasn't the strongest signature in the world. It was a weak EF1, had winds of 90 miles an hour, and when you think of a tornado and you think, oh, only 90 miles an hour. If it were just a regular thunderstorm with 90 mile an hour winds, you'd be going, dang, that had 90 mile an hour winds? Same, could do the same damage though. Here's your tornado warning that continues into Richmond toward Nicholasville, does not include the southern tip of Fayette County, though that storm uh, into southern Fayette County is still fairly potent at this time. So give it another 10 or 15 minutes. The, this thing is moving to the northeast at 55 miles per hour. So that's going to scoot across Madison County. It's going to scoot, scoot across Interstate 75 here coming up shortly across Richmond, and then we'll see what it does from there. It, it, the storm, though, kind of has split. So Jim mentioned a little bit ago, there's no lightning. The radar, we've got it, we've got it timed for every lightning strike that you see here. It stays on there for 15 minute increments. So we're looking at this thing and there's no lightning in the past 15 minutes, Jim, within this tornado warning. Right. You actually got a, a, one lightning strike to the west of Paint Lick, but we're not in that warning now. You got some lightning around Lancaster. Not that lightning matters when it comes necessarily to a tornado, but it's an indication. And again, this storm on the south side of Lexington 
radar is at least saying, hey, I see the potential for a little bit of hail with this. So this is uh, from not too far where we are. Hamburg, this would be Richmond Road toward the Athens Boonesboro exit here along Interstate 75 into southern parts of Fayette County. So we'll go up close and personal to give you uh, a bird's eye view of what we're dealing with. So here's Hamburg, here's Frederick Douglass High School. We are right over in here, just not, not far from, um, from Hamburg. We're literally just across the road here. And this is Childsburg. So you've got uh, Interstate 75, Richmond Road, folks in Jacobson Park, Todd's Road area, Man of War, and then point south from there, Jim, we go toward the Athens Boonesboro exit. So now you start to get over toward uh, the new Brenda Cowan Elementary. Here's Athens, Childsburg, a little south of that. There's Jacobson Park, Tates Creek High School. But the worst of this is right on top of the south side of Lexington, where we do have that severe thunderstorm warning that is out right now. This is not a tornado warning, so you're hearing the chimes in Lexington from all the the tornado sirens that are uh, scattered throughout the parks across the city. But you're hearing that right now. It's not a it's not for a tornado warning. That is for a severe thunderstorm warning. So you're hearing this the chimes, and you may be hearing a voice coming on booming in the distance saying severe thunderstorm warning for Fayette County and that's what we're dealing with as of right now so that's some torrential rain that is showing up on top of us but that tornado warning is just across the river into Jessamine County and in toward Richmond but again Jim we look at this and you see how the storm it's kind of split just a little bit it has and and it's just uh, it's ragged compared it is, to what it was it's, earlier. It's that, very ragged, and you know, we like to see when storms kind of get uh, pulled out a little bit. When it when it consolidates into one supercell storm, that's when you got to worry. But uh, let's let's go in and look just one more time, Jim, to see what we are dealing with with the winds in this. So I want to, I don't want anything to just to, to to pop up and pulse back up on us here. So I mean, it's still got this little maybe some spin here around Richmond, but we're still in that storm shelter here into Madison County with that tornado warning that still has almost 15 more minutes, 14 minutes. It goes until 445. So we'll see if it uh, gets to that expiration time. But you're looking at this and again, this any spin in there, as Jim mentioned, ragged, I think it's a pretty good term that we're talking about with this, not that concentration that we were looking at with this same storm in Taylor County where we had a confirmed tornado. So this is a little more of a stretched out storm, stretched out storm. It's hard to consolidate a lot of energy. It doesn't mean we can't get a quick spin up similar to what happened in Franklin County or into Scott County not that long ago. And uh, well, that was what Spurious Sunday, week, Monday, Sunday night, yeah. Monday morning. Yeah. I mean, think about this, folks. We started the week with tornadoes Monday morning. It snowed Wednesday. And now we're ending the week with tornadoes and severe weather. That's crazy. In a five day span. Yes. We had tornadoes, snow, tornadoes. What about that record high? Did we get did, uh, have I don't know. Let me, let me check. I, I would think now with the rain on us, it may be maybe a tough, a tough go. I'll uh, see what this update was. Last update for, for our map it says 65. What's the five minute day? Of the show? Oh, yeah. Well, look at west of us. Louisville's still 68. Of course, yeah. that 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 thermometer is like a bank thermometer. It runs hot. It runs way hot. Um, let's see. Five minute data out at the airport. Yeah, down to 64. 64. So, so we're probably not going to get that record. But still, I mean, the, the, what he was trying to say is look at all <clears throat> the weather, all the strange extremes that we've had here in just a matter of five days. Crazy. You know, and, and my thing, if we're going to get into the upper 60s. Let's, let's just go ahead and get that record, right? If you're going to get that close at that point. Right now, we continue to monitor severe thunderstorm. By the way, uh, Jim, at the air warning. airport right now, 43 mile an hour wind gust. 43. Yeah, so Lexington winds are gusting between 40 and 50 miles per hour right now. Um, so that's that's what we're dealing with. And, you know, I'm looking at our downtown cam and, you know, we got rain, but the heaviest rain is on top of us. It's on this side. Of it's town. on this yeah. side of town. Yeah. yeah. So we're not seeing the heaviest rain into downtown. Now, and I keep looking at that and I mean, you see the occasional flash of lightning. There you go. But we're not seeing the uh, <laughs> the normal widespread constant lightning, Jim, that you would see 
with a severe thunderstorm. Right. It's yeah. because this is this is more a, a dynamic wind driven severe weather event as opposed to in the summertime or the springtime when you have instability that is crazy and you know you're getting a tremendous amount of lift very quickly. There you see the radar view on a first alert radar network as uh, we are watching two areas of concern as I mentioned the, the severe thunderstorm warning area and the tornado warning area which is south of Lexington uh, mainly across parts of Madison County at this point but it has weakened tremendously since earlier. Uh, I, I don't think this goes the full time till 445 or is it 540? I don't even know what time it is right now. We've been going so long. Four, yeah, we are at uh, 445 would be yeah. the expiration on this. 434 expiration time coming up in 11 minutes. So we got 11 minutes left on that. I, I, I don't think it makes it. Probably not. But you know, at this point, they may just <laughs> they may just let it ride. And that's that's, you know, hey, we're, we're here for you one way or the other, right? Yeah, that's right. We're going to sit right here and watch this for the remainder of the night. But uh, just general heavy rain, gusty winds around Lexington. He just told you a 43 mile per hour wind gust reported just a few minutes ago out at the airport. And we're going to have more of those gusting strong like that 40, 45, 50 miles per hour all embedded within this because there's a ton of wind, wind energy associated with this setup. And it's so easy to get those wind gusts come down like mm -hmm. this. When you have this kind of rain, this heavy rain, it can really yank that wind out of the out of the heavens, so to speak. Oh, without and, question. And bring it yeah. down. Yeah, absolutely. And that, and that's essentially what we have uh, been seeing. And you know, Jim, and now watching uh, watching how these storms are kind of in the the area, how this is playing out is trying to transition into more of a local flash flood event with uh, some wind damage as opposed to just a true true tornado outbreak like we have been seeing. Doesn't mean we can't get some spin ups going forward, but the the radar presentation just looks a whole lot different now. It does. It has weakened a lot. And part of the reason probably is what's going on down the road from here. Now I will say one thing what I noticed uh, earlier on some of the models and now we need to talk about Southern Kentucky just a little bit. So our friends here in Russell Springs, Jamestown, Somerset, London, Corbin, maybe Rockcastle County, Jackson County, down toward Williamsburg, Monticello, Whitley City. These were areas that I was noticing that late tonight, early tomorrow morning, the models tried to increase the storms again, Jim. And with the temperatures that are making a run towards 70 here and watching this stuff coming out of Nashville, look at where the Nashville stuff is aimed toward the northeast. So what we may see over the next little bit is southern Kentucky, this area south of Richmond, down toward London, Corbin, Somerset, and into North Tennessee, becoming the focal point for severe thunderstorms. The models were hinting at that, and now just now that we broadened out this view, I look at this radar as a whole, and I can see kind of how things are coming together with this. So these storms are racing to the northeast. Tornado warnings around Nashville. So we got to be on guard for that. For anybody watching us right now, Clinton, Cumberland counties, Wayne County, over toward that would be the Tompkinsville area, Monroe County, and lifting to the northeast. So and that stuff again, Jim is moving at 60 miles an hour as well. Mm -hmm. oh, so yeah. it, it's going to get out of Nashville into Southern Kentucky very quickly. And the reason I say the northern part of this may be trying to go over toward more of a heavy rain event. Notice how the rain shield is expanding here. Look at all that yellow, the oranges, some pockets of red in there. So that's expanding. So the Lexington Metro back west. The front's still there, so we can't say no, there's no more severe weather, but at least right now this is more heavy rain here, but along and south of this line, that is where we're going to be talking about the, the greatest severe weather threat that because we got a little more instability here. Dew points are up. Temperatures are making a run towards 70 degrees. So Southern Kentucky. Hey, listen, we're, we're not ignoring you guys at all. It's just the fact that the storms have been everywhere else. It, your time is coming now. So we will start to focus more on this particular area as we go through the next three, four or five hours. It may take us all the way to 10, 11 o'clock or so this morning before those storms get through eastern Kentucky. And I notice, um, you know, that line, it, it's the leading edge of that, Jim, is more linear and the lightning is is picking up again across the Richmond area, 
and south and southwest from there. So that's what we are seeing. Northeastern Kentucky, we uh, new severe thunderstorm warning that is out now. So I'm guessing that tornado warning is yeah. going to be allowed to expire. Just came out. Yep. And we've replaced that with a severe thunderstorm warning for Clark County and Madison County. So Clark and Madison, that it's Winchester, Richmond. That's a severe thunderstorm warning that is out for you folks. And then we cross over into the National Weather Service out of Jackson. Surprised they haven't put out a warning uh, into, into uh, Fleming, Bath, Montgomery, Powell and Estill as of yet. Those storms will be there quickly. I do want to stop this so I can go in. I want to just see a couple of things here to see if we have anything cooking with this particular little cell. Um, nothing, nothing overly concerning at the moment, but these storms can spin up something very, very quickly. Here's the storm over Richmond. And again, Jim, that, that warning is that tornado warning is expiring in Madison County. It's going away. It's going away here in a matter of five minutes and, and being replaced with the severe, severe thunderstorm. thunderstorm warning. So we're looking down that line. You know, not you're not seeing anything that is overly concerning at the moment. Um, but again, that's that's what we're here for, just to continue to watch it all right. That's why we're here. It's what we're doing right now, watching all of this uh, activity here, even though they've gone severe. We'll still monitor them for uh, um, for the latest because things can change in a hurry out there, especially the way it's been tonight. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And put everything in motion. Boy, those storms racing across the Nashville, Tennessee area. That's uh, two different tornado warnings down there in Nashville that are overlapping. Overlapping, yeah. And, you know, severe thunderstorm warnings galore along that. Boy, you know, you look at that and you're thinking um, this whole area of south central Kentucky is likely in for some for some wind damage coming. Oh, up, absolutely. For know? sure. And so it's a little surprising. This is here's our tornado. Wow, they've they've, they've at least filled a couple of counties in down in there. Southern Kentucky. Now, yeah. why? <laughs> why did Jackson skip Whitley County and McCreary mm -hmm. County down there? Know. Yeah, that looks really bad. That's a bad look. We need to fill that in, guys. Uh, McCreary County, Whitley County, you guys should be under a tornado watch. I mean, it, it just skips from <laughs> from uh, Laurel County and Pulaski County, and then all of a sudden it, it reconnects into Tennessee. Yeah, weather doesn't work that way, but that's just what happens when you have so many different weather service offices. Something gets lost in the shuffle from time to time, and that looks to be what we are seeing as of right now. And that would be for that line that is coming out. So there you go with all the warnings. That's a lot of severe thunderstorm warning uh, territory in the central Kentucky, and that tornado warning that is in the Madison County. We told you that was weakening. Weather Service is going to let that uh, tornado warning go by the wayside here very, very shortly. So good news on that one. And, you know, chances we're still getting in on severe weather. It's just that the rotation with that is not as strong as what we were seeing a little bit ago. So you, you can still get you know, 60, 70 mile per hour winds with that, which Easily. will still do damage. Easily, you're absolutely right. We've seen 60 mile per hour winds do a lot of damage. You yeah. know, it's all about timing and exactly where, it, what it interacts with. But uh, numerous warnings uh, out there for us in and around Central Kentucky, out to our west, uh, flooding becoming an issue. I know that, that that's what uh, some uh, local emergency management folks are, are worried about now, yeah. especially and, out in, like toward Bowling Green. Seeing and, reports of know, that. And this would be one of those times where that where the Kentucky Mesonet sites would really be coming in handy for us to see some of those live wind gusts. Yes. And unfortunately, they may have taken a hit. They're based out of Bowling Green. May have taken a hit from that tornado. Maybe they're without power. Speaking of without power, Jim, I'm looking at the statewide uh, customers, 60, right at 60,000 people in Kentucky without electricity, 60,000 customers, more people, just customers. Right. So right at 60,000 people, the majority of that is across the western part of Kentucky. Uh, Boyle County, actually we got 1,700 customers that are without power right now. So uh, we've, we've taken a little hit in the power category into Boyle County. So tornado warning, Garrett, Jessamine and Mercer has is expiring here in two minutes. That's the official word. So that will expire coming up here in just a couple minutes and uh, flood advisories are coming out for these same areas as well. Left and right. Yeah, we're, we're starting to see those. And again, the way that's trying to line up, we're going to go through several more hours of, of steady rain, Chris. Yeah, know, we are in those areas that had just got hit with a quick uh, round of heavy rain and severe weather. Well, you know, when we talked about um, when we talked about these storms this week, we, we were drawing attention to 
three things, the damaging wind aspect, the tornado aspect, and then torrential rain. the torrential rain and flash flood potential. Yep. And we highlighted one to three inches of rain. Mother Nature, unfortunately, is, is delivering the goods. And with thunderstorms, Jim, you can get a couple inches of rain in a heartbeat. In a short amount of time, yes. They're notorious for that. So they've got all kinds of moisture loaded up in them, so you can quickly fill creeks mm -hmm. and streams with that stuff. Um, getting some uh, reports, power lines down, Kirksville Road in Madison County. So chances are we're going to get uh, you know some power outages coming out of Madison County now with this storm that is making its way through that particular uh, area and you know got some video of, of winds that are just whipping through Madison County. You could see the leading edge of that that storm and then and then all of a sudden we'll leave that up. I want to sh show you this right here. So two things get my attention on this. See the tornado warning. Goodbye. It's over. So Richmond, Madison County. Garrett County, we can come out of our, our basements now. The tornado warning is officially over. Still going to be windy as all get out. I mean, we may have some wind damage from this, but the tornado warning is no longer valid. So good news there. Let's hope that's the last tornado warning we have to share with you tonight or this morning. Don't think that's the case, though, especially Southern Kentucky. What I was uh, this is what I was getting ready to say. What catches my attention on this new severe thunderstorm warning coming in here, but this Jim the leading edge of this, look at the little bow that is taking mm -hmm. shape here. Oh yeah. So all of a sudden now, that is taking on a bow characteristic and it's a very sharp edge to this. When I see that sharp edge, that's a telltale sign on a radar that the winds are screaming out of this thing. So that is in Madison County. So your new severe thunderstorm warning, this would be an extension of Clark and Madison. So this goes into Estill County, Powell County, Menifee County, uh, Montgomery County, and Bath County. So those are now the counties that are under severe thunderstorm warnings. So that's the first thing grabs my attention, but then also this down here into Lincoln County. That also is trying to bow and likely is producing some damaging winds. So I'm surprised we don't have a severe thunderstorm warning out for that one. So if you're watching us, Houstonville into Stanford, Lincoln County and into Garrett County, that is uh, really starting to bow out just a little bit. And sometimes on the northern edge of a little bow like that is where we can get a little quick spin. So we'll watch that here on the Garrett and Lincoln County line as that continues to make its way to the northeast. But that's a that's a potent thunderstorm. That may be a severe thunderstorm in the northern parts of Lincoln County. And then the rest of the region into Frankfort, it's loud, it's noisy with some thunder and lightning and heavy rain. Georgetown, Lexington, it's loud, it's noisy, um, but it's just that. It's loud and it's noisy as of right now. Right, hearing some rumbles of thunder here at the station now too. Uh, from some of the thunderstorm activity that's now passing us by currently. Mm -hmm. All of this really loaded south and east. That's where the heaviest and most intense stuff uh, is south of Lexington and southeast of Lexington right now or just due east because you still have a, a good thunderstorm passing through uh, parts of Clark County there the northern parts of it going over into uh, Bourbon County as well and then stretches out a little bit deeper along Interstate 64 and down the Mountain Parkway here soon with those strong winds that he was talking about that are featured to Boeing a little bit and what he's talking about that that sharp look to it. It goes from yeah. green to red to yellow to all of that in a short amount of space. Looks like a little knife just kind of slicing through the atmosphere out there. And right there it is just north of uh, Urban. You can see you go from green to yellow to orange to red very quickly. So a sharp gradient showing up there and indicating some uh, very strong winds. Yeah. Look back toward the southwest. Look at that Got a tornado warning going all the way up to the Kentucky Tennessee state line. Yeah, and, and that's the concern there. That would uh, that would move toward Monroe County and Clinton Cumberland counties. Now that's outside of our immediate T, uh, TV coverage area, which goes to Adair County and goes down to Russell and uh, Wayne County. But you know that would likely impact those those areas as well at some point within the next couple of hours. And going with a severe thunderstorm warning on the Kentucky side of that. Mm -hmm. You can see that. Right. And, that, and that may be just to give it a little more evaluation time to see if um, that thing is still spinning by the time it gets to the Kentucky uh, border, which I suspect it will. 
as they have been for a while now. Again, these have been uh, tracked for a while with the tornado warnings there down around Nashville. Yeah. So we'll watch those. So this this uh, new severe thunderstorm warning from Louisville uh, includes Allen, Barron, Edmondson, Grayson, Green, Harden, Hart, LaRue, Marion, Metcalf, Monroe, Taylor, and Warren. Oh, well, there it is right there. Until 515. That's a lot of real estate. It's, just a, it's a big rectangle. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they've drawn on the map there. Mm-hmm. And uh, 60 mile an hour winds with that. 60 miles per hour puts you in severe thunderstorm criteria mode. That's what you need. You need to have at least uh, winds 59, 60 miles per hour. And that puts you in the severe thunderstorm warning mode. And that in uh, quarter sized hail. Those are the two things they look for. They don't look for lightning. So if these things are pushing wind out, they'll call a severe thunderstorm even if they're in the first little flash of lightning mm -hmm. associated with it because they're looking at those two things. Yeah, and uh, we're still watching these storms that are just to the east of Lexington. Those things are rolling now uh, across Madison County, across Clark County, and then they're making their way into Montgomery County where damaging winds are, uh, you know, a pretty good bet with those storms. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty good wind that I'm seeing right now on the radar that is coming into Mount Sterling, uh, the Sharpsburg area, which is over in Bath County, and then uh, eventually... Uh, a little farther to the south toward Camargo, Jeffersonville there into the Mount Sterling area. Farther to the south, those thunderstorms just continue to make their way over the same areas, one right after another. So the leading edge of this, again, likely producing some wind damage. That much we know. You can see the overall bow with this, and just looking at the overall bow, again, just like I talked about with that cell down in Lincoln County, sometimes on the northern part of this, you can get just a little bit of some spin to show up. So we'll watch this part of the storm that is coming out of Clark County and into Montgomery County and Bath County just to see if something does try to rotate a little more. Farther to the south, Richmond, hey, it is noisy. It's windy too. And I, I, I keep looking at this storm and this is the strongest storm that is across central Kentucky as of right now. This is into Lincoln County and moving into Garrett County. So that's a very strong thunderstorm. That's borderline severe. But notice how all of a sudden now these storms have stopped moving to the southeast. They're not progressing much. And you're getting those storms to move over the same areas one right after another. So now, because we need something else to worry about, now we got to be on guard for some flash flooding from those particular cells. And that goes all the way back to the southwest. So generally when this stops progressing toward the southeast. There's a reason. There's a reason coming out of Nashville. Big complex of uh, tornadic thunderstorms that are lifting to the northeast. So those storms are going to impact southern Kentucky here over the next two to three hours. So London, Somerset, Russell Springs, over toward Columbia, into Adair County, and down into Monticello and eventually maybe uh, Corbin Williamsburg, we're going to have to deal with these storms over the next few hours. And yes, cannot rule out a couple of quick tornado spin ups with this stuff coming out of Tennessee and into southern Kentucky. So and I really haven't paid enough attention, Jim, to what's going on around Nashville to see if they've had tornadoes confirmed out of this, because obviously we've just been so busy here in the bluegrass state, but I can't imagine that the, that all those tornado warnings haven't produced something and that's right. why they're keeping those going way downstream like they are around Nashville and obviously you know Nashville was it two years ago or was it t early 2020 right yeah they had that tornado right before the pandemic started right before everything went crazy mm -hmm. right you're right they had that tornado hit Nashville I think that was what February of last year 2020 farther to the north here into uh, bluegrass country lots of heavy rain lots of wind the leading edge of those storms uh, maybe maybe trying to to weaken just a little bit hopefully but i'm uh, you know i'm going to watch that montgomery county uh, storm because there's typically on the northern edge of a little bit of a bowing segment like that you can get just enough spin to be a little worrisome so we're watching that from montgomery county and bath county right now but it's very broad Jim that we're seeing with that.
broad. Broad, the, the, yeah, the, that's yeah, right. The, the key word. And there. what I'll do, I'll take this radar and we will zoom in for you guys. Let me stop the animation so we can get a better look at this just to see. And I want to see what we are dealing with uh, on the northern edge of this. So that's over from Mount Sterling toward Owingsville. And if we are to see a tornado with that or a little spin up, it would be in this area. So that's what we're looking at. And again, that is very broad. And you're thinking, OK, show me show me what we're doing here. So we're looking at the winds inside this thunderstorm. So here's the broad. See how I mean, you've got contrasting colors here. So it's a broad spin for a tornado. The earlier ones, what we had, you want to see more. Well, you don't want to see it, but what you would see would be more of a close knit couplet, if you will. Doesn't mean this can't come together, but that's why we're looking at this one for you here in the Montgomery County and moving into Bath County. But right now, the circulation continues to be rather broad. So we'll see if that thing tightens up just a little bit over the next 15, 20 minutes or so as that line of thunderstorms continues to make its way on through. But I guarantee you one thing, regardless of, uh, of the spin with that, that is producing a lot of wind here into Moco, into Bath County, uh, Carlisle, Nicholas County, and then down into Stanton, Clay City, and across Irvine that extends back toward the Southwest. Storm into, no storms into Garrett County and Northern Lincoln County just continue to to increase a little bit. And I don't know if we're getting any spin with that, but boy, it, it we're likely getting in on some 50 plus mile an hour winds with that. That's a that's a pretty potent little setup. So we're looking in it, no discernible circulation or anything that I'm seeing to to worry about at least right at the moment. But those are some strong reflectivities that are coming out of Garrett County and into uh, Lincoln County as well. Stanford toward sections of Lancaster. So folks who are watching us right now into Richmond, Lexington, Georgetown, Frankfurt. The worst of the weather is now just to our south and southeast. Richmond still really close call on this next storm that is coming at you from the southwest. We got to really watch those creeks and streams down here because those storms can put down a quick one, two or three inches of rain in a short amount of time. It's more of a gentle brand of heavy rain falling on top of Lexington over into Versailles, Nicholasville and across the capital city of Frankfurt, where earlier we had the tornado sirens that were sounding. Cynthiana and Paris, heavy rain into those areas. So again, watching those storms that are off to the east of us and and Jim, you know, we like to do a little dissection of uh, of the storms and not seeing anything that jumps out at the moment like what we saw earlier. Right. And there's nothing that's jumping up and saying, oh, look at this. You know, there's a, a strong indication of this or that. We do have an extension of the morning now, though, with a severe thunderstorm warning going into Bath, Fleming, Menifee, Rowan. And this is just kind of par for the course at this point now, just kind of issuing these warnings out because uh, the storms are so intense that they can produce winds up to 60 miles per hour. Listen to this. Maybe this is a this has to be an error, but it says that this storm is moving northeast at 90 miles per hour. That's got to be wrong, right? Now that's the uh, now that's the one storm up, in one Bath up County. Here. Yes, 90 miles an hour. Moving 90 that's miles per hour. Probably a little fast. A, a, a bit. That's probably a little fast. Yeah. But it's still a, a strong thunderstorm. That's why they extended the warnings out here and you're going to encounter at least 60 mile per hour gusts. Now, I was talking about the forward motion suggesting that. That's, that's incredible to see a number like that. Yeah, so that could I, be an, I think that has to be an error. Yeah, I don't think that thing is moving at 90 miles no, an hour. No, no, it no. Maybe 55 to 60. Like, like most of them like have been. Like most of the storms have been, yeah. You're right, that Lancaster, look at that, just south and east of Lancaster. I mean, it is just really blowing up, but there's no rotation. It's just probably a good, strong, thunderstorm uh, that's out there could be producing some hail too that's what it's trying to pick up on uh, with some of the shading colors uh, the the differences in the shading of uh, going all the way back over to white right indicating maybe some ice up there in within that and reaching the ground too so you've got that possibility as well we look back down the line and you can see what he was talking about earlier all that activity from over in Tennessee trying to cross the border and it will soon and we'll have to watch <coughs> it for further developments as well. Yeah, and you know, hopefully we lose the tornadic uh, signatures that we're seeing down around Nashville, but you know, given 
southern Kentucky right now, and the temperature map is what, 65 to 70? Roughly. Give or take, just a little bit. So that's what we're dealing with. And to kind of catch everybody up on what, what is about to happen here, coming up in just a few minutes, we're expecting to hear from Governor Bashir um, on the devastating and deadly tornadoes that have hit Kentucky tonight. Western Kentucky reports out of Mayfield of a, we knew it was a direct hit. We're getting hearing reports from our CBS affiliate in Louisville of at least 50 fatalities in the city of Mayfield alone. And for the governor of Kentucky to be up at 5 a.m. to uh, to make an address to the state, you know, it's 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 bad. And that's what we're waiting for. We're going to take that live coming up here as soon as that happens. What we'll do, I think we may split screen with the governor and the radar. And if we have to jump in for a tornado warning or some life saving information, we will. But we're going to come back after the governor gets done and then we're going to continue our coverage. So hang tight with us and uh, that should it's supposed to start around five o'clock. But obviously this is a fluid situation. This could start at any at any time. We're probably going to be waiting for just a little bit of these things. You know what? When you're dealing with weather, it doesn't it doesn't work on a time schedule. So here you go with all the severe thunderstorm warnings that are out. Flash flood warnings now uh, coming out, Jim, from Franklin County, Scott County, back toward the southwest. That's a lot of real estate. I mean, to put tonight in perspective for Kentucky as a whole is hard to do. To, this is historic, folks. Okay, so when we look back at severe weather events in Kentucky. March 2nd, 2012 is is one that you just say March 2nd. Most people remember what you're talking about. Now, when we say December 10th, 11th, because this was a it carried over from started on the 10th now into the 11th. You're going to know what we're talking about. The amount of destruction and devastate death in Western Kentucky is heart wrenching because if we have already if we're already hearing of 50 people uh, that have passed away out there and we haven't gotten to daylight yet and and seeing some of the pictures out of Mayfield it's probably going to get a whole lot worse in terms of the injured in terms of um, hopefully not but in terms of the fatalities these things trickle in after a big weather event like this, we've had a lot of people that have been trapped. We had a, a tornado that hit Bowling Green, took a direct hit from a tornado. Uh, our sister station down there, I think may have been taking a hit. The Corvette plant was hit and was on fire in Bowling Green. We've had people trapped in homes in Mayfield alone. When I saw that radar image before that tornado hit, I mean, I that's out of our coverage area. So folks down there, they're not watching us, obviously, because uh, they don't even get our channel. So, but on my Kentucky Weather Twitter feed, man, I'm, I'm trying to hit it hard. Seek shelter now, you gotta get below ground. You're not, you know, you may not survive this. And I, I've said that one other time, and that was March 2nd of 2012. And seeing that devastation down there, a uh, new tornado warning just coming out into Madison County. And Jim, that is with our storm yep. that we were just tracking that we were just talking about out of Garrett County and Lincoln County. So this is now a new tornado warning that includes Richmond and Berea. So this rich, essentially, I guess, from Richmond and point south with that. There's a little bit of spin, eh. but it's there. It's, a, it's small, it's between Richmond and Berea, and that is working its way. So Madison County in about 30 seconds, you're going to hear the sirens going off again. All right, and this is for a different storm. This is not the same storm. It is for this cell that is coming out of Paint Lick and is working between Richmond and Berea. So that is where this tornado warning is currently out for. This does not include downtown Richmond. It is just to the south of Richmond. Looks like that is just to the south of the campus VKU, south of the bypass here. And then um, from south of Richmond, south of campus, toward Berea. So Berea, this go around, we are in this, but looking at this radar, this is likely to pass just north, and that is a warning that'll go until 530. This includes a small part of Garrett County as well. 
So this tornado warning is now out for Madison County and it is the southern half of Madison County and is it's with this storm that we were drawing attention to Jim just a few minutes ago saying boy this thing is looking good on radar and there it is. It's even stronger now and it's working out of paint lick. So paint lick we should be in our storm shelters. We need to be in those storm shelters south of Richmond. Richmond were not included in this tornado warning this time. You're going to hear the sirens, but Richmond is not included in this tornado warning. Berea, we are. Madison Southern High School. We're included in this particular warning. All right. Last go around, it was Richmond up Madison Central and uh, in that part of the county. Well, this time it is the southern half of the county. So uh, Berea College, storm sirens are going to be going off here shortly around. And then here's the worst of this storm that is coming across the Silver Creek area and then toward Whites. This is where we have the spin that is coming out of Paint Lick and into Silver Creek and across the 595 area. Here is Interstate 75. Here's Wallace Town. This is Berea. So again, this is south of downtown Richmond. Downtown Richmond is not included in this, but the southern half of Madison County, this go around is. This is a little farther to the south than the track of our last storm. So it's not the same storm that is produced that is not produced. What we're going to do now, we're going to we're going to stay with this on radar and we're going to hear from the governor momentarily and then we're going to get right back to you. So we're going to keep this going here and we're going to listen in uh, to Governor Bashir when he talks about the devastation in Kentucky. Miles in our state, something we have never seen before. We have deaths in multiple, possibly many counties. The hardest hit county appears to be Graves, where the city of Mayfield has been devastated. A roof collapse at a candle factory has resulted in mass casualties. As of 4.45 a.m., 56,854 Kentuckians are without power. I've been personally over at the Emergency Operations Center since about 1 a.m., overseeing our response and hearing and absorbing the difficult news in real time. I've been in personal contact with local leaders such as the mayor of Mayfield, county judges in Graves and Marshall counties, and talking to local emergency management in most of the hardest hit areas. Before midnight, I declared a state of emergency. I've activated the National Guard, uh, and we are deploying 181 guardsmen, including search and extraction and debris clearance uh, folks. They'll be arriving in communities this morning. The Transportation Cabinet has mobilized its heavy equipment to help clear debris. They'll be assisted by the Guard and the Division of Forestry. State police have been working all night to save lives and an IMT team of EMS, fire, and other professionals are on the way. I've also requested an immediate federal emergency declaration, and we've got two tractor trailers filled with water headed towards Western Kentucky. I wanna thank every local EMS employee, police officer, firefighter, and first responder. This has been one of the toughest nights in Kentucky history, and some areas have been hit in ways that are hard to, to put into words. Uh, to all of our Kentucky families that are impacted by this, uh, we want you to know that we are here for you. Uh, we love you. Uh, we are praying for you. Uh, counties with likely damage and debris as of four o'clock include Fulton, Hickman, Graves, Marshall, Lyon, Caldwell, Hopkins, Muhlenberg, Ohio, Breckenridge, Bullitt, Spencer, Shelby, Christian, Logan, Warren, Edmondson, Taylor, and Marion. And as we're sitting here today, and this is before daybreak, we believe our death toll from this event uh, will exceed 50 Kentuckians, probably end up closer to 70 to 100 lost lives. Remember, each of these are children of God, irreplaceable to their families and to their communities. But we will make it through this. We will rebuild. 
Uh, we are strong, resilient people. And we're going to be there uh, every step of the way. I'm going to be in Western Kentucky a little later today, as soon as it is safe uh, to travel, to make sure people know that they are not alone, and that this is one state standing strong with those that have been impacted. I'm going to turn it over to Michael Dossett uh, from Emergency Management, and then we'll hear from our Adjutant General as well. At the moment, it looks like we're going to have to take questions via uh, email. Uh, those instructions have gone out because of a technical difficulty. Director Dossett. Thank you, Governor. Um, and I can only echo the governor's comments. This tornado event may surpass the 1974 super outbreak as one of the most deadly in Kentucky's history. Our hearts go out to all of the families that are in peril and all of our Kentuckians who have lost their lives. I will tell you from speaking with uh, emergency management directors and judge executives that rescues and uh, search efforts are ongoing. Uh, even before the wind stopped blowing, uh, as thunderstorms are going through, we have teams out there, local teams. So uh, thank you for your efforts uh, in all the, the impacted counties. Um, the track for this tornado event is over 200 miles just in Kentucky, and it may eclipse the 1925 record uh, tri-state track for the longest tornado. It appears that this is going to be a quad state event, all out of the same system, uh, originating in Arkansas, through Missouri, Tennessee, and into Kentucky. It is a significant, massive disaster event. So as the governor indicated, all state resources are being brought to bear. We opened the EOC at 8 p.m. Eastern time and began receiving reports very quickly. Um, some of the most serious hit are actually out of communications in some parts. We've had a lot of people step up uh, to the plate. One in particular, Louisville Metro Emergency Management Services are currently on the highway en route to Mayfield, and they will be there uh, by daybreak. They're going to assist us with uh, an IMT, an incident management team, who will be our forward observation point. And as the governor indicated, he has requested from the president an emergency declaration, and that would include power assessment teams, that will go out into the field in all the damaged counties, and also what is called an, an IMAC, that's an incident management uh, control team. We'll use those in the state EOC for this protracted event. We'll be able to track uh, issues, damages, and resource requests from all counties uh, simultaneously. Again, we ask for your cooperation uh, and your prayers for everyone that's impacted. Uh, we're doing damage assessments. Uh, as they occur, reported through uh, our EM directors, uh, it'll be daybreak before we even uh, realize the full magnitude of this event. Thank you, Governor. Good morning, everybody. I wanted to give you a, a, a situational awareness of the status of your Kentucky National Guard. As uh, the governor indicated a short while ago, we've already mobilized a number of our guardsmen. This mobilization began shortly after midnight. So soldiers have been assembling for a few hours at, at this junction. While, while the governor specified, we have uh, 181 soldiers and airmen who are already mobilizing in response to this incident. It does not stop with that number of service members. As everybody's tracking at this junction, this is an evolving situation. We still have the, the storm front passing through the, the state. And so as the situation continues to develop, we will call upon further members of the National Guard, your National Guard, to respond as necessary. In the, the near term, Graves County is our immediate focus, as the, the governor indicated, because of the severity 
of the, the tornadoes that pass through there, but we are literally watching the entire state at this junction. And so as your neighbors and friends who are in the guard, you may see some of them in uniform this morning. You may see some of our, our folks in the, the National Guard literally deploying down to the road in response to some of these affected areas. Know that this is what their, their focus is and they are here to serve you and the rest of our members in the Commonwealth. Thanks, sir. You know, as we mentioned, um, a number of counties hit hard and we will have casualties in multiple counties. Um, place that my dad is from, Dawson Springs, hit uh, really hard too. Um, and I know that there is loss there um, as well. And, and we will be there to, to help. Uh, we've been able to get um, a couple of the, the slides that show a little bit of what we have seen uh, booted up. Uh, this is from Joe Sullivan, who is the meteorologist for uh, emergency management. I'm going to try to walk through them. So this is the front itself uh, that we saw. You've been listening to uh, Governor Bashir talking about the devastation, the deadly tornado outbreak across Kentucky tonight. And unfortunately, at least 50 people have died so far with this tornado outbreak into western Kentucky. And new tornado warnings are coming out here into central Kentucky. We've got the tornado warning that goes until 530 for Madison County. That is about to expire coming up here shortly at southern Madison County. The storm is moving along so quickly that now we have a new tornado warning that is out for Estill County, Lee County, Montgomery County, and Powell County. So this goes all the way to the Mountain Parkway here from Clay City down to Stanton. It is with this storm that is making its way to the northeast very, very quickly. This thing is moving at roughly 55 or 60 miles an hour. No report of a tornado with this. It does have a hint of some rotation that has been showing up here between Richmond and Berea. And this is going to head. It's right on top of the Waco area. And this is eventually going to work its way across out of Madison County and into Estill County. But again, we're looking at it and it does not have the pronounced radar signature compared to what we have seen with those deadly tornadoes into Western Kentucky or even uh, the storms that were moving into Central Kentucky a couple of hours ago. Doesn't mean it can't produce a weak tornado. OK, just because we're we're saying this isn't a strong tornado signature. Well, guess what? The stamping ground a tornado was not a strong signature, but it produced a tornado into uh, stamping ground. And then you had one prior to that into Franklin County. So we're asking our radar now to tell us what it thinks is going on with this particular cell and what we're doing. See this icon that is saying that radar says, OK, I see this storm is strong, but it's mainly a big hail producer and it is moving to the northeast it would be toward Ravenna and toward uh, Irvin in Estill County here coming up very, very shortly. So let's let's bounce this out just a little bit. You see the hell on that again, severe hell right in the path of this is a little more than 3200 people, right? 3300 people actually to the northeast of us. So that's tornado warning here in the southern parts of Madison County, Berea. This storm has bypassed us just to the north. So this essentially split Richmond and Berea and it is moving into Estill County. So folks here into Estill County, we need to go ahead and find our basement. We need to find our safe shelter and we need to be doing that here into uh, sections of Powell County as well towards Cl as Clay City towards Stanton. Get in that safe shelter. This storm is zipping its way to the northeast very, very quickly and that'll be on top of very close to the Red River Gorge coming up here in just a matter of a half hour or so. So if you know some folks who maybe have maybe rented a cabin somewhere in the gorge, maybe out of range of hearing about this thing, give them a call, let them know. This is what we're talking about with our storm that is possibly producing the tornado west of Irvin between essentially Berea and Irvin. Richmond, we're not included in this. Berea, we are, but the storm is now bypassing you. So if you're watching us in Berea, this potential tornado, tornado, tornadic storm, is now just to the northeast of you, and that is working its way out of Estill County or into Estill County out of Madison County. So let's broaden this out a little bit, Jim, see what else we can find across Southern Kentucky, because I want to keep the folks down here safe as well, because those storms that are coming out of uh, the Nashville area 
maybe losing just a little bit of steam. Still a tornado warning, still a severe thunderstorm warning. Then you got severe thunderstorm warnings up and down I-65 and points to the east and that tornado warning that is out with that one lone cell. New severe thunderstorm warnings as well coming out for this particular cell, uh, this particular line of storms that is two hours southwest. So Campbell, Campbellsville into Taylor County. Here you go with the counties Adair, Casey, Cumberland, Green, Russell and Taylor. That goes until 5 a.m. Central Time at 6 o'clock Eastern Time, which is where the majority of our uh, market is or our viewing audience is. And then the tornado warnings. We don't want to let our guard down here into eastern Madison County along the Estill County line. If you live along 52, Waco over into Estill County, Ravenna, we need to be in our storm shelters or in a basement if we have one. Here's the storm that is of interest as it crosses out of Madison County and it, it you see the radar. It jumps. That's how quickly this thing is moving. A sweep goes by and this thing is a few miles down the road when it's moving at 60 miles an hour. Folks, it's not going to let any grass grow under it. It is out of there. Still strong thunderstorms on top of Richmond down toward the paint lick area. And if we can go in, Jim, and just look and see if we can find any rotation within this storm because now it's moved out of Estill County or out of Madison County and into Estill County. But I'm looking at this and this signature is not very strong. So we do have that going for us, but this is more of a precautionary measure as of right now as to why we have that tornado warning here into Estill County. But if you're in Estill County, if you're into Powell County, you need to be in your basement. If you don't have a basement, get to the lowest floor possible. We're going to drill this in over and over and over on these safety tips because you know what? At some point, those safety tips may save your life and that's what we're here for to keep you safe above all else. Seek that safe shelter. Safest place is a basement. If you don't have the basement, we are going to get to the interior room on the lowest floor and we're going to put as many walls between where you are and the outside and the possible tornado as uh, as many walls as you can get and we're going to get low and we're going to cover our heads and we're going to protect our heads. So we're going to break out the hard hat again. And I know we don't most of us don't readily have a hard hat available just laying around, but it doesn't have to be just a hard hat. It can be a football helmet. It can be a baseball batting helmet. It can be a uh, bicycle helmet. Bicycle helmet, probably the most common of all the ones we just mentioned that may be laying around somewhere in the house. Kids especially should have a bicycle helmet somewhere nearby. Kids, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put on our bicycle helmets. We're going to follow the safety rules. Remember that we went through during school all the, the tornado safety drills. Remember those where we would seek shelter. We'd cover our heads. Listen, that's all we're going to do right now. And we're going to take a deep breath and we're going to follow what our parents, guardians, whoever we're with is instructing us to do and what you're listening to us do right now. And we're going to get through this. Okay, so just follow the safety rules. Protect your head. Get low and cover your head, cover the noggin up. And then we're gonna get through this as we go through uh, the next little bit with that tornado warning that is out for a number of counties. And if you're seeking shelter right now, you can stream us Facebook Live on our app, on our WKYT.com. If you don't have that, you know what you can do? Crank up your television. We're kind of loud anyway, but crank it up even louder and then go get in your shelter and, and we'll give you the audible cue on when you can come out. Just listen to what we're saying and kids, I promise you, we're going to get through this. Okay, so there's your tornado warning. Severe thunderstorm warning is now out for that is uh, part of Bath County that is into Fleming County that is into Rowan County. And then we got a whole bunch of counties that are under severe thunderstorm warnings. But the only tornado warning that we have right now, the Madison County tornado warning, uh, was canceled just a little early. So that's good news. That storm was out of Madison County. So the worst of this is now getting into Estill County in northern Estill County. It's not even hitting Irvin. Most of this uh, Jim looks like it is north of Irvin yep. and it's heading towards Stanton well, on the Mountain Parkway at about 60 miles per hour. Uh, th th that's yeah. the way this thing is traveling right now and will fast mover. Very All these fast. storms have been just tremendous movers all day long. It's been like that and you're tracking that one from Estill going into Powell County right now. So if you're in Stanton, the worst part of this isn't there yet. I know it got loud and then the rain got heavy all of a sudden, but the worst part of it is still just out to your west. 
So now's the time to get into that safe location that uh, Chris was talking about, basement, first floor, wherever you can go to get safe and to be the, the safest as possible if you're here listening to us uh, in the Stanton area because, again, it's headed right toward you as far as the most severe part of the severe thunderstorm that could be producing a tornado is concerned out there. So again, crossing over from Estill going into Powell County right now with that tornado warning. I'm going to go into now mode. Now they've issued another tornado warning, Christopher, All right, so from behind. From All right, so now we've got this new tornado warning that is behind this with this second storm coming out of Lincoln County. Yep. So guess what, Madison County, this is our third tornado warning. So we are back in this. So that is your new tornado warning that is out for, uh, gets into Clark County. It gets into Garrett, Lincoln, and Madison. So it is with this that it goes just into far southern parts of Clark County. Richmond, we're back in the tornado warning. And it is for this storm that is coming out of Stanford in Lincoln County, and it is working to the northeast. That, that looks pretty far north for that tornado warning. But that's, that's what we're dealing with as of right now. And this uh, goes until 6 this morning, so you got about a 35-minute uh, tornado warning that is out. This includes Richmond and Berea. So R Madison County, we're under our third tornado warning. I know, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's both scary and you're like, no, no, here we go again. Yeah, here we go again. This is what happens when you have these storms that are kind of lined up and training just a little bit from southwest to northeast. So the tornado warning that just went through Madison County is now into Estill County and Powell County. We've got this next storm that is out of Stanford and Lincoln County. It's going to work toward Paint Lick, going to work toward Richmond, and then eventually maybe getting into far southern parts of Clark County. This should be into the Silver Creek area. We've called your name a lot. Into Richmond, coming up between 537 to 542. Paint Lick, and then uh, eventually a little deeper on in through Madison County and potentially back into sections of Estill County and Clark County. So several counties now are under tornado warnings again for several more hours. We're not going to diminish any tornado warning. And again, folks, you know, given how tonight has played out in terms of the devastation in western Kentucky, we don't want to take anything for granted with any of these storms because the atmosphere all week has been signaling that it was going to try to spin. So here is our storm that is heading towards Stanton. This may have some pretty good rotation with it as it crosses over the Mountain Parkway very quick. I mean, 15 minutes ago, this was in Madison County. Yep, absolutely. Right. 15 minutes ago, this was north of Berea. This is now into Stanton, into Powell County. So, yeah, 60 mile an hour. That thing is trucking along. So that's going to continue to work its way across Stanton, Clay City area. This is right on top of the Mountain Parkway here. So for folks who've been traveling up and down the Mountain Parkway, Stanton is usually a stop there for a lot of folks coming out of the mountains to uh, the Lexington area and vice versa. So additional counties are under those tornado warnings. That it gets into far northern parts of what looks like Lee County, I guess. Not going to get that far south. This thing is heading more towards Stanton. So what I'm noticing uh, on that particular cell, Jim, is that it, it's, it's hugging the northern part of that warning yes. area. Absolutely it is. And, and that may be a reflection of that complex of storms coming out of Nashville, kind of making, forcing everything to slow down again to the north of that. And there's your potential tornado that is on top of Lancaster. So again, we went through those safety tips just now, and those are, they're still valid. They're valid anytime you have severe weather and a tornado warning. If you're maybe tired of hearing me say them, okay, be tired, because we're gonna keep saying them over and over and over, because our job, is to make sure everybody is safe and that's what we're going to stay here we've been on the air for hours we'll stay on the hour or the air for however many hours it takes here comes that uh, tornadic thunderstorm out of lancaster it will eventually move toward richmond so richmond tornado sirens are probably going off again and no it's not an old siren for a prior tornado warning this is a brand new tornado warning gary county tornado sirens are probably going off again Berea, probably going off again. You may even be hearing those into Clark County, but it is for the far southern tip of Clark County as of now. And you look at these storms, and, and Jim, these are going to produce some flooding as well because they're just lined up and they're not moving now to the south. 
Those are just lined up going southwest to northeast. Potent thunderstorm here into uh, Moorhead. That has a severe thunderstorm with it. I see a new tornado warning now that is out uh, for, it looks like Monroe County, and is that Clinton County, I believe? That is coming yeah. out of uh, the Nashville area. That's with that same complex of storms heading toward Burksville and lifting its way to the northeast. So Russell Springs uh, down toward Monticello. We're watching this for you because that's coming northwest north east to or southwest to northeast on top of you. Heavy rain across the Lexington Metro. Listen, Lexington, Frankfort, Georgetown. Just a lot of heavy rain right now, but the front is still to the west of us. Can't completely say we're done with severe weather in Lexington. That's again until that front cleans up the sky later this morning. We're in the thick of it still, or at least the potential. But this is the concerning part where you have a couple of kinks that are showing up within this line of thunderstorms. What do we mean by kinks? We can stop this and we can inspect this line to look inside of it. We're looking for winds that are going in opposite direction. So it's like, how do you spin a top on a table? You, you do that, right? Or you just give it a spin. Same, same thing that we're looking at in the atmosphere, but this time with winds. Um, it's, very, it's disjointed, but again, when you're talking about a line like this, just those little bit of a kink from time to time that can produce a quick tornado spin up, like what happened a few nights ago in Stamping Ground. It was along a little bit of a line that had a little kink, and this is why we've, they, they put out this warning. I see what may be a couple of competing little spins here, Jim, into uh, Garrett County and Northern Lincoln County. So when you see those little competing spins, at least that's keeping it from becoming one major potential tornado like what we have seen earlier into western Kentucky. But the leading edge of this, southerly winds are just being pulled into this thing. I mean, a tremendous southerly flow that has you thinking, this cannot be December. It is a March setup. I have said it all week on air. I have said this looks like March, a March severe weather or tornado outbreak. And unfortunately, it's behaved that way. New severe thunderstorm warning, Estill, Menifee, Montgomery, Replaces the tornado Morgan, warning. Powell, and Wolf. Yep. So the tornado warning that was out with this storm is being replaced by this severe thunderstorm warning, which right now seems more prudent because we're not seeing a whole lot of rotation with those storms that are on, uh, that have prompted those tornado warnings. But I get it, we're better, better safe than sorry at this point. These storms have had a history of producing Spins, tornadoes, devastation. As, as Governor uh, Bashir was on just a little bit ago, talking about 50, at least 50 fatalities tonight, folks, from these tornadoes in western Kentucky. And it, to be honest with you, and looking at the damage, I mean, that, that may double tonight or uh, after daybreak. I mean, I, it's, it's heartbreaking when you see the devastation. It was heartbreaking looking at the radar before that storm got to Mayfield, before that storm moved into Bowling Green. You just get this sinking feeling because you know when you're looking at a radar and there ain't a thing you can do about it. I mean, you can, you can fire off tweets, fire off tweets, seek shelter now, now, now. You can't reach everybody, unfortunately. And that's outside of our TV area. And I know the folks down there in Bowling Green and in Western Kentucky, the TV folks, the National Weather Service folks, EM uh, emergency managers, everybody had been doing their best to try to save lives tonight. And so, unfortunately, we, we lost a lot, of, a lot of folks into Western Kentucky on the uh, night. Now we, just gotta, now we just gotta watch the rest of these storms tonight to say, okay, let's try not to lose anybody else. And we will see what, what these storms do, but we want you guys to, to pay attention. I don't, listen, if you wanna watch somebody else, have at it as long as it as long as they're going to give you the information you need to to stay alive and to survive the storms that are out there okay have at it because that's all we care about um, so we're looking at this tornado warning and again Jim this is pretty disjointed it is that's why I'm just out looking of at that Garrett County wow. and I can imagine looking in that it's it, on radar the 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 signature just in the reflectivity here is not impressive and it's linear and you're looking in that, can you find the circulation there? I can't find it. There, there could be little, just right. competing small little things, but anytime you've got a bunch of small little competing circulations, chances are you're not gonna see a whole lot. Fingers crossed that that doesn't tighten up, but as of now, that is not the case. But you still need to be in that shelter. 
Garrett County into Madison County, especially. So I think we're okay now into Lincoln County, but into Garrett County and across Madison County from Richmond down to Berea. And that uh, that gem looks like it it actually may hug that northern extent as well. So that part of the that part of the warning that I earlier I thought, well, maybe not now that that may hug the more northern part. Uh, and that's the way it's looking. You're right. Absolutely. Because everything is checked up. It's not it's no longer moving farther to the south. And speaking of the south, we're going to continue to monitor what's happening from our southern skies as it could start yeah. spilling over with more tornado warnings in our area from the storms that were in Nashville. Oh, about an hour ago, I guess they were probably in Nashville, maybe less than that. That's how fast these have been moving. And that last tornado warning that we had issued for our area was traveling at about 70 miles per hour. Most of these have been going anywhere from 55 to 65 and now 70 miles per hour throughout the day today. That's what kind of a day it has been out there uh, with some of the storms that have developed. And so Madison County right now uh, getting into uh, Garrett County, going over toward uh, the folks there in uh, Estill County, all lining up with not only the severe weather threat, but also that very heavy rain. So flooding, flash flooding also becoming a concern. Folks are going to be traveling out there before the sun comes up and the sun we still have plenty of time before that happens, and I'm afraid that's going to reveal a lot more, as it always does on these severe weather nights, Chris. Yeah, that, it, that next sunrise is always difficult. You know, and and the the concerning part, Jim, is as you mentioned, that, you know, it's always after the sun comes up that mm -hmm. you you learn the true magnitude of something, and if we're already knowing the magnitude in parts of Western Kentucky, it's you know, it, it, it's going to be a whole lot worse after the sun comes up. Just what we've seen here with the, with the nighttime shots and the, the nighttime information. It, 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 it's going to be awful tomorrow, I'm afraid. Yeah, it is. Um, and so what we're left to do right now is, again, try to keep as many people safe as we can. And that is that's what we're here for. And this tornado warning is still out. The worst of this storm is now out of Lancaster, Lincoln County. We're OK. This storm into Garrett County, it's right on top of the Paint Lick area, essentially, which is very close to Madison County. And this is going to roll its way toward Richmond on the south side of uh, town, especially on the southern end of the bypass here and very close to the campus of EKU. So if we are getting a weak tornado spin with this, it would be right about the Paint Lick area, but I and along 52 heading to the northeast. I can't imagine that there is a major spin with this, but Jim, all it takes is that little bit of a quick spin up. What happened in uh, Franklin County and Scott County Sunday night into Monday morning? It was a weak, weak spin. Right. And, it, you know, it hurt a lot of people. It hurt some people. And it, it did. Devastated, uh, rolled several mobile homes. You know, I was on the air that morning with, with them there. That's right. And the characteristics were just not off the chart strong. No, you know? no, not at all. And it still produced some weak tornadoes. Right. And, and, you know, and, and I can imagine in a setup like this, too, those those came without warnings on Sunday night. So weather service, kudos. You know, you guys are are ahead of the game tonight and uh, we're getting everything out in ample time for folks and making sure that we don't even miss some of the smaller ones this go around. So kudos on that one. And that's that's what we like to see. So that uh, severe thunderstorm warning now extends farther to the northeast. So that was was originally a tornado warning that has now been replaced by a severe thunderstorm warning. And if you just look now, the lightning is decreasing a little bit. It's good news because when you see the lightning decrease, it means the storm intensity is likely coming down a little bit. But how many times have we said that tonight? We've said it a few times. So these storms cycle. They pulse and they go strong or severe, they weaken. They go strong or severe and they weaken. So we're again watching this. I've had no reports of tornadoes with this. And this again is heading uh, at least the worst of this, Jim, to the s just to the south of downtown Richmond. I'll go a little closer so we can see it. Too. Yeah, let's go in and let's we'll get there put right it in perspective it. with the um, with the city and Richmond Center. Folks live over near Lake Reaver right now. Boy, the sirens. And I can imagine they're blaring, what, third time in the past two hours. So here's Richmond Center. Here's Lake Reba. Here's Richmond. Here's the bypass. And most of this is just to the south of us. So it's right on top of Interstate 75. Worst again, bypassing downtown Richmond to our south. And again, that's going to head over toward Estill County coming up here very shortly. So folks in Madison County, how long have we been in our in our basements? 
maybe we came out for two minutes from time to time, and now we're back in it. You're back in your, your storm shelter. And again, kids, told you guys we're going to get through this, okay? Put on those helmets. I, I, I want to see you guys wearing those helmets. I want to see you wearing those hard hats, whatever. I want to see you with a pill over your head right now. And we're going to get in there, crank, it, crank us up if you're streaming us. We'll talk to you. We'll talk you through this. This is right on top of uh, Silver Creek. That's right on 52, and that is rolling its way. This is the Paint Lick area, Garrett County. So now this storm is out of Garrett County. And, Jim, this is uh, firmly into Madison County. But it's losing the cloud to ground lightning. And I heard some, you know, there you go, the back edge is now chopped off on that uh, tornado warning that goes a little farther to the northeast. Goes to the Estill County line, essentially, is where this warning goes. And then you got a severe thunderstorm warning ahead of that for a prior storm that was out there. So, and that has been uh, pushed to the northeast. So, again, Madison County with that tornado warning, and you see it flashing because we just got an update on it. The back edge was was taken away. Downtown Richmond, the worst of this is to the south of us. That's ready to cross over Interstate 75 here right now. Jim, if we could pull up um, the velocities, we'll look inside this. Velocities, folks, we say that's fancy term for us saying, let's look at the winds inside of this storm and see what we got. Now, we got a little hot spot here of some stronger winds that are right on top of 75. So even though this may not be producing a tornado, Chances are it's producing some winds that are gusting 50 miles an hour or greater to the south of Richmond. Here's the little, see the bright spot there? That is the, the radar saying, hey, this has got some big time winds now east of 75. And, and you don't see a whole lot coming in for true rotation or spin with that as of right now. But again, we're staying in our uh, basements or storm shelters until this warning is either canceled or is allowed to expire, which may still be just a little bit. That goes until what, six o'clock? So we got 20 more minutes enough, technically yeah. of that. Plenty of time left on it, yeah. Plenty of time left on it. Then, you know, after that one, then you have to start watching these <coughs> others. Well, you know, how are they going to interact with some of our southern Kentucky counties with the ones that have been rolling in <coughs> out of Tennessee? I mean, we already have a tornado warning just over the border from yeah. Wayne County. I mean, yeah. it's right there, you know? Yeah. So. Let's Let's zoom in. Let's see, Jim. Zoom in about right in here. Right in there. Adair County. Um, it's kind of on the northern edge of a, a little bit of a bow there. And I was looking at our, our radar off camera. And we'll look in and see if we can find uh, some spin here. Because there was a little, what, maybe just a little bit of spin I was noticing. Oh. There you go. Yeah, there's some Right there. there. Uh, and again, heading toward Campbellsville, Taylor County again. So right here, it's broad. It's broad. But there is just a little spin that may get into northern Adair County, southern parts of Taylor County. So this is, I believe, Greene County, I think, that it's coming out of. And that is working its way across southern parts of Taylor County here very, very shortly. In Taylor County, uh, we got a weather watcher down there, and he was reporting a lot of damage in Taylor County. Taylor County, that storm that moved into uh, Taylor County, had some very strong rotation with it, was producing a likely tornado. So Taylor County may be one of those underreported counties right now in terms of the damage and the extent of the damage. And then that weakened the farther it got into uh, Casey County or into Marion County and then into uh, the Boyle County area. But we do have a severe thunderstorm warning that is out for that. Hey, Adair County, Southern uh, Taylor County, we'll watch that for you guys as it continues to work its way to the northeast. Still got that tornado warning around Burksville. Uh, that's a storm that is now heading toward the northeast. Russell County, Lake Cumberland, Russell Springs, Jamestown. We're watching the storm. It is heading in your general direction. We're still okay into Monticello, Somerset, London, Corbin, Williamsburg. I say we're still okay for now. Look at this monster of a uh, storm that is coming out of northern Tennessee. Tornado warning is out for that. Gets right up to the Kentucky and Tennessee border. And that will eventually cross the border into Wayne County, into Clinton, Cumberland counties, and maybe toward Whitley City. That's McCreary County. Then you got Whitley County. That is Williamsburg. So watching a lot of action, Jim, that goes across the entire uh, region now from north to south. And that's, uh, again, exactly how our future radar said this thing was going to play out. And there's your tornado warning that continues in effect for Madison County 
and into extreme southern and southeastern parts of Clark County. So the strongest part of that storm is now passing its way through and just to the south of downtown Richmond. Boy, it, it, it's close here. It's it it's getting close. into the southern part of the bypass here, and I, that's right on top of the campus, I believe, of uh, EKU. And that continues to make its way on through. There's Madison uh, Central High School. Here's EKU. So yeah, worst of this storm is just to the south of downtown Richmond. That is working its way toward Lake Reba. And then uh, eventually, We'll head into Estill County coming up here very shortly. So our tornado sirens are going off again. Worst of this is right on top of Richmond and points just to the south. Punk and Run Road, that's a new one. Uh, and this is over toward uh, Gibson Bay down here, right? So very close to that is where we're dealing with the worst of this storm. And for that, what that white is, the radar is saying, I think this can be producing some hail. And generally, that's when we would be where we would be looking at for a little bit of spin as well. But you can see some of the areas that are included in this. And th this is the bypass, the southern part of the uh, bypass here into Richmond. So again, very close to the campus of EKU and zipping its way on through downtown Richmond is dealing with this. And again, our sirens are blaring here. And that's going to continue to work its way across the city of Richmond, moving at 55 to 60 miles an hour. So at that, at that speed, Richmond, in about two minutes, that thing is, the worst of it is to your east. It's heading toward uh, Lake Reba and then zipping more toward the Estill County line. And that is uh, rolling its way toward uh, the 52 area and will eventually cross into sections of Estill County. So that tornado warning now looks like has been ex or that goes into parts of Winchester and then uh, nope, it has been extended has tornado been extended, warning yeah. into Estill County and into Powell County. So essentially we're seeing the same script play out. That's what we just had tornado warning from Madison County. Then it's extended into Estill County and into Powell County. So same exact thing. same thing. Same thing. That's what just happened. So we've had back to back storms that are that are moving over the same areas of the region, Madison County, Estill County, and in now to Powell County with that tornado warning that is out. And that is until 615 for Estill and Powell. So that's got a 30 minute lifespan with that particular warning. And again, it is for this cell that is making its way just south of Richmond, south of uh, the 52 area, and that's going to roll into northern parts of Estill County. We'll clip southern Clark County and then into Stanton and Clay City. So it was the same areas where we just had tornado warnings. Sirens may have taken a little break, and now they're going to flare right back up on us. So we got to be on guard, and we may have to, we're going to be hitting our storm shelters again. We're going to be hitting those basements. And if we're in a mobile home in these areas, we want to get out of there. Mobile homes are no match for uh, straight line winds, let alone a tornado and doesn't have to be a powerful tornado by any stretch of the imagination. That can be only producing, you know, 60, 70 mile an hour winds, Jim, and mobile home um, is no match for winds of 70 miles an hour or better. It can be lifted, turned, tossed around, and that, that's one thing that we saw with the, the tornadoes earlier on this week. Uh, the, the devastation that they had in, in the, the the trailer park there with uh, the one mobile home on top of another. I mean, so uh, it does happen and it can happen with uh, that. Those came in 90 plus miles per hour and just tossed them around. No problem. You get the right wind at 60 miles per hour, hit it at the right way and it can do the same thing. That, that That's the thing what we run into with uh, straight line winds and uh, tornadic winds. The big difference is straight line is what you would imagine it would be. It's straight, coming straight at you, <clears throat> and just like the wind that blows every day. But a tornado is that violently, uh, that violently circulating column of air that will, can lead to devastation and uh, was very well the cause of what we had out there tonight across parts of parts of uh, western sections of Kentucky. So we are continuing to monitor that and monitor what's happening in our immediate area too. You can see what we have on the first alert radar network. We're in uh, Estill County with the warning. The storm isn't even there yet, but uh, they're jumping out and get ahead of it. It'll be there soon enough. So from Estill into Powell County, another tornado warning. You had a severe thunderstorm warning that was kind of taking the, the place 
than of all of it, but now you have the upgrade to a tornado warning. So that's what we're tracking now out of uh, Madison County going into Estill and Powell counties. Severe thunderstorm warning that goes all the way out into Morgan County. So right along that line, another issue I'm concerned about, flooding, flash flooding all along this area. So be prepared for that as well. So you've got the severe weather element to think about. You've got that to think about. This is our pattern this morning, one right after the other with repeat showers and thunderstorms that are passing over parts of central and uh, eastern portions of Kentucky with severe weather elements too. Now I'm going to go back down south because I'm going to watch this because at any time we're going to pop some warnings. Let me grab my, my, my pen. We're going we're gonna to spark some warnings right around here soon, I believe because of what's coming in from Tennessee and what's already in Kentucky at, at the moment. We'll likely see some warnings come in for folks like uh, out in Wayne County, into uh, Adair County, again, Russell County, and you get to Pulaski County. This will be another area. To, uh, uh, what type of warning, we'll just have to wait and see, but the, that will be coming very soon to that area. So we have to keep on every aspect of Kentucky, every part of the Commonwealth, we have to keep watching closely to see exactly what's happening. There you see the tornado warning that we've been tracking through uh, Madison County going over into Estill and Powell counties right now. Th this particular cell, so far we haven't confirmed any reports of a tornado touching down with this particular cell because this is one of the late bloomers, but uh, we're still monitoring for that development and it's strong enough to where yeah. it can certainly be that way. You know, just an isolated spin up. Yeah, I got a, tr uh, a little bit of um, wind damage there in the Red House area of Madison County. See a tree that is blocking a roadway near uh, exit 95 there on, on Interstate 75. So that's probably going to cause some uh, traffic backups on 75. You got a tree down near uh, exit, exit 95 there into Madison County. Severe weather continues here tonight in our coverage. We'll keep rolling right along with it as so we try to keep you updated on what's happening mm -hmm. out there. And uh, it's rough in spots. It, so. it, it is, and it's been a, you know, it's been a, unfortunately, a historic night uh, for tornadoes. This is a full-blown tornado outbreak across Kentucky with multiple fatalities into western Kentucky. Uh, Governor Bashir uh, has already been up and uh, had a uh, had a press conference just a little bit ago to address what has happened overnight. And if you're just joining us, Mayfield into Graves County into western Kentucky was devastated, took a direct hit from what is likely a major tornado and uh, at least 50 fatalities were being told as of right now. So, uh, and Jim, as we know, you don't get a, you don't get the full scope of everything until no. the sun comes up. And what? Yeah, we're in in, uh, in in the Mayfield area. Dozens of those fatalities, Jim, were at a factory, a candle a candle factory, factory yeah, that uh, just collapsed. Was no match for uh, for a tornado. And you know, because you know how factories are, the large uh, open areas with a, a extended roof that's really right. high. And those are the areas you do not want to be in. Those are the exact areas you want to avoid. And now we're hearing, of course, the report of that, most of them happening in that one facility. Yeah, and Graves, majority. Hopkins, Warren County, Jim, the, the that majority. we're being told, the majority of the deaths. That includes Bowling Green, where they were hard hit by a tornado as well. And, um, and I think one of the underreported areas is going to wind up being Taylor County, where uh, we're still getting a lot of reports. A lot of, a lot of damage in Taylor County. Right now I'm seeing on the statewide outage map uh, for power outages, 61,000 customers. Customers. Without power, yeah, yeah. customers. It doesn't mean individual people, but, uh, but customers. We have a new severe thunderstorm warning that came out. This is what we've been watching, Chris, from out of Tennessee to see mm -hmm. what would happen, what would uh, carry forward. It's a severe thunderstorm warning, McCrary, Pulaski, Wayne, and into Whitley counties. And now they've extended that Burksville tornado warning, as you see, a little bit deeper into the Commonwealth uh, as well. Let's get the specs. So there's our, yeah, is that our tornado warning into Russell County That's now? That's the one into to Russell. Casey is also included, a little <coughs> small sliver of Casey. And but. that and that was the uh, you know that's with that's an extension, Jim, of this particular storm that is coming out of the Burksville area. So what's effectively happening now is that anytime the weather service is seeing just a l it's a line here, but anytime weather service is seeing just a little bit of a kink now, putting out a tornado warning. 
can't say, obviously, I can't say you blame them because that's, you know, we're here to save some lives and this is a new tornado warning. This does include Russell Springs and Jamestown gets into southern parts of uh, the Casey County area. And this is, again, one of those systems, Jim, that's far enough away from all radars that the beams kind of overshoot everything. It makes it very difficult. It makes it difficult to get, a, to get a, uh, a good look at the low levels of the storms that are down here. So anytime you see any little bit of a kink and the rate, you know the radar is not getting a good look at it, just throw out that tornado warning. Just get, get people's attention. So here into Russell Springs, into Jamestown, into Russell County, and a part of Casey County, we need to be in our storm shelters immediately with this potential tornado that is moving in from the Burksville area. So that's a, it, it's moving toward right on top of Lake Cumberland, essentially. And this is one of many warnings that we have out across the region. And uh, Jim, if you could hit the warning map just to kind of give a view, an uncluttered view of all the current warnings that we have out. So we got in the yellow are severe thunderstorm warnings. In the red, those are tornado warnings. So we got two tornado warnings effectively. They go three technically. This is Madison County and then Estill County and Powell County, but it's really all the same storm. So we got that. Then we got the storms that are showing up here around Russell Springs and into southern parts of Casey County and surrounded by numerous areas that are under severe thunderstorm warnings. The green are flash flood warnings. Flash flooding is something we're going to have to contend with for several more hours, and you may see additional counties that are added to this. So you've got tornado warnings in red, you've got severe thunderstorm warnings in the yellow, and then the uh, flash flood warnings in the green. Here are your tornado warnings in the Russell County. It's a small part of Casey County. If you're watching us now into Pulaski County, into Wayne County, over into Whitley and McCreary, those are severe thunderstorm warnings. Severe thunderstorm warning into Taylor County, into Casey County, into Adair County, and that goes back farther to the west. Now, farther to the northeast, there you go with those uh, tornado warnings. Small little sliver of southern Estill County, into Madison County, into Powell County and Estill County. Those are tornado warnings and then severe thunderstorm warnings kind of surrounding that. Frenchburg, Menifee County, Morgan County, into Northern Wolf County and into a part of Estill County as well. So those are the current warnings that we have. Where we have these tornado warnings, you guys need to find that safe shelter. And we got these safety tips that we are going to keep driving home to you, especially in light of um, what has happened in Western Kentucky or considering what has happened in Western Kentucky where so many people have lost their lives tonight. Seek that safe shelter in a basement or an interior room on the first floor. Get as low as you can. Put as many walls where you are between yourself and the outside and the possible tornado as you can. So that means get to the center part of the lowest floor. If you got a basement, Yes, we want to get there, if not the low floor. And then in the center of the room, in a bathroom, in the center of that low floor, an interior room, a bathroom, a closet, maybe under a staircase, if you can get under there. Uh, evacuate all mobile homes and we're going to protect our heads. Okay, we're going to put this on. If you got a helmet, I know most of us don't have a hard hat laying around. I totally get that, totally understand it. If you do, put it to use. If not, got a football helmet, got an old football helmet. Let's. See if we can still squeeze it on our noggin, okay? If you got a, a batting helmet, if you got a bicycle helmet, that's what most people are gonna find. Kiddos especially. Kiddos, we're gonna get that bicycle helmet, we're gonna put it on, okay? And if we don't have that, let's get a pillow, let's cover our head, and let's go through our safety drills that we went through at school. So we'd like to talk to the kids, because I know the kids, middle of the night like this, scared to death, Hang in there, guys. We're here with you. New tornado warning is out into uh, parts of Whitley County and now into Wayne County. That is with that storm that is coming out of Tennessee. That's the one we've talked about for a while, Jim, and it is now crossing out of Tennessee and is getting into southern Kentucky. So until 615, that is a short fuse short, tornado warning. It really is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's a very short fuse tornado warning. So that thing is, is moving along very, very quickly. So we add that to the list. So Wayne County uh, into McCreary County, tornado warnings are in effect. This includes Monticello. 
It does not include Whitley City, though. It, Powersburg, that is into far southwestern parts of Wayne County. Seek shelter immediately. Go through the safety tips that we were just talking about. So we just keep expanding the real estate that are under tornado warnings. And I know some folks, you're watching us from different areas, and you're saying, what about me? What about, what about my area? Hey, we love you guys too, but what we're doing is that we're trying to take the priority spots as the ones that are under the tornado warnings, okay? Because those are the ones that are with light, life, potentially life-threatening storms that are moving in. So here's the overall view, and I tell you, this is a lot of real estate that are under warnings. New severe thunderstorm warning is popping in that gets back into what on the northern side of this, Jim, looks like back in toward uh, sections of central Kentucky. So that uh, is, or maybe an ex extent, it's so hard to keep track of oh, them. They're now all running so together many. now, yeah. So they're all overlapping here. So we got severe thunderstorm warnings that get into Jessamine County, southern Fayette County. That's, that's the one we're seeing. That, yeah, there you go. Yeah, we take the, the radar off. Like yeah, you yeah. got to take the radar off. So here's your new severe thunderstorm warning that gets into southern Fayette County, Clark County. That is into Nicholas, or I should say the Nicholasville area of Jessamine County, Garrett County, Boyle County, Sanford, and Lincoln County, Mercer County. I think we got them all in for that new warning. If not, there you go. Until 630, Clark, Fayette, Garrett, Jessamine, Madison, and Mercer with that new severe thunderstorm warning. So again, Fayette County, you're going to hear the chimes that'll go off from the, it's not the tornado chimes, this would be the severe thunderstorm chimes. Those severe thunderstorm warnings go back to the southwest. Adair, Casey, Lincoln, Marion, Russell, and Taylor. And then you've got the tornado warnings to the south of that and a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings that are out there as well. Tornado warning for Russell County, a small part of Casey County, getting into Clinton and Cumberland. That goes until 515. That's central time. That would be 615 local time, 15 more minutes. And then until 615, this new tornado warning for McCreary County and Wayne County, just to the south of uh, Monticello. I thought Monticello was in that last time. It, it, just to the south of that, that does not get into uh, Whitley City and McCreary County, but boy, it is awfully, awfully close. And that's where the storm that had a tornado warning with it in Nashville. Same type of a storm. So Madison County, our tornado warning is over. I guess that just expired at six o'clock. So we've got this tornado warning for 15 more minutes, northern Casey or northern Estill County, and then in, into Stanton, Clay City, Powell County, and severe thunderstorm warnings go well out in advance of that toward the Moorhead area of uh, Rowan County. West Liberty, we're in that too. So does that tornado warning get expanded? We shall see. Uh, a lot of these storms have just had some minor circulation into northern Kentucky. I think without question right now, we have to watch those storms. As we said, southern Kentucky, your time was coming. We had to watch those storms coming out of Tennessee and the southwestern parts of Kentucky. And you're starting to see a little uptick in those storms again, Jim, even into the Lexington Metro and Point South. And, and the thing when looking at this radar now, Notice how the line kind of snakes. It's not a continuous straight line. So it arcs, curves back in, and then curves back toward the south. And boy, that, that's some damaging winds on the Kentucky-Tennessee border when you see that, that, uh, that bow that is just ripping its way across the Tennessee border counties. Behind this, things are calming down. Now the front is still back to the west of Bloomington, west of Evansville, and we can't sound the all clear until that front gets through here. But this is going to take a few more hours before we can get rid of this severe weather maker that is on top of uh, central and now into eastern Kentucky. So it's going to take a little while before we sound the all clear on this, Jim. And watching this particular cell that is into southwestern parts of Wayne County, it's right on top of, of I believe, the Powersburg area. And it is coming in from southwest to northeast. An additional, uh, that tornado warning that is out for Russell County, it looks like the storms have kind of weakened just a little bit there on top of Lake Cumberland. It, it never looks super impressive. Right. Uh, because, uh, again, we're looking at this from far, far away from uh, any radar site you're going to find anywhere in, in Kentucky or Tennessee. So it's hard to see uh, the certain levels that we need to see. So maybe that might have been one of those. Uh, areas of concern they just kind of went with their gut and kept it going with the warning because it had been warned that way previously over in Tennessee 
as it was running out of the, the state. Now we go back up to our northern ones, our northern warnings, I should say, and you, you find that a lot of the characteristics, the, the bright reds, the oranges, a lot of that not showing up with this, but the wind is there. See, that's the thing. The wind yeah. driving all of this, it's still above our heads, and the, this right here is has such easy access to it to pull it down and get these strong straight line wind gusts to go along with it so they have the warnings that uh, continue out there. Yeah, and uh, these additional uh, warnings across southern, you know, the, the best instability right now, Jim, is across southern Kentucky into the southeastern part of the state. All right, that's where the temperatures have spiked into the 60s and maybe pushing close to 70 degrees at 6 o'clock in the morning on the 11th day of December, which is absurd to begin with. Exactly. And when we saw this uh, clash of the air masses, the clash, of the clash of the season setting up, you know, we started to sound the alarms very early this week. And we don't often do that four days in advance of an event, you know, to put out what we call a first alert weather day, which is to draw attention to a potentially impactful event. Just right. impactful. Doesn't mean it has to be severe. But we knew this was going to be severe. So, you know, we we were highlighting three things potentially damaging winds, tornadoes, heavy rain. Unfortunately, Mother Nature decided, you know, we're going to get all all of the above. Yes. And, you know, it's 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 disheartening to see everything that has taken place tonight with the devastation across Kentucky. Jim, most most folks, when you say March 2nd, they know what you're talking about. You say April 3rd and 4th, you don't have to give the year. 1974, super outbreak. March 2nd, 2012, coming up on the 10 year anniversary, which is hard to believe here in a few months. And now, December 10th and 11th, 2021. This is without question gonna be the worst wintertime severe weather outbreak in Kentucky's history. Oh, Folks, no not doubt. only is this gonna be one of the worst uh, wintertime outbreaks, this is gonna be one of the worst severe weather outbreaks in Kentucky's history, period. When this you, is, this is going to be top three when you factor in at least the death and devastation that yeah. we've seen not in our yeah. area we've right. we've got our own issues but mm -hmm. out west yes yeah and you know the death toll is already surpassing um, March second just or, in Mayfield or, just one place just right. in one place right yeah. just, maybe just in just in the candle factory by itself exactly you know mm -hmm. and that I can only imagine that number's uh, going to continue to rise. So again, uh, we're looking at our radar, we're focusing on Southern Kentucky, and we're, we're keeping you up to date on all the warnings that are out there. And those severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings still have a little lifespan. But, you know, Jim, you look at that, what we're zooming in on into Frenchburg, into Stanton, into Clay City, it, it, that line is weakened. It's, it's, it's not as impressive as what we were looking at even five minutes ago. It continues to weaken. And eventually these run out of steam. They do. That, that, that's the thing to keep in mind. But when you are getting to a volatile atmosphere like down across southern and eastern Kentucky where they haven't had anything, you know, they've still got, they're primed for the picking right now uh, for, for more development. So we'll have to start watching them a little closer, just like we have been from the storms that are coming in from Tennessee at this yeah. time. So plenty of the necessary ingredients to keep these things going on for a little while longer. Didn't see any spin there, by the way. If it was anything, it was a broader circulation. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm looking at just to see what the Weather Service is, is thinking still with the, um, with the current tornado warnings, if we're going to let those kind of uh, expire coming up soon. And I haven't, I haven't said anything just yet on exactly if those tornado warnings will expire, but I can't imagine looking at those uh, east of Lexington that those will still be going. Right. Now, the Southern Kentucky, especially the one you're looking at there in the McCreary and Wayne counties, that has the, you know, the most trouble written all over it. And that's what we're seeing with that. That was the storm that blew through Nashville with the tornado warnings that we were tracking to the northeast a little bit ago. Uh, I would say hours ago, but it probably hasn't been as long as the one it, would think. For, yeah, it may have been 30 minutes ago, and it just seems that way for us, you know? Right, because these have been really <clears throat> rocketing across the, the, the several states here the past uh, several hours. I mean... Yeah, big and, time stuff. And you know, and that that is another area where you're looking at there in the southern Kentucky where it's a it's in between radar sweeps. Yes. And, you know, you got Nashville, Knoxville, Jackson, and then Louisville. Well, that's kind of down in in uh, in no man's land, so to speak, in terms of a radar. Not not in terms of the people of the or, people. The, or no. the no good people. We're talking about in terms of radar. Uh, and it looks like they chopped a little bit of that. Just a smidge. A smidge of that yeah. away on the northwestern side of it. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking and I don't see a whole heck of a lot 
of, uh, of spin still showing up with that. But a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado nine miles southeast of Monticello moving northeast and they're clocking this at, at 75 miles an hour. 75, that, that would explain the short. 75, that explains the short fused yeah. tornado warning that was issued with this. But that could, uh, what that will do is that'll just spark more warnings out ahead of it uh, of yeah. some sort. Right. Uh, whatever they may be mm -hmm. when we get there to that point. But 75 miles per hour. So what I can do is I'll go from the core of where it looks the strongest and I will lay out a track for you at 75 miles per hour and that'll show exactly Wow, it's incredible, 75. And they'll show you some of the communities that will be highlighted here. So I'll take it from the from the core. I'm going to go out over the next half hour, so you can see where that could likely cruise. There you see it. It's only traveling as a bird flies, 37 yeah. miles. <clears throat> and uh, you see the communities: Coopersville, Gregory, Burnside, Mount Victory, all in the path of that. Between right now, which it's 6:08 and 6:34 this morning, it's going to travel that far that fast and as long as we have the uh, the tornado warnings that are active in our area obviously we're gonna we're gonna stay with us now that that doesn't mean at some point you know we've got uh, normally right now WKYT news uh, this morning would be starting right, right, right. six o'clock um, Shelby Lofton is in we've got crews that are out across the region right now and we do have weather news that we're gonna show people at some point this morning we just can't break away from active well, tornado is. coverage to to get to all that. And that includes what the governor had to say at five o'clock. And um, and that was, you know, when the governor, when any governor of any state calls a press conference at 5 a.m., there is nothing good that is coming from that. And this morning, you know, Governor Bashir delivering the, the horrific news of the fatalities in Western Kentucky. Dozens of people have died, as many as at least 50 Dozens of people were in a one factory in Mayfield, a candle factory. Uh, and I believe we got some video of that that we can show coming out of Western Kentucky. And this is this is the Mayfield area, Jim. And, uh, you know, you look at at the destruction here. This is as the governor called it a mass mass oh, casualty God. event at this factory there in the Mayfield. And it's not just limited, unfortunately, to Graves County, which is where this is. And, this is likely when you see the only thing left standing are concrete or brick structures. And even there, it's not all of those structures left. Folks, you're talking about what may have very well have been an EF4 or 5 tornado that made its way through those areas. All right. And the radar presentation was scary as could be. And this is this is just a little bit of video coming out of uh, Western Kentucky as of right now. So that that's what. That's what folks down there uh, are dealing with. And again, as soon as the sun comes up, we will get in on you. Be, we will be able to see more of the destruction that has taken place. There. Unfortunately, and, and, and then the, 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 I imagine the fatality list will unfortunately again grow. Uh, yeah, because then you start seeing what's happened. Yeah. And, uh, you know, national state of emergency has been declared in Kentucky because of this. And. Uh, the governor saying he's already asked the uh, president for a disaster declar a federal disaster declaration, which would expedite getting more resources in here. And I think he said what two truckloads of, of water already en route yes. to those areas. Yep. So yeah, God bless them. This has been a horrific night for a lot of folks across Kentucky. And uh, unfortunately, it's still not over. 80 national uh, guards, 180. National Guard members have been called up to assist in uh, the recovery efforts and um, with what is going on here in Kentucky. So again, this was Western Kentucky a little earlier tonight. What we're still dealing with across our region is severe weather that is ongoing. Several tornado warnings continue in effect here into Russell County. That's the Lake Cumberland, Russell Springs, Jamestown area. Mayfield, or I should say Monticello, south of Monticello. Tornado warning goes until 615. That's just a three more minutes on both of those warnings, I think. Is that, is right. that right? I believe you're right. So, and both of those cells look like they have weakened considerably just in the past 10, 15 minutes or so. So let's cross your fingers, cross your toes on that one. Uh, farther to the north into the uh, Lexington Metro, this line, by the way, heading towards Somerset, London, Corbin. Strong thunderstorm here from Stanford to Lancaster. How many times have we set a strong thunderstorm, Stanford to Lancaster?
goodness gracious. All morning. Yeah, it's been one right after another in those same areas. Flash flood warnings are out for Franklin County, Shelby County, and West. And then you've got all of the severe thunderstorm warnings across eastern Kentucky and that little sliver of a tornado warning that is left. They're just going to let that one expire because there is no way this should still have a tornado warning with it into Powell County or Estill County. That thing is is weakening considerably. But I can tell you in just looking at the radar over the past five or 10 minutes, I like the trends for the first time tonight or this morning. It's looking better overall. Let's hope it stays that way, but you're, we're noticing the overall line of storms is decreasing just a little bit, Jim. They're, they're going to expire. They're going to let the one expire there for uh, Casey up to Lincoln, Cumberland, Russell okay. County. That, that one, they're so, going to let that one go. So this is going to expire into Lincoln, or I should say uh, Russell County and Casey County. What about Montes uh, the Wayne County, McCreary County storm? Waiting, anything on that uh, one? Waiting on that Nothing one. Nothing yet. Seeing any, not seeing any official word just yet. But regardless of the tornado warnings, look at all the counties that are under severe thunderstorm warnings. You, it's hard to I don't get it. It's hard to see with your radar as busy as it is, and all the warnings, the polygons, the <laughs> the overlays. You got uh, some of that showing up underneath. What we can do, we can take all that off for you. And here it is. So in one minute, watch. We're going to take a look at this and let's watch and see all those tornado warnings hopefully just disappear on us. That means the tornado warnings would no longer be active unless they extend that uh, warning into Wayne County. And looking at everything, can't really see a whole lot to extend. But again, we're almost to 615. That'll be coming up here shortly. And then you will see those warnings that hopefully will pop off in terms of the tornado warnings. So tornado warnings until 615 for uh, several counties, three different areas, severe thunderstorm warnings are out for a host of counties. And we keep looking over here to see if any more of those counties that uh, pop on to this particular warning map. And so far, so good. New severe thunderstorm warnings are an updated warning for I see parts of Lincoln County and Casey County and tornado there warnings, all the tornado warnings just disappeared. Jim, I believe this is the first time, I don't, want to, I don't want to say it too loud, I'm afraid to jinx it here, that this is the first time in hours that we do not have an active tornado warning You're right. in Kentucky. You're absolutely right. Uh, literally since probably, oh my gosh, five or six o'clock yesterday. That's Seven, yeah, somewhere in that time frame. That's incredible. Yeah, we've had continuous tornado warnings in Kentucky for a, roughly the past 12 hours. Now, let's get let's get this line through through the rest of the state. Then we'll take that deep breath. But as of right now, we are still dealing with this line of uh, severe thunderstorms and a host of severe thunderstorm warnings that are out. But no active tornado warnings here in the central or eastern Kentucky. And what we're going to do uh, coming up here momentarily, we're going to get a little news check, Jim, on what all is going on. But right now, we're going to keep it here just to see uh, and make sure we don't get any more tornado warnings that are still out there, but a lot of real estate still dealing with the possibility of damaging winds and those damaging winds can still cause obviously some issues. I'll tell you what though, it, it looks a lot better out there. Uh, just, just looking at the radar from this perspective, but I, I don't want, I don't want to say that and let anybody let their guard get down, but, but it does look a whole lot better as far as the intensity is concerned. Everything out of Tennessee seems to be weakening as well. Mm -hmm. And you see that a lot of it, this is the same thing that was happening to some of our storms earlier. They're getting choked off. They're getting choked off by that tennis, by the Tennessee storms. By there. those much stronger storms. Down now, south of Nashville. I'm not saying we won't see more severe thunderstorm warnings or anything like that. Yeah. But, but maybe the, the, the high end stuff is not going to be as likely as we move through the next few hours. That, that's our real concern. Yeah, it really is. And, uh, you know, for folks who are uh, looking at home, there you go. There are your active warnings. Green are flash flood warnings, and that's a lot of real estate with flash flood warnings. Notice the streaky nature to them. That's, that's the way right. the storms traveled. Yeah, and you and you had those storms that it's called training. They're moving over the same piece of real estate one right after another. And that is, um, you know, that's... Unfortunately, that is the recipe to getting in on flash flooding. I haven't seen a whole lot of true flash flood reports, so that's at least 
you know, and, and at this point, Jim, we're grasping for straws and trying to look for good news. Right. I mean, from a weather perspective tonight, this is this is as bad as you're ever going to get. But in again, Kentucky. but again, I have to say this: daylight. Daylight. That, yeah. That, that's what it, we're waiting for it, now. It will get it will get worse. The news will get a lot worse before um, before the day is over. You know, when the uh, governor was on earlier, he said at least 50. And you could hear it in his voice that he he's. You know, he was. Of course, and then said maybe 75 to 100. 100. Yeah. Uh, so, so effectively, that are at least 50, uh, you know, fatality right now. That may double. Right. You, you know, that, that may double. He felt confident over. with 50, yeah. but but said 75 to 100. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that tells you everything of how bad of a night this was uh, in central. Western, Southern Kentucky, and yeah. it continues here even to the early morning. You know, and, you, and you, you, at some point we'll put together we can show uh, all the warnings collectively overlaid on the same map, and I would just about every county in Kentucky's had a warning at some point right. today. I, I guarantee over the past 24 hours. Yes, and again, overnight events are there's no good time for severe weather, but there is a worse time, and that is the overnight when people aren't paying attention but i really think that we that the awareness has been heightened this week leading up to this you know the the tornadoes we had on sunday night monday morning kind of jolted people to Scares think you. okay wait a minute it, okay it's december but we can still get severe weather scared a little bit right and, and then we started talking about this early on this week about the potential of it and, and here we are right in the thick of it hopefully uh, it'll continue to calm down here, though, this morning. Yeah, we we like uh, we like seeing a map without red, and uh, again, this is this is the first time in more than 12 hours that we have not had a um, a tornado warning across Kentucky. And How many hours? 12, I believe, 12? roughly, okay. give or take. Yeah, For, in Kentucky. 12 so, straight hours. Just about 12 consecutive hours, and that tornado that hit Mayfield. Folks, this, this tornado that hit Western Kentucky is going to become all kinds of historic, all right? Not just for, for unfortunately, just the devastation that it caused in Kentucky. It started in Arkansas. And if this thing stayed on the ground the entire time, Jim, we may have just seen the longest track tornado in United States history. And it happened in the month and of December. And it happened in December. It went from Arkansas into Kentucky. So, yeah, more than 200 miles, the famed tri-state tornado of 100 years ago, roughly, that now uh, scientists go back and look at it, and that thing probably wasn't on the ground continuously uh, back then. It probably skipped a little bit. It was the same supercell. Right. You just didn't have the, you know, enough people to, to verify. Um, but what we're dealing with is this out of Mayfield, and this, we, we had... The radars, Jim, from Arkansas to Kentucky tracked what is known as a TVS or a tornado uh, signature for more than three consecutive hours. From the same cell. From the same cell. And that is something I have never seen before, and we've been at this for a few years now. And that's, that's the end result. And that's, you know, this factory, this candle factory where... You know, this this hit during the evening hours, so you had probably night shift folks there right. reporting, just reporting for work, and uh, dozens in that particular in that particular uh, facility. So, so we've got we've got uh, you know Western Kentucky that has been devastated with everything that has been going on. You got these severe thunderstorm warnings into central Kentucky as of right now. And uh, that, that extends from southern Fayette County, Jim, through Madison County, into Boyle County, and all the way to the Kentucky-Tennessee border. And then gets into northern parts of Tennessee. So uh, flash flood warnings are out from Frankfurt back toward the south and southwest into uh, the I-65 corridor, Bowling Green, where we had a tornado that hit there a little earlier. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we're hearing of some fatalities into Warren County. So, um, you know, from that storm earlier and the, the Corvette plant, you know, that is damage historic. Yes. You know, tornado hit that. We had the damage on that. And uh, apparently the roof caught fire from after the tornado went through there. 
you know, and this coming on the heels of, of um, you know, what they went through with a sinkhole there, what, a decade or so ago at the Corvette right, plant. Right. And, um, and, now, and now this uh, tornado that hit that particular area. So let's recap what all we got going on, and we will see the current severe thunderstorm warnings that are out here across central Kentucky from the Lexington area to the Tennessee border. Let's give a radar view to see what all is going on. And we do have uh, the strong thunderstorms that are out there. That's a strong storm again here in the northern parts of Lincoln County and getting into the southern part of uh, Garrett County. And that's heading toward Richmond again. Boy, that has been the area. My goodness, one storm right after another just fires up over these same areas from Lincoln County through Garrett County through parts of Madison County, and that is racing its way off to the east and the northeast. And what we're dealing with here is going to be potentially a setup to where we may have some flash flooding into these particular areas as well, because these storms keep moving over the same exact areas one right after another. So into these particular areas, yeah, we got to be on guard for maybe a quick little spin that shows up in the atmosphere, but the potential is also there for these storms to dump a tremendous amount of rain in uh, in the same areas one right after another. Storms are just now getting into northeastern Kentucky, but as Jim was saying a little bit ago, the radar itself looks much, much better overall. So this line is nowhere near as strong as what we had a little bit ago. Unfortunately, the one thing we have noticed with this line before is that sometimes it pulses up and then it weakens and then it pulses right back up or at least little parts of that line. So that's what we're on guard for. And again, watching these severe thunderstorms that are heading into Richmond, that are heading into Lancaster, into Garrett County and that are across uh, Stanford into Lincoln County too. Not seeing any kinks or little spins that are showing up within those uh, storms or within that particular line, but nonetheless, we are seeing the threat for some damaging winds. This line extends down 27 Somerset Pulaski County where it doesn't appear to be as strong as what your neighbors all around you are seeing, but a little farther to the south, We've got uh, severe thunderstorms that are ongoing here from Lake Cumberland, Russell County, over into sections of Wayne County, McCreary County. Folks in London and Corbin, storms are weakening, but they're heading in your general direction as we speak. And then we've got uh, the rest of southeastern Kentucky, where we may get in on a little extension of that severe weather watch. But boy, you look at the leading edge of that is falling apart outside of that little enhanced band of thunderstorms here from Madison County back toward the southwest into Lincoln County and parts of Garrett County as well. So again, I know that we're just we just want to get that cold front through here and get it in and get it out of here. Unfortunately, the front is still well back to the west of us. And those are some uh, stronger thunderstorms that are cruising out of northern parts of Tennessee and that are getting into southern Kentucky as of now. So we'll continue to watch that into Whitley County and into parts of McCreary County as well. No tornado warnings are out here across central or eastern Kentucky. So we continue to watch the uh, threat for severe thunderstorms that is taking shape throughout our part of the world. But this line has weakened, has weakened considerably from what we were looking at a little earlier with this line of uh, severe thunderstorms. Now, we, we've heard from Governor uh, Andy Bashir on the devastation that has been uh, hitting Western Kentucky with the overnight tornadoes. Governor Bashir joins us now. Governor, it's been a tough night for Kentucky. What can you tell us about the reports you're getting in now from especially Western Kentucky? Now, the reports are heartbreaking. It's difficult. People have, have lost everything. Uh, we're going to lose more than 50 Kentucky lives when yeah. this is over. It's probably going to be closer to 70 to 100. Uh, certainly a type of tornado event that I don't think we've seen certainly in my lifetime. Yeah. Uh, four separate tornadoes hitting different areas in western <laughs> Kentucky. One being on the ground for over 200 miles consecutively um, here in, in the Commonwealth alone. We've got fatalities in especially Mayfield and Graves County and Marshall County and Hopkins County and my dad's hometown of, of Dawson Springs hit incredibly uh, hard. Losses in 
in Marshall and Warren County. And, and as, as the, the sun comes up, uh, I think we're gonna learn of even more devastation. So uh, please, to everybody out there, be praying for your brothers and sisters in Western Kentucky. Check on your, your family, though a lot of the phone lines are down. I can't get through to, to people. And so to everybody out there, I know how scary that can be, um, but we'll, we'll make it through this too. We are resilient. Now, Governor, you mentioned how uh, a lot of your family comes from some of these hard hit areas. So this is one of those rare occasions for you where you got to be governor and at the same time you're worried about friends and family in the in the path uh, of that tornado. I am. I mean, in the course of this night, I've been at the emergency operations center since about 1 a.m. But actually, even here in Frankfurt was calling my family to tell them to get to the basement and then having to check on them. Uh, family in Dawson Springs in Hopkins County where this tornado hit uh, directly still trying to to get in touch with. It is a it is a tough morning. And then for all the families in in Mayfield that had a loved one uh, in that candle factory, you know, we grieve with them. Um, we hope that their family member was one of the ones that could be rescued. But you know, that is now a, a mass casualty event, um, but help is on the way. Uh, we declared a state of emergency before midnight. The National Guard has been deployed. Uh, transportation is, is out there helping to clear roadways with the Division of Forestry. We got two tractor trailers of water um, headed to uh, the area. I've requested a federal emergency disaster uh, declaration. And then we've got some teams from other places in the Commonwealth of EMTs, of firefighters, and of, and of uh, police and others uh, on their way down. So, you know, we are one state and we're going to stand with Western Kentucky. Now, Governor, as, they, as we, you know, get ready for the sun to come up, as you mentioned, we're going to, we're unfortunately going to get a much better look at just how devastating and deadly these storms have been across Western Kentucky from your perspective. Where do you go from here once the sun comes up? Well, as soon as it is safe, I'll be on uh, a plane headed to, to Mayfield first. Um, with all the damage to the courthouse, the jail, people's homes, uh, and then we're gonna head uh, up the road to Dawson Springs to, to check on everybody, but certainly have been in touch with uh, county judges, mayors, um, local emergency management, uh, in a multiple county a multiple uh, county uh, region. It's uh, really hard how this hit. And as the sun comes up, um, it's, it's not gonna be pretty. It's gonna be tough, it's gonna be difficult. Um, and we're gonna have lost a, a lot of people that we don't get back. Yeah, and you mentioned the historic nature of this tornado outbreak, and, and it, it is truly, you know, in Kentucky, we kind of measure uh, tornado outbreaks. You say March 2nd, 2012. You say April 3rd and 4th, super outbreak, 1974. Now we're going to say December 10th, 11th of 2021. And you mentioned that tornado that made its way into Mayfield, and real, it was on the ground. It started near Jonesboro, Arkansas and made mm -hmm. its way all the way into Kentucky. And I can tell you from a meteorological perspective, I've never seen anything remotely close to what just happened in Western Kentucky. Yeah, we, we measure it right now at 227 miles. We don't know anything on record um, that, that has been on the ground that long. And, and just look at the, at the damage uh, it has caused. It, it is, again, a, a really tough night um, and hearing Hearing the reports come in in, in real time um, is it's not easy knowing that there are so many families out there hearing about the family trapped in their basement, about those that we know are in harm's way and, and, and a local emergency response trying to get through uh, the debris. Uh, a big thank you to all of them that have been out in the midst of this even while it was still dangerous. And to others out there, while there is still significant weather, please stay off the roads. Uh, so that uh, your your local emergency management folks can get to the people that need the help. Yeah, and, and you, as you mentioned, once that sun comes up, I would imagine then you're probably, the state's going to get more requests from county judges or, or, or mayors, local officials, that as they get out and survey the scene, 
they're going to be throwing even more requests in your general direction. And the, is it uh, the state EOC that's going to be in charge of, of taking in a lot of these requests from uh, from the county judges right now, or is it just going to come straight into your office? Uh, it goes to our, our emergency operations center, and we are ready. Uh, so we've been in emergency the past uh, 18 months, uh, working directly uh, with these officials. Uh, we we uh, flood 52 weeks a year, uh, working and each and every one of those. So we are ready to help. Uh, we're ready to call out more National Guard as needed. You know, the transportation cabinet is um, out there in force, our division of forestry and whatever resources that we need uh, to, to, to bring to bear. Now, we all think about the next day after a disaster, but it's really a longer term thing than that. It's about helping people rebuild, uh, helping um, to alleviate some of that financial burden, knowing that um, the, the firehouse in Mayfield was mm -hmm. impacted, just like their jail and, and county courthouse. And there's going to be a lot of help that everybody is going to need moving forward. And, and Governor, I know you're really busy this morning. And what would you say to the rest of Kentucky right now? For those of us who are, who are seeing the images and, uh, you know, this the devastation, the heartbreak that we're all experiencing, what would you say to the rest of Kentucky in order to, you know, what we should be doing going yeah. forward now to try to help our neighbors and our friends in Western Kentucky? Well, pray for them. Yeah. Reach out to people that, that you know. Offer a, a helping hand. Look at places like the Red Cross and, and others. You know, be the, the good human beings that, that we are. You know, something like this can hit any part of the state at any time and making sure we are one state, one set of compassionate people. Uh, anytime this happens, this is the right thing to do, and it means the rest of the state is gonna be there uh, for us when when we get hit with something like this. And that's true, and every, you know, every part of the state, Governor, has been hit hard in the past year by one weather event or another. We had the ice storms that were historic back in February, as you know full, uh, full well about, followed up two weeks later by one of the worst floods in Kentucky history. And now we're that's ending the year with one of the worst tornado outbreaks ever. Yeah, that's right. I remember being at a warming center in Ashland mm -hmm. during the ice storm that was then underwater uh, a month later, certainly dealing with difficult weather events. And as we move forward, uh, we do need to look at resiliency. You know, when we build things back, we need to make sure that we can withstand what we're seeing are more frequent uh, weather patterns like this. But, but I think today, this morning, our goal is to be good, compassionate people, uh, to wrap our arms around those that are grieving, uh, to tell them how much we care about them, and, and to make sure that we check on, on those we love. Governor, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us this morning. Our hearts and prayers go out to all the people affected in uh, Western Kentucky. And of course, I'm sure we'll be hearing uh, more from you and state officials as the day goes on. Governor Andy Bashir, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. And as we uh, continue to watch the severe weather across central and eastern Kentucky as of right now, we are indeed still dealing with all kinds of active weather conditions. We have the severe thunderstorm warnings that are out across southeastern Kentucky. Here's a little better view of the current warnings that are out. So we got flash flood warnings for a number of counties. Still no active severe or tornado warnings. Great news there. Still uh, severe thunderstorm warnings for the counties that are in yellow. That is Clark County. That is in Madison County. That is into Garrett County and into sections of Lincoln County. We also have uh, Clay County. I see Laurel County. I see Knox, Whitley, McCreary, and a part, part of southeastern sections of Pulaski County for that severe thunderstorm warning that is out across southeastern Kentucky. There is the radar perspective as of right now with the severe thunderstorm line that is across parts of central Kentucky that is weakening and it is moving toward the east. Our cold front is off to the west of us. Folks, that's the best news we've had in a long time that that front is moving through. And one of the reasons we're getting in on the weakening severe thunderstorms across central and eastern Kentucky is because this line down in Tennessee is absorbing some of the energy that is ticketed for Kentucky. But we're going to continue to watch each and every thunderstorm that is out there. But the overall intensity of these storms continues to wane 
and that is great news. Still a tornado watch that goes through 9 o'clock this morning for much of central and south central Kentucky. And that again goes until 9 this morning. No active tornado warnings. That is great, great news. That's the best news we've had for the entire overnight and into this morning. So things are beginning to at least calm down in terms of the overall tornado threat. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get a check on uh, some news and see what all is going on. It, obviously, we know what is is making headlines across Kentucky, across our part of the world. Uh, as we get if we get any more tornado warnings, we're going to jump right back on immediately. We're still going to be here with continuing weather coverage until these storms are gone. But right now, Shelby Lofton joins me uh, with a check on the severe weather coverage from across the region. Shelby. Chris, thank you. We are looking at utter devastation in western Kentucky. At least 50 people are dead. State officials expect that number to go up as the sun rises. Governor Bashir has already declared a state of emergency. Both the National Guard and Kentucky State Police are responding. The primary tornado was on the ground continuously for over 200 miles in our state, something we have never seen before. We have deaths in multiple, possibly many counties. So far, the governor says people are dead in Hopkins, Warren, Marshall, Graves, and potentially more counties. He says he'll be in western Kentucky as soon as it is safe to travel. And crews are looking for survivors at a collapsed candle factory in Mayfield. Governor Bashir says it's a mass casualty event. There were more than 100 people inside when it happened. According to WPSD, first responders can hear people calling for help in the debris. They don't know how many people could be trapped. They've put out a call for volunteers to help dig through the rubble. The county courthouse, the jail, churches and homes also hit hard in Mayfield. We've seen shattered windows and ripped off roofs. The transportation cabinet is mobilizing to get relief to the region along with the National Guard. And in addition to Mayfield, Central City, Greenville and Erlington are also reporting damage. Thousands of people lost damage, lost power in Davis and Ohio counties. The Hawkins County Sheriff says crews have been pulling people from rubble, including children who took shelter in a bathtub during the storm. And in Bowling Green, near Western Kentucky University's campus, huge trees are completely uprooted, tangled with power lines. Multiple buildings are in pieces, leaving debris scattered across the road. One reporter even had debris pierce through his wall overnight. Bowling Green is also dealing with high flood waters right now. Here, a car got stuck in the mess. Police are blocking off roads and urging drivers to turn away. WKU has canceled commencement ceremonies originally set for tonight. Tens of thousands of Kentuckians are without power this morning, most of them in western Kentucky. Closer to home, we have reports of outages in Montgomery, Garrett, and Boyle County. Crews are beginning to work on restoring power. They want you to stay away from downed power lines and any area with high water. And here in Lexington, police say the roads are relatively calm right now. Since midnight, officers have responded to one injury crash and five non-injury crashes. They've also cleared a few traffic hazards. And our weather team is keeping a close eye on the storm this morning. We're going to head to a commercial break, but stay with us as Chris and Jim continue to track the weather.
All right, thanks for being back with us on uh, what has been a devastating night across Kentucky, one of the worst tornado outbreaks in our state's history. Uh, we had Governor Bashir on earlier, Jim, talking about the devastation and, you know, hitting close to home for him where right. a lot of his family's from Western Kentucky. And the images coming out of Western Kentucky for us were frightening looking at the radars before the storms hit and just frightening and heartbreaking now after. It was incredible to see the, the, the perfect formation, unfortunately. Yeah for tornadoes to develop during the yesterday evening, last night, and during mm -hmm. the overnight hours. I mean, it, it, it's textbook is what happened. It, it really was, and, and textbook in not the way you want something no. to be textbook. No. No. And the setup on this all week long was alarming. Then as we got closer and closer, you could just see everything coming together perfectly. The amount of spin in the atmosphere that it had for these storms. Mm -hmm. You know, I, was, I think I told you yesterday, I was looking at a tornado parameter in one of the models last night that in Western Kentucky, it went, the, the legend on it went to 10 for a significant tornado parameter. The model went to, said, n no, well, let's go past that. It went right. to 15. I'd never seen anything like that. And that's when I was like, okay, this, this is, is, this is going to be bad. And it, it, it's totally devastating for the folks, especially west of us. You know, we're going to find some, yeah. we're going to find stuff in our area too. We, it, we are, right. And, you know, nothing. Thankfully, like what Western Kentucky no. had, not that we obviously wish anybody any mm -hmm. kind of ill will, but the devastation in Western Kentucky historic on a number of occasions. This is going to be one of the worst tornado outbreaks, if not the worst in Kentucky history in terms of fatalities. Right. Um, and the tornado that hit Mayfield was on the ground for more than 200 miles. It came from Arkansas. It, it moved across the, the Mississippi River. I mean, it had to get across the to, Mississippi yeah. River. From Arkansas into Tennessee, I think it may have clipped uh, southeastern Missouri, went into Fulton County, Hickman County, Western Kentucky, and all the way to Breckenridge County, which is unreal. It's, un it's incredible. And it's probably, if that track is verified, that will go down as the longest track tornado in United States history in all likelihood. And what's more terrifying about that is the fact that it happened during the month of December. December 10th and 11th. You know, Severe weather, you don't get a lot of it during the month of December in Kentucky. No, you really don't. And unfortunately, we've had two severe weather events this week. You were on there for, you know, Monday morning. Right. You started your week with tornado warnings. You're ending the week with tornado warnings. That's incredible. And then sandwiched in between, to show the extremes we get, we had snow on Wednesday. Had snow days. Isn't that crazy? And then we had historic tornadoes tonight. So here we are. We're looking this morning, And we're looking out there right now. Well, how do you feel? I, I feel a lot better myself about where we're going with, with the weather. There's still some pretty strong storms out there. Right, but right. nothing like what we experienced Nothing, overnight. Nothing like the signatures we had just an hour ago, let alone two or three hours ago or four hours ago. I mean, at one point we had tornado warnings in Kentucky continuously for about 12 hours. 12 without interruption, hours. I believe. And you were watching all of those. Yeah, take a, take a look at what's going on now. Let's get folks up to date on uh, what we're dealing with right now, Jim. You can see on our graphic, we have severe thunderstorm warnings that are still out for a number of counties across eastern Kentucky. Hello. Uh, you got those warnings that are in all the counties that are in yellow here. This is from, let's see if we can just run them down. That's Rowan County. That is Bath, Montgomery, Menifee, Powell, Clark, Madison, Estill, Jackson, Rockcastle, Garrett, Lincoln, Pulaski, Pulaski, Laurel, into Clay, into Knox, into Whitley and McCreary counties, and then into Tennessee. So those are all the current warnings. Then you got flash flood warnings that are out around Franklin County and Point Southwest, then around Bowling Green. Bowling Green devastated by a tornado overnight as well. Uh, so we're going to, you know, we're, I think the governor said we're probably hearing of fatalities out of Bowling Green and Warren County. So here's the current radar. So we got a, this is still a strong storm in Southern Madison County that's pulsed right back up. That's been kind of the breeding ground for these uh, strong and severe thunderstorms over the past several hours. And I can't believe we're not experiencing at least some flooding conditions here right. into Madison County. That's right? what's shocking to me that we don't have any warnings. Because out. this area has just been inundated. Now, we don't have the Kentucky Mesonet sites that are up and running right now because they're run through the campus of Western Kentucky University, which took a hit from a tornado earlier. I uh, hope they're okay. hope everybody's okay, obviously. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning is out for Laurel County, uh, London, Corbin, Williamsburg, over toward the Barberville area. 
that storm looks like the complex is weakened just a little bit, but it's still on the leading edge of it, so it's probably got some winds of 50 miles an hour or so with it. But again, farther to the north, we're seeing that line of thunderstorms that goes all the way now through Rockcastle County, through Madison County, and then point C. So that's why we're getting that severe thunderstorm warning. Farther to the north, that's just heavy rain into Fleming County, into Rowan County, Bath, Montgomery. Still got the chance for some stronger winds into southern Bath County and over toward southern Moco toward Menifee County. But the storms are ramping up again right here. Gosh, that is incredible to see this same area just focusing and firing off these thunderstorms that are that get stronger over the same piece of real estate. And they just keep doing that. So Richmond Berea over into Esso County into Powell County and across southern Montgomery County. We're watching that. Here's the broader view. One more little band of some thunderstorms and showers trying to go up. That is where your front is until that front makes its way all the way through the state. We're not done with the true severe weather threat, but still this line that is down into Tennessee and toward Huntsville, Alabama. We don't wish those folks ill will, but we've had enough of it in Kentucky. So the stronger those storms get, the weaker the storms are going to get up here. So those storms getting a little stronger, a little more juice to them will rob some of the energy and the moisture here in Kentucky. You can you can just see that. Look at look how much lightning is showing up in Tennessee as opposed to Kentucky. So it's not by coincidence that we started to see more lightning in Tennessee and then those storms in Kentucky started to weaken a little bit. But that's still a little complex there into Madison County is just pulsing right back up. Daggone it. Farther to the north, that's a snowstorm that is associated with that. Now the current tornado watch area has been whittled away. Lexington, north and west, we're out of it. That uh, tornado watch was to go to nine this morning, still scheduled to go to nine here into parts of eastern Kentucky. And I noticed, Jim, they filled those counties in. They did down here. later. All right, yeah. thankfully. It, that just looked silly. Where we had Whitley and Mercury counties without a watch and it jumped then into Tennessee. So this this looks much better and makes more sense. So that's the current tornado watch that will go until nine this morning. But the active warnings are all for severe thunderstorms as opposed to tornado warnings. So again, recapping all those areas that are in the yellow are the current tornado war or severe thunderstorm warnings that are out. The red would be the tornado warnings and for about a 12 hour stretch tonight into this morning. We had active tornado warnings going across the entire state. The current warnings. These are severe thunderstorm warnings. We're still going to get a little wind damage. I think with that line of thunderstorms that is coming out of Madison County into southern parts of Clark County over into Estill County, maybe northern uh, Jackson County and into Powell County. It may clip Rockcastle County too because that line it was increasing on the radar. You can actually see that right here. Let's hope we don't see a little kink develop in there or else. Yeah, we will go red again. We'll, we'll go in and investigate that. So strongest part of this storm line goes from Mount Sterling, southeastern tip of Clark County, now eastern sections of Madison County, and that goes into Rockcastle County too. So that line is where we are dealing with the strongest part of this storm, and that is right on top of Mount Vernon. So we'll stop this, and then we'll, we'll uh, we will look. He says at the velocities inside this or the winds. So we're going to look at the winds here to see exactly what we're dealing with. And you don't see anything that is concerning on the southern edge of this, but you can see where the winds are increasing right along that line. You can see how the winds actually shift direction there ahead of the line behind the line, but nothing just looking at that that stands out in terms of producing any kind of a uh, quick spin up. But some pretty good winds are showing up in that in all likelihood right along and ahead of it. And then uh, you're getting that uh, wind direction to shift a little bit as that, that line of thunderstorms makes its way on through. So that's what we're dealing with, mainly just straight line winds with this particular part of our line into eastern Madison County and down across Rockcastle County. But we haven't had any other active uh, tornado warnings for what now, Jim? Roughly 615, is that right? 615? They all went away at 615. So You're we're right. talking about, gosh, I, I don't want to say, I'm afraid to jinx it and saying it too loud, but it's been about 45 minutes now since we had our last and tornado a new one. warning. Hmm. Jinxed it. Yeah. There you go. Tornado warning with this part of the cell that is on top of Williamsburg in Whitley County. So it's a small area 
that does include Whitley County, that includes Williamsburg. It's short, short fused again until 715 and now into Knox County. Does not include Barberville, but this is a short fuse tornado warning that gets the Williamsburg area and into southern parts of Knox County. So that is indeed what we're dealing with here. So let's look inside this storm. It's in radar no man's land. Not radar, not no man's land for the people here, the location, radar no man's land because all the beams are kind of overshooting it in this area. But there's what looks like a little bit of inflow, Jim, coming into this right on top of Williamsburg. So that is why we've got that tornado warning. So the sirens in Williamsburg are gonna be sounding here in probably a matter of a minute or two for that tornado warning as it continues with this small cell or small part of the cell that has the tornado warning from Williamsburg heading close to Barberville into Knox County. And I would imagine this thing like its predecessors, there's even no lightning with that. I would imagine, Jim, this thing is moving along at 60 miles an hour or greater as it makes its way to the northeast very, very quickly. And just like the others, that's kind of hugging the northern part of that, uh, that uh, tornado warning. According to radar estimates, it's moving at 75 miles per hour toward the northeast, which we, we were seeing some others that were very, very similar to that uh, as well. That is absolutely unreal, isn't it? And the sharp cutoff here, the, the, the sharp green, where you go from green uh -huh. over to the yellow and the red, the, the, the quick change, that's a good indicator. See what I'm talking about here? Yeah, so go good indicator the, that you're going to be dealing with some uh, very, damaging winds, if nothing else. Very strong wind. We call it a tight gradient where you, when you go from nothing to something in a hurry. So some very strong winds. I'm going to get a little closer for you folks there uh, down in Whitley County so we can see some of the other communities that are included in on this. We know that Williamsburg is included with the area of Loudon, Perkins thrown in there, Yaden. Uh, you've got, uh, it's either Verney or Vern, so one, which, whichever it is. And then you've got Julep all there along uh, Kentucky uh, 92 that are included in the warning. So it, it basically travels right along 92 as well with the warning all the way down to where it uh, turns the corner and heads back down toward uh, uh, Bell County there. Now we jump over into Knox County where you folks are out ahead of this. And we'll try to plot some communities. I've got to get closer to do it. But you see Swan Pond, one of the and Swan Lake, both uh, areas there of concern are in the warning area. That's a tornado warning for you folks that are in those locations. We back our view out just a little bit again to show you that that system is racing across Whitley County with winds inside it. The straight line winds are going to be one thing. And then the fact that you see some uh, ro rotation and a tornado, an actual tornado in this, that is a whole set of other problems that uh, folks there in Whitley County and uh, Knox County face and we'll continue to kind of monitor this cell over the next little bit. But again, as you said, no lightning wind. Right, that, that's, the, that's the incredible thing. But at the same point, um, you know, you've, you, you, there's so much spin available in the atmosphere. You don't have to have right. a, a true thunderstorm to produce a little spin up. Exactly the same thing happened earlier this week. You know, those That's right. those storm those well, excuse me, those showers that passed through were just that, were just rain. And all we had was what, two tornadoes out yeah, of that? Yeah, yeah, right, in Franklin and, and Scott County. So and, so it can happen. I mean, people know that already with uh, without it being a true what I would call thunderstorm because the classification wasn't there because it wasn't lightning. Right. And it, and this and you're looking at that, Jim, there's no lightning with it. So well, again, we're we're tracking what amounts to a supercell shower. Right, I, I, don't know, I, I don't know what else to call it at this point, you know? Yeah, and, and that's it. It's right on top of Williamsburg. And now the worst of that is east of Williamsburg. So folks here in Williamsburg, listen, we're hearing the sirens. We're hearing the sirens into Knox County, into Whitley County. Uh, we're gonna seek that shelter immediately, but this is a weak signature, but it's a signature nonetheless. It's a tornado warning. We treat them, gotta treat them all uh, with the respect that they deserve. So if you're down here into Whitley County, you're over into Knox County, we need to be seeking shelter immediately. And what you're seeing here, Jim, is where those uh, radar beams kind of uh, overshooting this part of the world. And they can't really see the low level circulation that you're getting here across Southern Kentucky. But nonetheless, there's, there was just a little inflow when we, we had a better view of it a little bit ago. So I kind of get why that tornado warning was issued, but you could technically kind of find something like that at the, at the bottom of, of this line pretty much all evening long. 
but this is now uh, Williamsburg and East, and this thing has even weakened, I think, since we, since this prompted the tornado warning, at least the radar presentation of it. So what Jim is doing, he's taking it back a little bit and, and showing everything. Here's the, here's, here's the two hour loop with this storm. So we can, we can track its progress in here. And there it is right on top of Williamsburg. And now it is pushing to the east out of uh, Whitley County here very shortly into southwestern parts of Knox County. So our tornado sirens are going off. Kids, we're going to be scared a little bit early this morning hearing those tornado sirens. Uh, do me a favor. I want you guys just to go through your normal routine of what we learned in school during our tornado drills. OK, we're going to cover our head. We're going to get to a safe shelter and then we're going to be OK. So we're going to watch this storm make its way through there. But I know we have, uh, you know, tendency to we start to hear those tornado sirens. Man, we can we can really uh, get into freak out mode. But we're going to we're going to take a deep breath and then we're going to get into our storm shelter. We're going to remember all those tornado drills we've gone through at school over the past several years. Those were kind of cool at the time. Now it's time. That was the practice. This is time to put it in action. So we're going to listen to moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and whoever else we're with right now to get that sh shelter and we're going to cover our head and then we're going to tell you when it's going to be OK to come back out of wherever you're seeking that shelter and where you need to be is a basement. But I know a lot of folks, we don't have a basement, do we? So we're going to get to the lowest floor possible and we're going to get to the center of that lowest floor and we're going to put as many walls between where we are and the outside as we possibly can. That way it gives us maximum protection. It's like layering up. If you're going to be out in the cold. You're going to put on different la layers of clothes, right? Same thing for a tornado. We want to put as many different layers between us and the outside as we can. So here's that storm and Look at uh, it's crazy. I was, I was just looking at the speed. Yeah, there it is at, at uh, 632 exactly. Okay. 632 and here it is all the way over in Whitley County getting ready. To, it has crossed the border into Knox County part of it in 30 minutes. So that's that's what a 75 mile an hour moving storm will that, do. That's what it'll do to you. I was and, just trying to get it all and, laid you know, the, And the forward speed of these storms gives a good indication on just the amount of wind that we're dealing with right. upstairs to push these push these storms along. And you know it didn't take a whole lot to get some of those stronger winds down to where we live. And then you also had uh, winds that were kind of changing direction a little bit with height. Then you had some uh, speed shear where winds were going at different speeds and all of it meant we were going to get spinning thunderstorms and that's unfortunately what happened to the region a little earlier uh, tonight in the western Kentucky with that devastating tornado outbreak. Right now we are still watching this uh, potential tornado Williamsburg all clear is sounded. OK, this storm is now east of you. So Williamsburg, we're in good shape and what's happened with this Jim, it looks like it's more maybe more of a straight line wind event on the leading edge of this mm -hmm. really no. sharp gradient on the uh, front end of it and the <laughs> not even a storm, but the showers have almost split here behind it. You got one over toward the Vern area and then uh, one farther to the east along Highway 11 moving into Knox County. And this was the one that prompted the tornado warning. But again, no lightning with these They're just an indication of how volatile the atmosphere has been and continues to be because you got enough spin still to get these storms to rotate just a little bit. And it doesn't always have to be a, you know, a, a EF three, four or five tornado to cause damage like we had in Scott County. That was an EF one. That was a weak tornado, obviously by tornado standards, but it still caused quite a bit of damage. And that's uh, if we're going to get a tornado out of this, Jim, it's likely to be a brief and we and weak spin up. Uh, I'm almost more concerned by looking at it now with the, the straight line straight winds, line winds because yeah. it's that would be over such a wider area too. So you can talk 60, 70 mile per hour wind goes out of that, no problem. So <clears throat> excuse me, the, the damage could come from that as well. I mean, if something is damaged within this thunderstorm, that's, so that's right. What to watch for? Not only the tornadic threat, but that uh, that severe element of just straight line winds. And again, this is not a what I would call a thunderstorm. There's no lightning associated with it. It is a a shower that is producing the possibility of a tornado. There's just a little hint of some rotation in there that they're seeing from afar. And that is what 
got the green light on the uh, warning for that cell. That makes me wonder what's going to happen from here on out, though, because, uh, again, it could yeah. still produce something that uh, level. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the light, latest from the National Weather Service down there was just at uh, 7 o'clock, and that was capable, produ uh, capable of producing a tornado near the Gosdell area, nine miles southwest of Barberville, moving east at 75 miles per hour. You know, we've tracked a lot of weather through the years, my man. I don't know that we've ever tracked uh, a, a shower or storm at 75 miles an hour. No, that's incredible. And uh, to, <laughs> I mean, to, to illustrate 75 miles an hour. So let's just take this and we can, we can put a track on this, right? And let's just start it from right here. Can we do it at 70, is it tracking? It's at 75, yeah. 75 miles an hour. Is that what we're talking about here, 75? Yep. Wow. So, man, that thing is moving, right? Wow. Look at where it'll be in an hour. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That explains that's, everything. That's an hour. That's how fast this thing is moving. So it's crazy. And again, as Jim said, we can't really call it a thunderstorm because there's no lightning with it. Now, also, we gotta we got to watch this line of thunderstorms that continues. Boy, that is a just a straight line of what may be damaging winds that are moving through uh, east central Kentucky as well from Bath County back toward the southwest all the way through southern Montgomery County, Powell County, Estill County into northern Jackson and Rockcastle counties. That line continues to make its way on through very, very quickly. And let's let's give it a little scan, Jim, see what we can find with it. See if we can find any little notches in there and probably not going to find a whole lot outside of some straight line winds and you can see how that is just that's a wall of wind it is that is making that's its a, way through that's the best way to describe that a wall of wind yep. coming straight at them yes absolutely and there it is heading toward moorhead here coming up very very shortly and i know you know we have the a lot of different tools that we that we throw at people and you know we 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 try to communicate in a way where we get everybody to understand stuff. So that's that's what we're here for. Well, uh, one thing we can do is we can ask our radar to look at the 3D version of these. You want to talk about some low top thunderstorms now? Oh man. Look at that. 30, 30, 30, 40,000 feet. And that's what we're dealing with. So there you go, you know? And that's what we've been dealing with all evening long. So to recap what we are currently seeing are the lines of uh, severe thunderstorms that are racing their way through the area and sometimes Jim we just got to clear the radar so that everybody can get a first-hand view of exactly what we're talking about of the current warnings that are out so you got that line of uh, severe thunderstorms that goes from Moorhead back to the southwest toward McKee into Jackson County that is what that's the wall of wind that we were just showing you. Then you got a separate line of uh, strong and severe thunderstorms here across the southeast. One, one little shower in, embedded within that had just enough spin to prompt a tornado warning. That tornado warning continues for part of Knox County back over into Whitley County. It's a very small part of this particular area, but it is still a tornado warning. So. We're in our safe shelters until the all clear is sounding on that one. So, and that may be, that's supposed to go until 715. We'll see if it makes that because I think that shower is just about out of the, of the tornado warning polygon, it's right? It's outrunning the warning. It's yeah. outrunning yeah. the warning. So that warning that's left behind may be uh, kind of already outdated. So here's it our is. radar picture. Yeah, it's out. and. and it's kind of very diffuse. Kind of watch that storm coming out of northern Tennessee. Notice how Tennessee, much less in the way of warnings of what we're seeing with Kentucky, even though to the south of us, they got a lot more lightning and uh, what looks like stronger storms. Yeah, this is just about out of the uh, out of the warning area as of now. So the worst of this is heading into Barberville, working its way on through. Now, if you're seeing something with this, if you're seeing wind damage or you've got some you see some rotation within the clouds you see maybe a funnel or whatever a tornado and you can safely communicate that to us we'd like to hear from you and that's what we that's what we love about social media you know we, there are a lot of drawbacks obviously we hear about social media one of the things for us what it has done in the weather world it's it's opened up lines of communication with everybody out there and for good and bad for this 
in terms of severe weather or just weather in general, we get real time reports from from the public now. And that's something that, you know, obviously 10, 15 years ago, you just didn't have. Now you can know if a storm is producing some wind damage because people are going to tell you. You can get pictures in there. But here's here's the kicker to this, folks. We want you guys to stay safe above all else. Don't risk your life or a loved one's life to say, hey, I want to tweet a picture to Jim Caldwell. I want to get this picture. Stay safe above all else. Doesn't matter. We'll, we'll get that picture eventually. You just stay safe, okay? So this storm that is now outrunning the tornado warning, and as soon as this tornado warning expires and we don't get any more tornado warnings, we're going to get back to the coverage of the severe weather that has just devastated Kentucky and what was one of the worst nights of severe weather in our state's history. Without question, I never, never think you would ever talk about one of the worst tornado outbreaks ever being in December 10th and 11th. We often tell you severe weather knows no season. And the our amazing part of this, this until today, until the past 24 hours, had been the quietest severe weather year on record in Kentucky. I mean, we hadn't had any events that were memorable. Yeah, you may have had a little local severe thunderstorm. We had major flooding. That much we know. We had flash floods. But in terms of true tornadoes or severe weather, this was one of the calmest years ever. And then you may have put one of the longest tracking tornadoes on record yeah. out there. And that's how, <clears throat> you know, hopefully this isn't a harbinger of uh, things to come for the winter or certainly into the coming spring. But, you know, we've talked about how for the past decade we've been quieter than normal in terms of severe weather locally. Let's hope we don't have to pay that back. So what we need, folks, even the uh, folks who hate winter weather, we need winter to act like winter now. We need to get we need to get some colder air, and I think that's finally going to happen, but not until we get into Christmas week and may start that transition later next week. Yeah, isn't that crazy to think that, that that's what we're getting ready to go into, and then we're tra tracking this leading up to that. Got some warmer air that's going to try to make a run at us next week, but the trend, as he was talking, looks a little bit uh, more favorable for winter weather fans out there rather than this, but. We continue to monitor this tornado warning. It, it goes uh, for another four minutes or so, three minutes, 30 seconds to be exact, with that tornado warning down in uh, Whitley and Knox counties. See the communities highlighted again. I'll go a little closer to you, right just outside of Swan Pond. And I believe there's a Swan Lake there too, somewhere close. It's included in on that as well. And you can see some of the other roads. But uh, be if you hear the wind roar outside right now, it is a tough shower as it is. It's just got an incredible amount of wind available and driving it. That's what we have right there on the first alert radar right now. That right there is driving all the way through. That's why it's going 75 miles per hour because you've got so much wind energy available. It continues to drive it across uh, a couple of counties there, Whitley and going into to Knox County. It's not as impressive as it was, let's say, when we first got the word of the warning, but there's enough wind in there and enough what we call uh, wind shear that it could try to spin up a tornado. I mean, you, you gotta think that the speeds at the yeah. surface are, are, are slower than what they are above our heads. So and the, and the good news here. on this, the tornado warning is expiring. Good. Coming up in good. three minutes. So we get that speed shear, and that can spin things up, you know? And that, that's what's so concerning about the, the situation like this, and that's how they keep popping up along that line. But as of, uh, as of uh, 7.15, that warning will go away, but we will not. Yeah, we, we we're going to we're gonna still be here. And, you know, as, uh, as we continue to get more damage reports, uh, you know, more injuries, more fatalities, unfortunately, likely to, uh, to be reported as the morning goes on out of western Kentucky. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a tough day across, across the state. Um, you know, Kentucky today, Jim, is, you know, we're waking up to a, a different state, a different, just a whole different feel across Kentucky. We're going to have scars 
when you say a like, lot of people when you say it like that it really brings it in perspective it does right? and, you know? and and to think of it like this too it's not only you know not only are we going to fill it in Kentucky but now this is a story that's going to be heard across the entire country in the entire world when's the last time you can remember a tornado I guess Joplin Missouri that killed maybe as as many people I can't, in, I can't one single tornado I can't remember the final uh, the yeah. fatality list on that either I, but so and that was in it was 11 years ago it was 20 2011 April of uh, 2011 I believe in Joplin uh, but the current tornado warning is the only one that we have and that is about to expire coming up here in less than a minute and as soon as that expires we are going to take a quick break we're going to come back with some news uh, and and obviously when we say news we mean coverage of of the uh, devastating tornadoes and everything that's going on locally with some wind damage. But we still have numerous counties that are under severe thunderstorm warnings, but that little teeny tiny tornado warning that is about to expire into Whitley County and into southwestern parts of Knox County have not had any uh, reports of a tornado with that. Certainly no damage reports with that, but we will continue to watch each and every one or each and every storm that is out there. So the tornado warning has now expired. If you're listening to us, you've been in your shelter there into Knox County and Whitley County. Hey, we're giving you guys the all clear to come on out as of now. We will continue to watch these storms. And then we're uh, we've got uh, WKYT news with Shelby Lofton coming up here in just a moment after the break. And then we'll have more weather as well. Keep it right here on WKYT. It is 718. We are looking at utter devastation in western Kentucky. At least 50 people are dead. State officials expect that number to go up as the sun rises. Governor Bashir has already declared a state of emergency. Both the National Guard and Kentucky State Police are responding. The primary tornado was on the ground continuously for over 200 miles in our state, something we have never seen before. We have deaths in multiple, possibly many counties. 
So far, the governor says people are dead in Hawkins, Warren, Marshall, Graves, and potentially more counties. He says he'll be in western Kentucky as soon as it is safe to travel. Crews are looking for survivors at a collapsed candle factory in Mayfield. Governor Bashir says it's a mass casualty event. There were more than 100 people inside when it happened. According to WPSD, first responders can hear people calling for help in the debris. They don't know how many people could be trapped. They've put out a call for volunteers to help dig through the rubble. The county courthouse, the jail, churches and homes also hit hard in Mayfield. We've seen shattered windows and ripped off roofs. The transportation cabinet is mobilizing to get relief to the region along with the National Guard. And in addition to Mayfield, Central City, Greenville and Erlington are also reporting damage. Thousands of people lost power in Davis and Ohio counties. The Hopkins County Sheriff says crews have been pulling people from rubble, including children who took shelter in a bathtub during the storm. And in Bowling Green near Western Kentucky University's campus, huge trees are completely uprooted, tangled with power lines. Multiple buildings are in pieces, leaving debris scattered across the road. One reporter even had debris pierce through his wall overnight. Bowling Green is also dealing with high flood waters right now. Here, a car got stuck in the mess. Police are blocking off roads and urging drivers to turn away. WKU has canceled commencement ceremonies originally set for today. Tens of thousands of Kentuckians are without power this morning, most of them in western Kentucky. Closer to home, we have reports of outages in Montgomery, Garrett and Boyle counties. Crews are beginning to work on restoring power. They want you to stay away from downed power lines and any area with high water. Here in Lexington, police say the roads are relatively calm. Since midnight, officers have responded to one injury crash and five non-injury crashes. They've also cleared a few traffic hazards. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay. Sure. Cut it down to three packs a day. That wasn't what that was. I, I swallowed it, went down the wrong hole. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a smoker's cough, you all. That was, a, I just got a donut caught in my throat. <laughs> well, nobody's eating them, and they're just over here. Well, we got weather again coming up. Where are they from? Where are they from? Yeah. I don't know. They're really good, though. Jim doesn't care where they're from. He's going to eat them. A donut's a donut. You know what the best donut is? Free one. Mm-hmm. State cheer delayed. KHSAA. Oh. Because of the weather. Oh, Alexa. Did Alexa email that? No, I just saw it on KHSAA's Facebook mm. page. Like how much of a delay did it say? It is.
been a devastating night of severe weather across the region and uh, you know, Jim, we still got severe thunderstorm warnings across eastern and southeastern Kentucky, but uh, this is a far cry from what we've been tracking all night long. You know, for you said for 12 straight hours at least there was a tornado warning yeah. somewhere on the map. Yeah. And here we are. We're, we're, we've said let down some, but we're still watching these gusty storms out. Well, they're not even gusty storms. Yeah, there is very little lightning associated with that. It's more in the way of just uh, strong showers that are now into eastern Kentucky. Per my, uh, prompting these severe thunderstorm warnings because they're hello. There's no such thing as a severe shower, right? It's only severe thunderstorm warning. And, and the thing is the wind by itself driving the storms. Or, yeah, I keep saying the word storm the driving this. Yeah, is pushing them along at 75 miles per hour and some of that wind comes out. That's right. It, the just the downward movement, the downward force of rain falling can sometimes just brings those winds mm -hmm. down to the ground and we're seeing that now in eastern Kentucky, but uh, you know, just a just a terrible night for Kentucky all the way around. We just, you know, this is past 20, less than 24 hours historic. I, this is one of the all-time worst severe weather outbreaks in Kentucky history now. Because, it's happening because in of December. the fatalities. Because of the fatalities, yeah. yeah. And, you know, and we're, we were just looking at some drone footage out of Mayfield. If that's not an EF4 or EF5 classification, I don't, I don't know what is. I mean, you know, I've, then I've never seen one. That, that's right, it, it because that awful. was that was there was nothing left. And, you know, at least 50 fatalities there in the Mayfield and Graves County. Uh, we had Governor Bashir on earlier with us live and he said there's you know, we're probably going to be talking about more fatalities after crews get in and do searching and everything else. Right. And not just in the Mayfield, but other counties, too. That's what's terrifying. The sun comes up. That's when we see the full extent of the damage. All right, we still have some severe weather in eastern Kentucky. Take a look at what we have going on as of right now. All the counties that are in yellow are still under a severe thunderstorm warning, and that's a lot of real estate from parts of Rowan County, Point Southwest, and then you've got another zone. Uh, additional severe thunderstorm warnings just added to this. That looks like southern parts of Leslie County into Bell County and into Letcher County as well. And then flash flood warnings are out for a number of counties here from Franklin County back toward the west. So here are the new warnings across the southeast. Severe thunderstorm warnings, not tornado warnings. This will go until 815 for Bell, Clay, Harlan, Knox, Leslie and Letcher counties. And that's with that thunderstorm complex that is rolling its way toward the east. And then you've got another line that is off to the north of us. Here's the radar picture. The strongest part of all this is this little gusty band of showers. I know for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to call them thunderstorms. So you got this band of showers and thunderstorms here that almost has a little bow with it that is working its way into Wolf County across Menifee County, Rowan County. So we're going to get some big time winds out of this. Boy, that, that's that's ramped up a little bit. That that wind damage threat is 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 up there with this line. So Campton into West Liberty into Rowan County, Moorhead, got to watch the wind damage. Farther to the south, more in the way of some scattered showers and thunderstorms with warnings. We've got more weather. We got more coverage of last night's historic and deadly tornadoes after the break. Keep it right here on WKYT. Shelby, I'm sorry that we're on your show. Don't be sorry. We're dragging you down, okay? Let's You're just not. be honest. Sorry. If anything, it's a privilege that I'm here. Okay, we're dragging you down. No, no. You are, a, this is called slumming. You're slumming now with us. <laughs> and we appreciate it. <laughs> um, Hope, are you wanting me to toss a commercial when I'm finished reading? So how long that's do we that's have that's here? for this weather part of it. Okay, you are hearing me, cool. Do you just do you guys just Does want me to talk to alley? whenever? Okay. Or give me time cues. Okay. Cuz there isn't much going on here, but uh, if you need 
Time filled, I can talk. Alexandra, you will talk. Shut up, hey. Jim. <laughs> it's incredible. Okay. That's that facility. This is the mic's on channel yeah. two, not channel that's one. It. Okay, that's is cool. It, oh, is this what you had pulled up? Yeah, that, yeah. That, but it, it looks a lot better on that screen. I mean, you know what I mean by better. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. All right, we are looking at the uh, current warnings across central and eastern Kentucky on what has been an absolutely devastating severe weather night and morning across the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Uh, Mayfield into western Kentucky devastated. Bowling Green with a direct tornado hit as well. Uh, the governor, uh, Governor Bashir on with us earlier, saying at least 50 people have passed away uh, from this uh, deadly outbreak of tornadoes into Western Kentucky and in Mayfield alone. What we're looking at are the current warnings now across Central and Eastern Kentucky. Meteorologist uh, Jim Caldwell joining me. And Jim, we look at what is left in the tank for this severe weather outbreak, and uh, we're still watching those damaging wind producing showers and storms into Eastern Kentucky. But that's a far cry from the map we've had for the better part of the past 12, 18 hours. You know, there for hours upon hours that we were tracking these true signature yeah. tornadic cells. I mean, right out of a textbook, the ones you study when, when you're, you're coming up yeah. and, you, and you see them. And we had those tonight across parts of Kentucky. They got into central and eastern Kentucky not quite as intense. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't shock me if we didn't get confirmed reports, though. Gu gu guaranteed at some point we're going to see, um, you know, it, it, and here's the thing, the, the National Weather Service offices are going to be overwhelmed the next week Oh, because they've yes. got to get out and they've got to do all these storm surveys and they can only do so many at a time. And, and it, so they're going to, it's going to take a while before we get official classifications from all these different tornadoes that, uh, you know, touched down last night before we get a true number on well, how many did. Some of the pictures that we've seen, we, we know that, that Mayfield is high end. Um, just by looking at the Mayfield, pictures. Mayfield tornado is going to go down as one of the deadliest in modern times, in modern history. Yeah, yeah. And Heart maybe rain. the deadliest in Kentucky history for sure. Right. Maybe the, one of the deadliest in modern times in terms of, um, you know, any tornado across the country. It started in Arkansas, mm -hmm. made its way all the way through Tennessee into Kentucky on the ground the entire time. So there's that historic capacity. There's too. that historic part of it. So this has been just a, a devastating night. Uh, you know, we talk about two severe weather outbreaks, tornado outbreaks in recent memory. You think of March 2nd, 2012. Mm -hmm. You think of April 3rd and 4th, super outbreak 1974. Now we're going to think of December 11th, uh, 10th and 11th of 2021. When we heard from the governor earlier, he said at least 50 people. At least. In, in Mayfield alone. In Mayfield alone, yeah. And then said it could be much higher than that. And that's, that's the big He concern. talked about the potential for the, for the death, uh, you know, the fatality toll to double. May push 100. Which, you know, in today's world of technology, I never thought I would see that. You know, right. And just never thought I would see that because there's so much warning. There's, there's so many ways to get warnings now, but 
oh my goodness a thief in the night it, it came at night it came and at night that's what happened as we as we've said all week there is no good time for severe weather but there is an absolute worst time and it's night it's at night time yeah when yeah. when folks are asleep not paying attention you know just not focused on the severe weather and uh, so it's been it's been devastating uh, what we're dealing with right now Jim again some severe weather across eastern Kentucky and uh, let's get into it and show you what we are dealing with now with those severe thunderstorm warnings that are out for all the counties that are shaded in the yellow. It's numerous counties still in southeastern Kentucky that those counties were just added to the list. We still got some of those warnings. This is a, with a potent line of storms. By the way, southeastern Kentucky until 815. That's Bell, Clay, Harlan, Knox, Leslie and Letcher. And then you got a host of counties here from Rowan County down into uh, Lee and Owsley County. Uh, Estill, Lee, Menifee, Owsley, Powell and Wolf until 745. Then flash flood warnings. Radar picture is picking up on this line of showers and storms. Look at this back here across southern Indiana. It's a narrow band of some showers that are going up. That's your cold front. We need that stuff just to calm it down. So here's the concern right now. That's a wall of wind that is heading through Moorhead into West Liberty, into Campton, out of Frenchburg, and now heading into northern Breathitt County, make it into McGoffin County here shortly, and toward Beattyville here into Lee County. So that wall of wind making its way on through eastern Kentucky very quickly. Farther to the south and southeast where we have those additional warnings that are ongoing, we're seeing this from a little different cluster of some strong and severe showers and thunderstorms that are into the southeastern corner of the state. And those are uh, areas that are going to be out ahead of this second line. Here we go with this almost looks to be decaying just a little bit. So that's good news there. But still, we're going to get some pretty good winds with this. What we're seeing with the overall picture, a lot of heavy rain coming in behind this across Laurel County, Pulaski County and points west from there. And then overall, the trajectory of this stuff south west to northeast could mean some very heavy rains are going to fall into southeastern Kentucky over the next few hours too. So let's broaden this out and see what see what we look like behind all this because notice how the storms are ramping up here into Tennessee. But as those ramp up, they rob a little bit of energy across central and eastern Kentucky. But we still got this front that is back here to the west of us. So we've got a narrow band of rain at your front that once that gets through here, it's all over, thankfully. But that band of uh, showers is going to slowly work its way into the Ohio River counties coming up over the next couple of hours, then into central Kentucky, and then it's pushing toward the east. Now, the models are not as enthusiastic with dealing uh, with firing that next round up into true severe weather, but still. I can't say that another round of some strong storms is completely out of the question over the next three or four hours. You know, we've been in here tracking severe weather all night long, really since yesterday evening. Meteorologist Ali Blake has been out in the elements and doing a little bit of kind of semi storm chasing and she's down in Richmond right now. Ali Richmond has been kind of uh, the hot spot, if you will, for tornado warnings. We had three different tornado warnings for Madison County a little earlier. What have you seen down there? Any any damage at all? Yeah, Chris, so we have been out here in Madison County since about five this morning. It was raining very hard, multiple tornado warnings, multiple severe thunderstorm warnings. I mean, heavy rain and gusty winds at times. It also this morning was a light show. I mean, we saw pretty frequent lightning all around here. At least as of this moment, things are fairly quiet. I'm going to show you guys what we're seeing right now. We're on exit 95 in Madison County. You can see it's raining just very lightly, if not very quietly out here. I mean, it's a little breezy too, but most things it's it's quite, you know, quiet after the storm. I'm sure once the sun officially rises, which is at 742 this morning, we will see damage around the county. I mean, already getting reports out, you know, we keep talking about in western Kentucky of just the true devastation out there. And we know once that sun rises, we'll probably see way more out there. I mean, 
it's just so crazy how calm it finally is after what we've seen most of this morning you know multiple warnings i'm sure we'll see damage all across the area once finally people start to wake up i mean no one wants to have a severe weather outbreak during the evening like you keep saying there's no good time for severe weather but of course during the night that's when things are the worst right now though like i said things are quiet and as the storms continue to push off into eastern kentucky we hope that they will continue to weaken and we'll watch that line behind it. Like you said, I know you just said a moment ago, it doesn't look like right now models are wanting it to fire up as severe, but we're going to continue to pay attention to it as we get into the next couple of hours. In Richmond, Allie Blake, WKYT. All right, Allie, thank you so much. Nice reporting down there. Stay safe and uh, hopefully there's nothing in terms of any damage to find anywhere across Madison County or the rest of uh, our part of the world. But we're still watching this action across eastern and southeastern Kentucky for the possibility for some more damaging winds over the next few hours. Now, farther to the west and the northwest, we see another little broken line that will try to make its way on into town. But as of now, those severe thunderstorm warnings across southern and eastern Kentucky have a lifespan of about another half hour to an hour before that stuff is on out of here. And we'll see what this line does as it makes its way toward central and eastern Kentucky a little later on this morning. And of course, if we get any more warnings, we'll be sure and break in to let you know. Right now, let's get a check on uh, the news of the day. And obviously, Shelby, the news of the day is all about the tornado outbreak across Kentucky. Absolutely, Chris. Thank you. Governor Bashir says this storm system could prove to be the worst in Kentucky history. Dozens of people are dead, mostly in the westernmost part of the state. Yes, I fear that there are more than 50 uh, dead in Kentucky. Um, you know, confirmation on each individual is coming in, but we are going to lose uh, over 50 people, uh, probably closer to somewhere between 70 uh, and 100. It's um, it's devastating. Governor Bashir has already asked President Biden for a federal emergency declaration. So far, officials have confirmed deaths in Hopkins, Warren and Marshall County, along with hard hit Graves County. Their crews in Mayfield are looking for survivors at a collapsed candle factory. Governor Bashir calls it a mass casualty event. Dozens of people who were inside are believed to be dead. We have a major catastrophe at the candle factory, at the jail, the courthouse, and the number one fire station. So we're having to have mutual aid come in. That's how bad this town's hit. Here's an aerial view of that factory. You can see the building is leveled. According to WPSD, first responders can hear people in the rubble calling out for help. About 110 people were inside when the building collapsed. Governor Bashir says the tornado behind that devastation was on the ground for more than 200 miles. A viewer sent us these pictures of the storm from Mayfield. Our weather team says it may have been an F4 or F5 tornado. Another hard hit area, Bowling Green. The neighborhoods near Western Kentucky University's campus have heavy damage. Police say they're working numerous reports of collapsed buildings, some with people trapped inside. Thousands of people are without power, and many of those power lines are littered across normally busy roads. Stay with us. We'll be back with more news and weather. Okay. Okay. 
So about three minutes here, and we'll toss to break. Or we're we're going to toss to earlier, or no, toss to Bashir. Okay, thank you. Hi everybody, welcome back. Obviously, uh, devastating nights from a major tornado outbreak across not only Kentucky, but surrounding areas too, Jim. We've been in here uh, all night and seeing things trying to calm down a little bit now. Certainly much calmer than how we spent the majority of the overnight with those storms across western Kentucky, and even in to the bluegrass region as well. I want you to compare this particular outbreak back to the, the most recent outbreak, which of course for us was March 2nd. Compare the two as far as how they how they stacked up to one of you know I think I actually said uh, said to you a couple of days ago when I was when I was looking at a map I said you know kind of reminds me of 2012 just a little mm -hmm. bit just the position of the low the overall look of, of the setup it was just shifted a little farther to the west mm -hmm. for the worst of it um, this the amount of shear in the atmosphere both of those which was spin both of those events were just off the charts mm -hmm. this is the worst tornado outbreak since then and there's a chance this this has already surpassed it in terms of fatalities. Right. You know, just, I just think, from the fact I think we had what 37, 38 in 2012 to total, total around, yeah. in Kentucky, and just in Mayfield we have at least 50. Right. In one. And, and that's what we're hearing so far, and, and, and they're right. afraid the number's going to grow as we are right. as well. Right. As you know, the sun comes up here momentarily, and we get a, a, a view of the devastation and everything that's you know going on in western Kentucky. Uh, we're still dealing with storms in eastern we Kentucky, are. though. Take a look at what's going on right now, folks, with the severe thunderstorm warnings that are out for numerous counties into the eastern part of the state. All those counties that are in yellow are under severe thunderstorm warnings. Flash flood warnings are out into parts of the bluegrass area. Don't want to undersell that because obviously flooding causes lots of issues as well. But all these counties that are still under warnings. Radar picture is improving a, a little bit into eastern Kentucky. It's improving a lot here into central Kentucky, but we're still watching this one final band of some showers and storms out here into southern parts of Indiana dropping in from the north. But the severe thunderstorms that we've got going on here uh, into eastern Kentucky, that's a wall of wind, as we've been calling it, that is making its way through Sandy Hook, West Liberty. This is heading toward new severe thunderstorm warnings into Sayersville over eventually into Paintsville as well. And then you've got some stuff across the south and southeast that will uh, continue to make its way on through damaging winds, a possibility there. A little earlier this morning, I had a chance to talk directly to Governor Andy Bashir. We're going to hear some of that interview that I had with the governor coming up after the break. Stay here. Okay, so I say after this we hit the Waffle House. <laughs> well, they closed the one down Winchester Road. Well, we'll go over here to the Hamburgs or the oh, Cracker Barrels. You won't go to the Waffle House to eat. <laughs> Shoot, right now I'd <laughs> I'd probably eat the plate. <laughs> <laughs> son, you, you've got these delicious donuts over here. Donuts. Would y'all uh, believe I've never been to Waffle House in your entire life? Wait, I've been at the. Uh, emergency operations center since about 1 a.m. 
but actually even here in Frankfurt was calling my family to tell them to get to the basement and then having to check on them. Uh, family in Dawson Springs in Hopkins County where this tornado hit uh, directly, still trying to, to get in touch with. It is a, it is a tough morning. And then A little early this morning, I had the opportunity to speak with uh, Governor Andy Bashir on the devastation taking place across western Kentucky and parts of central Kentucky. Here's a little bit of our conversation from earlier. I've been at the uh, emergency operations center since about 1 a.m., but actually even here in Frankfurt was calling my family to tell them to get to the basement and then having to check on them. Uh, family in Dawson Springs in Hopkins County where this tornado hit uh, directly still trying to to get in touch with it is a it is a tough morning and then for all the families in in Mayfield that had a loved one uh, in that candle factory you know we grieve with them um, we hope that their family member was one of the ones that could be rescued but you know, that is now a, a mass casualty event um, but help is on the way we declared a state of emergency before midnight. The National Guard has been deployed. Uh, transportation is, is out there helping to clear roadways with the Division of Forestry. We got two tractor trailers of water um, headed to uh, the area. I've requested a federal emergency disaster uh, declaration. And then we've got some teams from other places in the Commonwealth of EMTs, of firefighters, and of, and of uh, police and others uh, on their way down. So, you know, we are one state and we're gonna stand with Western Kentucky. Now, Governor, as, they, as we, you know, get ready for the sun to come up, as you mentioned, we're gonna, we're unfortunately gonna get a much better look at just how devastating and deadly these storms have been across Western Kentucky. From your perspective, where do you go from here once the sun comes up? Well, as soon as it is safe, I'll be on uh, a plane headed to, to Mayfield first. Um, with all the damage to the courthouse, the jail, people's homes, uh, and then we're gonna head uh, up the road to Dawson Springs to, to check on everybody, but certainly have been in touch with uh, county judges, mayors, um, local emergency management uh, in a multiple county, a multiple uh, county uh, region. It's, uh, really hard how this hit, and as the sun comes up, um, it's it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult, um, and we're going to have lost a, a lot of people that we don't get back. Yeah, and you mentioned the historic nature of this tornado outbreak, and and it, it is truly, you know, in Kentucky we kind of measure uh, tornado outbreaks. You say March second, twenty twelve. You say April third and fourth, super outbreak, nineteen seventy four. Now we're going to say December 10th, 11th of 2021. And you mentioned that tornado that made its way into Mayfield and real, it was on the ground. It started near Jonesboro, Arkansas and made mm -hmm. its way all the way into Kentucky. And I can tell you from a meteorological perspective, I've never seen anything remotely close to what just happened in Western Kentucky. 
Yeah, we, we measure it right now at 227 miles. We don't know anything on record um, that, that has been on the ground that long. And, and just look at the, at the damage uh, it has caused. It, it is, again, a, a really tough night. Um, and hearing, hearing the reports come in in, in real time, um, is, it's not easy knowing that there are so many families out there hearing about the family trapped in their basement, about those that we know are in harm's way and, and, and a local emergency response trying to get through uh, the debris. Uh, a big thank you to all of them that have been out in the midst of this even while it was still dangerous. And to others out there, while there is still significant weather, please stay off the roads uh, so that uh, your, your local emergency management folks can get to the people that need them. And again, that was from my conversation with Governor Andy Bashir from a little earlier today. A long day ahead for state officials and, of course, officials across the entire state. Stay with us. we got a final weather check for you after the break. All right, welcome back, everybody. Here we are putting the wraps on what has been a uh, deadly tornado outbreak across mm -hmm. Kentucky last night and this morning. We're still dealing with some severe weather across eastern Kentucky, but Jim, this is nowhere near what we were talking about last night and this morning. Last night we were talking about classic case uh, signatures of tornadic yeah. activity. Now, just straight line winds are blowing out some of these thunderstorms. A at least 50 fatalities across western Kentucky. Eastern Kentucky, still a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings that are out there, but again, these storms are beginning to slow down just a little bit. We're still here for, here for you all morning long, at least until the severe weather threat is over. Keep it right here on WKYT. If we get any more warnings, we'll break in and let you know.
couple minutes. Uh, can I, give me a couple minutes, and we'll record that if you want to. <coughs> Thank you. They're working on some news elements of this cut in. I don't even know what the weekend morning cut ins are. I don't have a clue. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, I mean, your thoughts. I'm leaning towards it. I got to figure out how, but I almost feel like we need to send someone to Western Kentucky. God, yeah. I know it's like four hours from here. If it was on the other side of the county or state line, I probably wouldn't. Yeah. But it isn't. It's in fucking It's in Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah. It's uh, it's certainly worthy, you know, who he's in. I will make him go. No, I don't know. I'm trying to, I mean, and then I'm he'll, trying to figure no. out if I'm sending a reporter. He'll only go with a Baptist. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sure they'll go at some point. That'll be a couple days. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, that was Phil, bad. I'm thinking about seeing Phil go to Taylor County today since he's somewhat the closest to us. Yeah. You know, and it, ideally it would be to send Adam, but at this point, yeah. like, we're spent, and <laughs> Adam's got to uh, work I'm tonight. and Chad, actually. Yeah, that, I think then, uh, Chad like, would be good. Send... Chad would like that. No, I know. Trust me, I know. Yeah. And I but then I'm trying to decide, like, come Monday, do I need an even bigger present? I mean, you know, it, it is what it is on a weekend. It's just not the viewership. Right, 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 okay right. To have a Victor and Amber or a Bill Bryan in. I mean, okay. I guess the good thing is we'll have a better idea of once we see. Yeah. Before then, I mean, that decision can almost be made early yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm supposed to be off, I'm supposed to be off Monday, but I'll probably come in and just take <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday I mean, instead. Be, once I know we still gotta get through a little bit. So yeah. <laughs> After this finally moves through. We're yeah, we're we're, nice we're good. Right? Yeah, we're nice. So we're it nice. End up being the yeah, cleanup it would be this. it would be you know the only reason I would come in would be for the historical perspective of yeah, it all to, to break it's down stuff. stuff. It's a it's long way. Right on the other side of the. Yeah. Right. It's a long way away. But. You know. Was Derek in scope from there? Is that where she was from? I think so. Yeah. Grays County, Mayfield. What happened to her? Charlotte. Well, Not lightning's showing up now in sure. southern Indiana. So, uh, I think directly from here she went to Asheville. Asheville. I don't know where she is now. I don't think she's in the Did she get married? When did she get? She did. I think she got a kid. Does she? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Well. Well, this has been fun. Are you leaving me? Uh, oh. God, I hate I you. Know. Uh, I know. I shakes. <laughs> He's over here. The last, the last three hours. I rolled in here 20 hours ago. <laughs> it's 12:30. Yeah, I told you. Did I not? I'd see you again. All right. Let um, me see what this line, this second line, is. If it's going to do anything. Oh, is that? Need. Yeah. Oh, the model, the future. Oh, it's just it weakens it out into. Yeah, it doesn't do anything else with it. Tries to maybe fire it up in Eastern Kentucky, but nothing. Nothing major. I'm probably gonna, at some point here soon, text Adam and say, "Hey, I'm gonna come in a little early and <laughs> take over, even if it is a long day." Because, yeah. Huh? Well, I, my thought is at this point, yeah. If we're if you want someone in this building, I say let's bring in Adam, and I'll have Allie go report on damage. I'm probably gonna send her to this Boyle County church. Hey. Ah, uh, nobody's listening. Jeff said you and Chris were incredible. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Um, yeah, Jeff, give me or uh, give me just a few here.